Seven Days Hotel, Port Hampton. Connor McDonald rode an electric bike to the Seven Days Hotel, colloquially known as the Lover's Haven, to deliver food. Today was the birthday of his girlfriend, Mandy Hines. After delivering the last order in the morning, he would go on a date with her. Filled with anticipation, Connor carried the takeaway and walked toward the Seven Days Hotel. Just then, a young man and a girl walked out of the elevator hand in hand. The guy was wearing an Armani shirt, a Rolex watch, and a BMW key fob hanging on his waist. The woman was dressed in a miniskirt that exposed her shapely white thighs. She was smitten and looked enticing. The two clung to each other and flirted with each other like they were a couple. Mandy? Connor could not believe his eyes, and he hastily ran to them. Last night, Mandy had told him that she was going to the movies with her bestie and would not be back that night. Connor never expected that he would run into her at the Seven Days Hotel. She was startled, her expression changed. She subconsciously wanted to break free from the guy when she heard Connor's voice, but the guy was holding her tightly. What are you afraid of? Do you still want to be with that broke guy? He was shorter than average. If it were not for his branded wear, he would have been inconspicuous, and no one would have spared a glance at him. Mandy's eyes flickered for a moment. She was not as panicked as before. But instead, she looked callously indifferent. Well, now that you've found out, I guess it's time to let you know, Connor, said the rich guy holding Mandy, your girlfriend is dating me now. He was Connor's classmate, Brandon Guthrie. Unlike Connor, he was a rich kid. Connor staggered back as his face was grave when he heard Brandon's words. Then, ignoring Brandon, he pulled Mandy over. Come home with me, Mandy. I can make you happy. Don't touch me. Mandy pushed Connor's hand away. Why should I go with you? Can you afford to buy the phones and handbags that I like? You even need to wait until my birthday before we can watch a movie. What makes you think you can make me happy? Mandy, I may be broke now, but I will work harder. Connor gritted his teeth. Work harder? You're an orphan with no money, power, or background. You can't achieve the level of wealth that Brandon has just by being a delivery guy, Mandy sneered. Wake up, Connor. Mandy won't go with you. Do you want her to deliver food with you? Brandon taunted him. I have long wanted to tell you that you don't deserve me. We are done, Connor, Mandy said in an icy voice. Then, she turned to look at Brandon with a fond smile and put her hands through his arm. Let's go, Brandon. A broke guy like you don't deserve love, you know? Brandon shot a disdainful look at Connor as he brought Mandy toward a BMW parked outside the hotel. Connor looked on while his heart was aching as Mandy left. He felt angry, painful, indignant, yet helpless. You humiliate me just because Brandon is rich? Connor lowered his head, and his hands clenched into fists. His fingernails sank into his palms until his hands were bleeding. Connor and Mandy met in college. They had become a couple during the first faculty fellowship. She was innocent back then, but now, she had betrayed him and chose Brandon. Connor did not beg Mandy to stay or chase after her because he was broke. Who was he to compete with Brandon? He had seen through Mandy by now. Because he was broke, Mandy had repeatedly insulted him for the past two years. Nevertheless, Connor had never said a thing. All he could do was work harder and make money to support her. However, she cheated on him by hooking up with the rich kid. You have humiliated me today. One day, I will make you realize that it is you who don't deserve me, Connor said to himself with a gleam in his eyes. The Cafeteria, Port Hampton University. Look on the bright side, Connor, Dominic Turner, Connor's roommate said, I told you a long time ago that Mandy doesn't belong to our world. She is beautiful, hot, and flirty. I knew at first glance that she wasn't serious about relationships. As the saying goes, the goddess of the poor, the sperm vessel of the rich, a long-legged beautiful girl with ample bosom like her is a plaything of the rich. Plebs like us should stay clear of girls like her. Otherwise, they will make us cuckolds, eventually. I suppose you have slept with her, right? You got nothing to lose. The thing is, I didn't, Connor said. 
What? You didn't? You two have been together for years, yet you didn't touch her? Didn't you two go to a hotel after a movie? Dominic jumped to his feet, looking distraught. We checked into a standard double bedroom, but nothing happened between us, Connor said. You can't be serious. What a loser you are. Connor thought for a moment and agreed with what he said. He genuinely loved Mandy and respected her, so he never forced her to do things that were against her will. Just that, alas. Connor looked at the orders on his phone. The only benefit of the breakup was that he could finally stop delivering food. Just then, his phone beeped with an incoming text message. Your account number ending 4466 is credited with $1 billion. Your account balance now is $1 billion and $56. Connor looked at the message and was wide-eyed. Holy moly! Who deposited a billion dollars into my account? Something just came up. I have to go, Dominic. As soon as Connor saw the fund transfer notification on his phone, he ran out of the cafeteria without finishing his meal. Just then, his phone rang. He hurriedly took it out and answered, Hello? May I speak to Connor McDonald? A voice that might belong to a middle-aged man came through. It was deep, sonorous, and unhurried. This is Connor speaking. And you are? He was startled for a second. You are inheriting an estate. I was wondering when can we meet up, the voice said respectfully. An estate? SOSO it was you who transferred the money to me? Yes. But the one billion dollars is only a small part of the estate. Most of the remaining fixed assets and overseas funds need to go through the formal process before they can be transferred to you. Holy moly! A billion dollars is only a small part of it? Connor exclaimed in his mind. But, I'm an orphan. Where did I get my inheritance from? We will talk about it when you come over. Find me on the 38th floor of the Empire World Building. I will explain everything, the voice said. Connor hesitated for a moment. Okay, I will see you in the afternoon. Okay, Mr. McDonald. The person hung up the phone politely. After leaving the campus, Connor returned to the rented place outside the campus. Because he was working as a delivery guy at night, the dormitory's gate had closed by the time he went off work at 1 a.m. Hence, he had no choice but to share a rented house with others. Connor's room was less than 10 square meters, but he felt that it was spacious enough. It was only 12 p.m., but Connor thought of going back to his rented place to take a nap and would only go to meet that person at the Empire World Building in the afternoon. His stomach growled as nature suddenly called. He hurriedly grabbed a roll of toilet paper and ran into the toilet. While he was doing his business, he played Candy Crush on his mobile phone. Just then, someone suddenly opened the bathroom door. A beautiful girl in a laced sleeping gown walked in, rubbing her eyes groggily and running her fingers through her hair in front of the mirror. She looked as if she was still half asleep. Connor was sitting on the toilet bowl right behind her. Unaware that Connor was behind her, the girl put her hands to her waist and started to take off her clothes. She lifted her sexy laced sleeping gown, pulling it up little by little, revealing her sexy waistline and the seductive black strap. She had a hot body, a pretty face, long legs, dark wavy hair, and a very youthful vibe. Connor's eyes almost popped out of their sockets, and he forgot to make a sound. Halfway through with the undressing, the girl opened her eyes, looked in the mirror, and saw the wide-eyed Connor behind her. Coming to her senses, she grabbed the cosmetics on the side and hurled them at Connor. Connor! You stinky hooligan! The girl screamed as she pushed the door open and scrambled out. Connor hurriedly pulled up his pants and ran out. Because he was in such a hurry, he accidentally bumped into the couch and groaned in pain. After catching his breath, Connor yelled at the room next door, Are you crazy, Mina? The beautiful girl was Mina, who shared an apartment with Connor. I dare you to say that again. Mina's angry voice came before her hot body appeared in the doorway. Her face darkened as she glared at Connor with knife-like eyes as if she was going to kill him. Why did you break into the bathroom and hurled cosmetics at me? Connor patted the cosmetic powder off his face, looking pissed. 
Was she entitled to bully him just because she was a girl? Mina stared at him angrily as she came up, wanting to give him a fair one. You freaking pervert and stinky hooligan. It was you who hid in the toilet to peep at me. Yet, you still have the nerve to accuse me with your chop logic. Connor flipped out upon hearing that. I peeped at you? Get your facts right, the bathroom is only this big. Where would I hide? Mina walked over angrily and was stunned when she heard that. She lost her mind when she was angry just now. But looking back, Connor really had no place to hide considering how small the bathroom was. Mina blushed and continued, then, why were you hiding in the bathroom? I was hiding in the bathroom? Come on. It was you who broke into it, okay? Do you think that everyone is like you, hiding in the house every day without having to work or go to class? I'm not going to argue with you. I have something going on, Connor said sarcastically to Mina. Connor was furious. Mina was the one who suddenly came in when he was doing business in the toilet. Connor was an orphan who went to Port Hampton to attend college. He rented a room outside while working as a food delivery guy during his free time to make ends meet to support himself and his girlfriend. Mina was already staying there when Connor moved in. Despite living under the same roof for half a year, there was little interaction between them. Connor usually delivered takeouts besides attending classes, while Mina shut herself in the house. No one knew what she was doing. When Connor was not working, he would wonder if his sexy housemate was someone's kept woman, as every time he saw her, she looked tired. A misunderstanding like today was the first time it had happened. Having stayed here for so long, Connor also knew that Mina always slept late. Therefore, he did not lock the door when he went to the toilet. Little did he expect that Mina would get up so early today and come in without warning. Taunted by Connor, Mina blinked for quite a while before she came to her senses. Why didn't you lock the door? Do you think that the toilet is your private property? Mina did not care about that. Connor almost saw her naked, and she would not let Connor off just like that. Are you blind? The toilet lights were on. Didn't you see that? He would not be a gentleman to Mina since she could not be reasoned with. If it was not for Mina being a girl, he would have beaten her on the spot. Mina pointed at Connor furiously. Are you even a man? How could you blame me when you didn't lock the door? I will never be done with you if you don't apologize to me today. Oh yeah? Do you really think of yourself as some sort of celebrity? I won't even spare a glance at your flat chest even if you beg me, Connor sneered, sweeping his eyes over Mina's breasts with disdain. You Mina's face flushed. Honestly, Mina's breasts were not huge but she was not breastless. I'm not going to argue with you. I have things to do. Connor looked at the time. It was already 1.30 p.m., he had no time for Mina. Immediately, he grabbed the key on the tab IE and then hurried out the door. Come back here, Connor, you freaking pervert. Mina grabbed the cushion on the couch and hurled it at Connor. But Connor had disappeared out of the door in the blink of an eye. The security door was slammed shut with a loud bang before the cushion hit it. Holy moly! That girl is nasty, Connor sighed and went downstairs indignantly. After leaving his rental place, he rode his electric bike and headed toward the Empire World Building. Connor arrived downstairs at the Empire World Building at 2 p.m. The Empire World Building was 68 floors tall. It was a high-end commercial office building in Port Hampton so the rents on each floor were exorbitantly high. The open-air parking lot of the Empire World Building was full of all kinds of luxurious cars. The personnel entering and exiting the Empire World Building were all dressed in suits and leather shoes. They all appeared to be successful people. Connor, on the other hand, was dressed in a dirty food delivery uniform and stood at the door like a beggar. Excuse me, sir. For food delivery purposes, please go to the fire escape passage on the side, the beautiful receptionist frowned and shouted at him when he walked into the building. Her expression reeked of disdain. I'm not here to deliver food, Connor replied flatly. You aren't? Then, what are you here for? The receptionist still sounded not too happy. I'm looking for someone. Looking for someone? 
You're just a food delivery guy. Who are you looking for? The receptionist glanced disdainfully at Connor. Connor did not know the name of the person who called him earlier. He just wanted to find out as soon as possible whether the inheritance was real. So, he ignored the receptionist and walked toward the elevator. Hey, stop. What is wrong with you? I just told you to use the fire escape. The receptionist ran after Connor, trying to stop him. Ding. Just then, the elevator doors suddenly opened. Seeing that the receptionist was running after him, Connor quickly slipped into the elevator. Ouch. There was a sudden burst of scream in the elevator. Connor entered the elevator in a hurry. Not noticing that there was someone was inside, he collided with the person in the elevator. Are you blind? Didn't you see that I am inside here? The person in the elevator roared. Connor could not help but glance up at the woman in the elevator in frozen place. The woman was beautiful, in her early twenties, and was wearing a black professional suit that set off her nearly perfect hot body. Her long shapely legs were wrapped in a pair of black stockings. Overall, she looked pleasing to the eyes. Although there was a hint of anger on her pretty face, she was still sexy and charming. When Connor crashed into the woman, she was holding a cup of coffee in her hand, and the coffee was splattered on her chest. You freaking delivery guy! You are not supposed to be in this place. Security, get him out, the woman scolded in disgust when she saw Connor wearing a yellow food delivery uniform. I'm sorry. I was in a hurry, and I didn't notice you here. As Connor spoke, he took a tissue from his pocket and tried to wipe the coffee off the beautiful woman's clothes. When he reached his hand to the lapel of her suit, the woman screamed instinctively. Ah! Help! Help! More than a dozen security guards rushed over in an instant. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean it. Seeing the security guards running toward him, Connor pushed the black stocking beauty away and bolted into the elevator. Then, he hit the 38th floor button. When the security guards arrived in front of the elevator, they found that Connor had already taken the elevator up. Are you okay, Ms. Moore? What just happened? The head of the security team looked at the black stocking lady in puzzlement. A food delivery guy came out of nowhere and touched me. Catch that pervert and hand him to the police. The black stocking lady blinked while her sexy eyes were welling up. But, the head of security was in a pickle. But what? The black stocking lady frowned. The kid has gone up to the 38th floor. Mr. Woods has instructed that no one can go to the 38th floor without his permission, the head of security said helplessly as he looked at the beautiful lady. She was startled upon hearing that. Then wait for him here and block all the exits. He will eventually come down, anyway, said the lady with hatred in her tone while gritting her teeth. After entering the elevator, Connor looked at his right hand and felt helpless. The lady had well-endowed breasts, they felt good to the touch. But he also knew that he was in big trouble this time. However, Connor was not in the mood to worry about that. His priority was to figure out what the money he received was all about. A minute later, the elevator reached the 38th floor. Connor stepped out of the elevator and found that the entire 38th floor was a single unit office. The decoration of the interior was lavish. Looking out from the windows, one could almost overlook the entire Port Hampton city skyline in a single glance. Sitting on the chair behind the desk was a middle aged man in a suit and tie. When the man saw Connor, he hurriedly got up, walked over to him, and said respectfully, I've been expecting you, Mr. McDonald. So, you're the person who called me? Connor asked with a frown. Yes. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Thomas Morgan, General Manager of Empire World Corporation, the man said with a smile. Connor nodded, looking around the office, and asked, You called me and said that I have inherited an estate. What is going on? Mr. McDonald, do you remember your granduncle? Thomas asked in a low voice. My granduncle? Connor was stunned. Suddenly, he remembered that he had indeed seen his granduncle when he was a child. The thing was that his family said that his granduncle had died when he was still in elementary school. 
Your granduncle was the chairman of Empire World Corporation. At the beginning of founding the company, Mr. Barry emigrated abroad and lived alone. Because he has no children and other next of kin, all his property will be passed on to you, Thomas said slowly. I will inherit it all alone. Connor was stunned, not expecting that the stories that only existed in TV series had happened to him. Yes, let me give you a brief explanation of Mr. Barry's estate. He has a billion dollars cash in the country, which I have transferred to you in advance. But that is only a small part of it. Since Mr. Barry had been living abroad for a long time, besides Empire World Corporation in Oprana, his estate includes Terence Group in Europe, Radiant Group, and several African oil companies. Thomas took out a document from the drawer and explained to Connor the estate that he was to inherit. In the beginning, Connor was still listening attentively to Thomas's explanation. But toward the end, Connor felt that it was too surreal and could not help but interrupt Thomas. Hold on a second, Mr. Morgan. Are you sure that all these are mine alone? Absolutely. Thomas nodded, looking at Connor sincerely. How much are these assets worth? Connor continued to ask. Well, Thomas was startled for a second, and then, he said softly, conservative estimation shows that it's 10 trillion US dollars. 10 10 trillion? And, it's in US dollars? Connor was wide-eyed and voice trembling upon hearing what Thomas said. Absolutely. Thomas looked at Connor and nodded. That's impossible. Connor shook his head. You must be lying. My grandfather has a cousin, but I never knew that he is so wealthy. Ten trillion dollars should have put him on the list of world's richest men. I suppose you are talking about the Forbes list of the world's billionaires, right? Thomas looked at Connor and smiled. That's right. That's the list. If he was really that rich, he would have been on the list a long time ago, right? Let me tell you this, the people you see on the list are not really rich enough. They are on the list just to increase their fame in order to get better social resources. Mr. Barry had long passed that stage and had been living abroad for a long time. He just didn't want to reveal his identity. Connor looked at Thomas and felt that he was not lying. Even if Thomas was a liar, there was no reason for him to deceive a penniless guy like him. Okay, then. Is there any condition for me to inherit the estate? Connor calmed down his excitement and asked. Thomas pulled the drawer open, retrieved a document from it, and handed it to Connor. This is the will that Mr. Barry made when he was hospitalized. You just need to sign it, and the inheritance will be yours. But, there is one thing that you need to be aware of. What's that? Connor asked in puzzlement as he took the will from Thomas. Before Mr. Barry passed away, he specifically instructed that before you could inherit his estate, you must marry Freya Phillips. Otherwise, the estate would be donated to charitable foundations in its entirety, Thomas said slowly. Marry Freya Phillips? Who is Freya Phillips? Connor was stunned, not expecting that he had to fulfill such a special condition before he could inherit the estate. So, the inheritance came with a wife attached. According to the will, I can't reveal any information about her, Thomas said. Is Freya overweight and ugly? Connor asked with a frown. You don't have to worry about her. Even if she isn't good-looking, you can turn her into a beauty as long as you have money in this modern age, Thomas said with a smile. What you said makes sense. Connor rubbed his nose and nodded. Okay, I agree. If you have no further questions, sign the will now, and it will take effect immediately. Thomas pushed the will in front of Connor. Connor had no reason to refuse such a massive inheritance. He would marry a pig, not to mention an ugly woman, for the inheritance. It was because Connor had suffered enough from being poor. After Connor put his signature, Thomas put away the will, took out a black card, and handed it to Connor respectfully. What is this? Connor took it in puzzlement. It is the American Express Centurion card, the most prestigious debit card that American Express had launched in the United Kingdom in 1999. With this card, you can enjoy the world's top member-only benefits and services, and you can spend it well with no spending limit. Connor studied the Centurion card and smiled at Thomas. 
Are you sure I can use this card at will and there's no spending limit? Absolutely. The spending of this card is borne by your company, and the total market value of your company is over $10 trillion. So, if the spending is within $10 trillion, then it will be fine, Thomas explained softly. I didn't know that there was such a powerful debit card. Connor grinned as he was ready to leave in a moment so he could give the card a try. By the way, Mr. McDonald, this is my business card. I am running the company for you. If you encounter any trouble, feel free to call me. Thomas handed Connor the business card respectfully. I will. Connor took the business card. If there is nothing else, I'll go now. Let me see you out, Thomas said politely. It is all right. I can go by myself. Connor casually held up a hand and left Thomas's office. Five minutes later, Connor stepped out of the elevator. More than a dozen security guards swarmed over and surrounded Connor, who looked dumbfounded, not knowing what to do. I have been expecting you, you little pervert. The black stocking lady, whom Connor had touched earlier, came out of the crowd with her arms akimbo. She looked at Connor with a sneer in her eyes. How dare you molest Ms. Moore, you freaking delivery guy. You must have a death wish. You should have looked at yourself in the mirror, you shameless pervert. The beautiful receptionist also joined the others to bash Connor. It's true that it was my fault earlier, but I already apologized to you. What else do you want? Connor said to the black stocking lady in front of him with a frown. What do I want? Do you know how disgusted I felt when you touched me just now? I feel like killing myself whenever I recall what you did to me. The black stocking lady despised Connor. Her voice was filled with contempt. No one is stopping you from killing yourself. Get out of my way, I need to go now. Her remarks had pissed Connor off. It was clearly a personal attack. So, Connor also sounded exasperated. You want to go, the black stocking lady sneered and pointed at Connor. You're not leaving until you apologize to me. How do you want me to apologize to you? Connor looked at the black stocking lady with piercing eyes. His voice was icy. Kneel and kowtow to me, and I will forgive you. If you refuse, then I will hand you to the police, she threatened him. That's right, kowtow to Ms. Moore, the security guards echoed. As Connor was surrounded by the guards, he looked helpless. He did not expect that the lady would make such an unreasonable demand. He had just accidentally touched her breasts, and she demanded him to kneel and kowtow to her. What are you waiting for, kid? Get on your knees, the head of security said in a commanding voice. Connor turned to look at the head of security but said nothing. Being poor did not mean that he had no dignity. What are you all doing here, Scarlet? Just then, an angry voice came from behind Connor. It stunned everyone present. Thomas had wanted to see Connor out personally because Connor was now the chairman of Empire World Corporation. Moreover, as his subordinate, Thomas wanted to curry favor with him. Thomas just did not expect that Connor would go in such a hurry. Connor did not give Thomas the chance to butter him up, and he walked into the elevator alone. So, Thomas had to wait for the next elevator to go downstairs. When he finally came downstairs and stepped out of the elevator, he saw a crowd swarming around Connor, blocking him at the elevator entrance. He went weak at the knees at seeing what happened. M. Mr. Morgan. Scarlet saw Thomas and exclaimed in fear. What are you doing here, Scarlet? Thomas stepped forward, questioning her with a grave face. Mr. Morgan, this penniless delivery guy molested Ms. Moore. Ms. Moore and the others are now teaching him a lesson. The receptionist shot off her mouth before even figuring out what had actually happened. Penniless delivery guy? Thomas was struck dumb for a second, and then, he angrily pointed his finger at the receptionist. You are fired. Get out of here. The receptionist was appalled, blinking her big round eyes as she looked at Thomas in puzzlement. Mr. Morgan, I. Didn't you hear what one say? Get the hell out of here. Thomas was indifferent toward her, but when he turned to look at Connor, he was very respectful. Are you all right, Mr. Chairman? 
this is all my fault. I should have accompanied you downstairs and seen you out just now. I'm fine. Connor waved his hand. Everyone's mouth was agape as they were all astonished upon hearing what Thomas said. Did the general manager of Empire World Corporation just address the penniless delivery guy as chairman? Chair chairman? Scarlet was stunned. Her voice was trembling, and her pupils constricted. She looked at Thomas and asked, What is going on, Mr. Morgan? What is going on? Mr. MacDonald is the new chairman of Empire World Corporation. Apologize to him immediately. Thomas's face looked grave. Scarlet had a fearful expression on her face. However, she quickly came to her senses and said to Connor with no hesitation, Mr. MacDonald, I was wrong. It was my fault. I was the one who offended you. Please forgive me. Scarlet bowed to Connor after saying that. While bowing, she deliberately squeezed her breasts, exposing a large portion of her fair skin. Connor saw it and was wide-eyed. He could not help but exclaim in his mind, this woman called Scarlet is so much sexier than those college students. Just this act of hers alone had aroused his desire. How do you want to punish her, Mr. MacDonald? Thomas looked at Connor respectfully. Scarlet heard that and panicked. She hurried up to Connor and said softly, I beg you, Mr. MacDonald, please don't fire me. I will do anything you ask me to. Not everyone had the opportunity to work in the Empire World Corporation, which was the top dog of the top 100 companies in Oprana. It took Scarlett a lot of hard work to become a department manager earning a seven-figure annual salary. She did not want to lose her job because of this. You will do anything? Connor chuckled playfully. Seeing Connor's attitude, Scarlett beamed. Yes. As long as you don't fire me, one will do anything for you. She licked her lips as she spoke, and her eyes were teasing with seduction. Being able to become a department manager in her early twenties, Scarlett knew where her strengths lie. Besides, as the chairman of Empire World Corporation, Connor was a somebody. So, Scarlett thought that if she could make something happen between her and Connor, her position in the company would be solidified. Well, since you can do anything, then tomorrow you will work as a janitor in the company. With that, Connor walked out of the company building without looking back. Scarlett was rooted to the spot, feeling humiliated. She never expected that Connor was not tempted by her beauty, but instead, he asked her to become a janitor. Didn't you hear what Mr. McDonald said? Thomas asked with an indifferent face. Yes, Mr. Morgan. Scarlett nodded hurriedly. It was better to work as a janitor than to be fired. After leaving the Empire World Building, Connor was eager to test out the Centurion card. To do that, he headed toward a nearby bank on his electric bike. Five minutes later, he entered the banking hall of the bank. Since it was a weekday, there was no crowd in the bank. He went straight to the teller counter. The teller lady, a woman in heavy makeup and a professional suit, saw Connor come in and said lazily, How may I help you? She sounded cold. Having been in the job for so long, she could tell the background of the person at a glance. Connor was wearing a food delivery uniform, looking like a pauper through and through. The teller lady acted unenthusiastically, thinking he was just another insignificant customer. Nevertheless, Connor did not mind her bad service attitude. I would like to perform a withdrawal, he said flatly. Withdrawal? Don't you see the ATMs over there? The teller lady sounded not too pleased. Just Google it a little if you don't know how to use them. I'm busy. Busy? She was so free that she could take a nap there if she wanted to. Her attitude pissed Connor off, so he called out, one demand to see your manager. Connor raised his voice. Is this how your bank does things? Don't you know that customer is king? I can't believe it. Hearing the noise in the banking hall, the branch manager hurried out. What's going on? Seeing the branch manager and thinking she had reinforcement, the teller lady pointed at Connor. Mr. Manning, this guy is here to cause trouble. Mr. Manning was alarmed, looking at Connor with a scowl on his face. What are you doing here? Connor smiled wryly. 
I would like to perform a withdrawal. Mr. Manning frowned. There are ATMs for withdrawing cash. Why come to the counter? The manager and the teller lady were just the same, they sounded unappeased. Then suddenly the penny dropped, Connor realized that Mr. Manning and the teller lady were having an affair. He did not want to argue with them, so he just told them, what if I would like to withdraw $5 million? Dollar $5 million? The teller lady scanned Connor and taunted, a food delivery guy like you wants to withdraw $5 million? Ha, you must be kidding me. Did you mean $500? $5 million. In your dream. Mr. Manning also did not believe that the guy who looked like a loser could withdraw $5 million. However, a branch manager like Mr. Manning was a sly old fox. He cocked an eyebrow and asked, do you really want to withdraw $5 million? The teenager wearing a food delivery uniform might look like a loser, but sometimes, it was hard to predict the quirks of the rich. That was why he asked. Connor sneered. Why else would I come here if not for withdrawing money? Or, do you expect me to play games here? I have to inform my superior for such a large sum of money, Mr. Manning said indifferently, why don't you go to the lounge and wait for a while? Connor nodded, no problem. The teller lady sneered. Mr. Manning, don't tell me that you really think he has $5 million to withdraw, do you? Shut up and knock it off. Mr. Manning was not too happy. One look could tell from his experience that Connor was not joking. Connor was really going to withdraw $5 million. Ordinary folks would not come and ask to withdraw $5 million at one go. He was eager to cozy up to a super rich kid like Connor. The teller lady shut up immediately when Mr. Manning chided her. But she still had a disdainful look on her face. She did not believe that Connor had so much money to withdraw. A food delivery guy pretending to be a rich kid. Heck. But, half an hour later, when she saw Connor carrying a sack of cash out of the VIP lounge with Mr. Manning following behind him servilely, she was stunned. Her eyes were wide open. Did this loser really withdraw $5 million? Does he really have $5 million, Mr. Manning? The teller lady had not given up and asked the branch manager. Do you want him to show it to you? Mr. Manning snorted, looking not too happy. Fortunately, he was more observant and did not offend Connor like the fool. Otherwise, he could have lost his job as the branch manager. The woman wanted to open the package to see if there were $5 million inside. However, she choked back just as she was about to open her mouth. I apologize to you if my staff has said something that offends you, Mr. McDonald, Mr. Manning said respectfully. He then took out a business card. This is my business card. You may come to me directly if you need help in the future. Anyone with a working brain knew that a person who could withdraw $5 million in cash was a VIP customer. He did not become a branch manager for nothing. He had to fawn up to Connor as he did not want to lose this VIP customer to other banks. Connor nodded faintly, took the business card, and put it in his pocket. He then said in a disapproving tone, Mr. Manning, the service quality of your staff is much left to be desired. If this continues, it will not be long before you lose customers to other banks. I hope you can discipline your staff. Connor then tucked the sack of cash into the food delivery bag and left. Connor was riding an electric bike and was about to rush home. It was at that moment his phone suddenly started ringing. Connor, where are you? Don't you know that we have classes in the afternoon? His roommate, Dominic, yelled in urgency from the other end of the line. Dominic was Connor's roommate and one of his few friends in college. Oh crap, I almost forgot. Connor exclaimed. He then quickly said, one foot eleven inches head over to class right now. Hurry up. Dominic replied in a low voice and immediately hung up. Connor hurriedly rode his electric bike toward Port Hampton University's campus area. His first class in the afternoon was finance. It was taught by a lecturer called Ray Waxter. What Ray hated the most was students being tardy. Anyone who had the audacity to be late for his classes more than twice would have to repeat the subject the next semester. Hence, Connor did not dare to dawdle. 
As soon as he arrived at Port Hampton University, he quickly grabbed his food delivery bag and rushed to the classroom. Five minutes later, he finally arrived at the classroom. But he was still late. When Connor got to the classroom entrance, he felt the whole class staring at him. For a whole minute, Ray paid no heed to Connor and carried on his lecture in the class. Excuse me. Connor called out as he stood by the door. Ray finally put the pointer down and turned to look at Connor. He said coldly, Connor McDonald, did you lose track of time delivering takeouts? Do you have any idea what time it is now? Are you here to learn or to deliver takeouts? Ray obviously was not really expecting an answer from Connor when he asked these questions. He just wanted to humiliate Connor. All students in the class burst out laughing when they heard Ray's words. Connor, who was currently in his yellow uniform, was holding a food delivery bag, he truly looked like a food delivery person. Come here. Open that food delivery bag you have in your hand and show everyone the delicious takeouts that you've delivered today. Ray continued ridiculing him. Ha ha ha. Once again, the classroom was filled with roaring laughter. The two who laughed the loudest were Mandy and Brandon. They were currently sitting in the last row of the classroom and flirting with each other. The sight of them made Connor feel bitter. That was because when Connor was still with Mandy, she had never sat with him before. All of his classmates obviously knew about Mandy dumping him. I don't think that's necessary, Connor said indifferently. Although Ray Waxter was a lecturer at Port Hampton University, he was not an educator who cared about the students. On the contrary, he looked down on poor students, so he often picked on Connor in his previous lessons. However, Ray had always tried to please the students from wealthy families. It was as if he was a lap dog. Take your food delivery bag with you and quickly get to your seat. I'm warning you, the next time you're late, you won't be in my class anymore. The poorer they are, the more hopeless they are, said Ray coldly. He lost interest upon seeing Connor's reaction. Connor could only oblige obediently. He walked into the classroom with a food delivery bag in his hand. Many of his classmates were looking at the food delivery bag he had in his hand. They were even whispering to each other and letting out faint sounds of laughter. All of them were probably talking about him delivering food. Connor sat in his seat but did not pay attention to the lesson. He felt bitter as he peered at the last row, where Brandon and Mandy were sitting. Connor, are you all right? Connor's roommate, Spencer, whispered beside him. I'm fine, Connor replied indifferently. Why were you late? By the way, I heard that you and Mandy. Spencer, don't bring up something like that, said Dominic with annoyance while punching Spencer on the shoulder. Dominic and Spencer often helped Connor back when they were still in school, and Connor never forgot how good they were to him. I'm fine, really. Connor forced a smile at the two and placed the food delivery bag under his feet. Dominic and Spencer thought Connor was in a bad mood, so they did not continue bothering him. One class period ended very quickly. After Ray had left, a sweet-looking girl stood up. Class, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Let's have dinner together, she shouted while smiling. The girl, who was only in her early twenties, was very pretty and had a shapely figure. Her legs were fair and long. She had donned a blue short dress and a pair of sports shoes which made her look youthful and energetic. She was Eunice Tanner, the course representative of finance. Eunice was kind-hearted and innocent. She had never looked down on Connor for being poor. On the contrary, she had helped Connor many times. Yes. We can finally have a dinner party together. The student representative has spoken, so all of us must go. Everyone in the class immediately became restless. At that moment, Dominic ran to Connor. He placed his hand over Connor's shoulder and said, Con, come join us today. It's been a while since we had a dinner party together as a class. Dominic, why are you inviting that pauper? How could he have the money to attend the dinner party? A girl in a pencil skirt yelled at Dominic loudly. Connor could not help but lift his head to look at the girl. She was Mae Young, Mandy's best friend and roommate. Mae looked down on Connor and often bullied him. 
A huge part of the reason behind Mandy dumping Connor and choosing to be with Brandon was due to May's instigation. Exactly. How can a pauper like Connor afford to go to a dinner party? Mandy's other roommate, Lily Sullivan, added sarcastically. May, Lily, what are the two of you talking about? Dominic yelled, feeling irritated. Was one wrong? Would this penniless food delivery person have the money to join a dinner party? We had so many dinner parties together as a class, but have you ever seen him join one? May responded while rolling her eyes. I'll pay for Connor if he doesn't have the money. Is it really necessary for all of you to humiliate him like this, said Spencer, who stepped forward. He could not stand them anymore. Ho ho. Spencer, since you're so wealthy, why don't you pay for me as well? Brandon shouted with a poker face after he heard what Spencer said. Spencer turned to glance at Brandon. A hint of uncertainty flashed across his eyes. Even though Spencer's family was doing quite well, his family's wealth was nothing compared to Brandon's. Therefore, he could only shut up. I'll pay for Connor. We're all classmates. Was all of this necessary? Eunice yelled with a frown. She could not stand them too. Suddenly, Connor said nonchalantly, Eunice, you don't have to pay for me. I have the money. When Connor's classmates heard him say that, they were stunned. All of them had very strange expressions. None of them expected Connor to agree to come to the dinner party out of the blue. After all, Connor was currently in junior year, so he had been classmates with everyone for three whole years. Usually, Connor did not join them no matter the kind of get together that was held. There was only one reason behind it, he had no money. When Brandon heard Connor say that he had the money, Brandon immediately laughed. Yeah, right. The food delivery guy has the money to join a dinner party? Connor, how about this? Why don't you treat the whole class to a meal? Brandon, don't joke around. If the pauper treats us all to a meal, one foot eleven inches immediately go and eat poop. Suddenly, a guy with an unkempt and sleazy face shouted arrogantly. Connor said nonchalantly, all right. Since everyone wants me to treat the class to a meal that badly, then one will treat everyone to a meal. The sleazy-faced guy's smile instantly froze when he heard Connor's words. Everyone around them was surprised. Nobody expected Connor to agree to Brandon's request. After Brandon heard Connor say that he would treat everyone to a meal, a trace of confusion flashed across his eyes. He could not understand it, why would a pauper like Connor, who delivered food to earn money, suddenly turn over a new leaf and spend a big sum of money on treating everyone to a meal? Even Mandy was currently looking at Connor in shock. However, she quickly regained her composure. Connor was definitely posing. How could he possibly have the money to treat everyone to a meal? When Mandy thought about it, she felt glad that she had broken up with Connor. Otherwise, she would definitely feel so embarrassed right now. In her eyes, Connor was a loser who did not strive to improve himself. Not only was he penniless, but he was also a poser. What's up with Khan today? Dominic was also puzzled right now. I have no idea. Maybe he can't get over how his girlfriend left him for someone else, so he bit the bullet and agreed. Spencer whispered. Then, he added, treating the whole class to a meal would just cost $2,000. In the worst-case scenario, the two of us will foot the bill for him. All right. If we split it by half, it would be 1,000 each. Dominic nodded. At that moment, he felt a little sympathetic toward Connor. What's gotten into you, Connor? Not only are you joining our dinner party, but you're also treating us to a meal. Could it be that you're just talking big? May teased Connor with contempt. Yeah. If you're really treating us to a meal, then Melvin would have to eat poop. Lily added. Melvin Jones was the sleazy-faced guy who said he would eat poop if Connor treated everyone to a meal. Well, isn't it just a meal? Connor responded indifferently. He then turned to Melvin and said, When will you give everyone a show of you eating poop? If you have the guts to treat us, then one have the guts to eat poop. However, you're not planning on taking us to a food court, right? 
Melvin spoke to Connor disdainfully. Connor worked hard to treat us to a meal. How could we possibly go to a food court? It should at least be Brasserie Lou Bernardini Brandon jeered. Brasserie Lou Bernardine? Connor could not help but shake his head when he heard Brandon's words. Yes, exactly. Connor, if you treat us to a meal at Brasserie Lou Bernardine, one foot eleven inches eat poop for everyone to see. Melvin quickly added. What's the verdict, Connor? Since you intend to treat everyone to a meal, Brasserie Le Bernardine shouldn't be a problem, right? asked Brandon with a vile smirk. No problem. Brasserie Le Bernardine it is. Connor replied nonchalantly. Once again, his classmates were stunned by his words. All of them knew that Brasserie Le Bernardine was where the state banquets were held. All of the chefs there cooked for the nation's leaders. Treating the whole class to a meal would cost at least forty to fifty thousand dollars. How could Connor possibly afford it? Has Connor gone crazy? Why did he agree to it? Dominic gasped lowly. If they went to a normal food court, both he and Spencer could afford to pay for the meal if they each paid half. However, if it was Brasserie Lou Bernardine, the two of them would not even be able to afford it even if they sold themselves for money. Going to Brasserie Le Bernardine isn't a problem. However, one have one condition. At that moment, Connor suddenly spoke. What's the condition? Brandon asked while looking at Connor. For today's dinner party at Brasserie Le Bernardine, you and I divide the check by 50-50. How does that sound? Ho ho, 50-50? Brandon sneered and said with contempt, not a problem. The cost for today's dinner party, we'll split it 50-50. Brandon, you're a champ. Whoa, I'm actually going to dine at Brasserie Le Bernardine. Their classmates burst into cheers when they heard what Brandon said. A meal at Brasserie Le Bernardine with this many people would cost at least forty to fifty thousand dollars. Even though it was only half of the check, it still amounted to more than twenty thousand. Even though this pained Brandon a little, it did not mean that he could not afford the amount. On the contrary, he felt like Connor could not shell out the amount of money. Connor, just you wait. I'll see what you'll do when we pay for the check later. Brandon looked at Connor's back and smirked. A while later, they arrived at the most famous restaurant in Port Hampton, Brasserie Le Bernardine. The moment Connor's classmates entered Brasserie Le Bernardine, their eyes were wide in astonishment. Even though many in Port Hampton University were born into second-generation wealth, it did not mean that all students were very wealthy. There were students from average-income families who had never been to a place like that. Meanwhile, Dominic and Spencer were trailing behind Connor with anxious expressions. Con, do you really have enough money to treat everyone to a meal? Spencer hesitated for two seconds before whispering to Connor. Don't worry. Since I dared to come, I must have the money to foot the bill, Connor responded calmly. But? Just as Spencer was about to speak, a beautiful lady in a white bodycon dress walked over to Connor and everyone else with a smile. When the beautiful lady saw Connor, a hint of contempt flashed across her eyes. She then turned to Brandon and bowed while saying, Mr. Guthrie, are you here for a meal? That's right. We're here for a meal. Get me a big private dining room. Connor said in a conceited tone. Of course, Mr. Guthrie. We currently have the standard private dining room for $28,000, the VIP private dining room for $58,000, and the supreme private dining room for $88,000. Which would you prefer? The beautiful lady asked softly with a smile on her face. When Brandon heard what the beautiful lady said, he could not help but turn to Connor and say to him softly, Connor, it wasn't easy to get everyone to come to Brasserie Le Bernardine for once. I think the standard private dining room seems ingenuine. We might as well get the VIP private dining room. Brandon, aren't you being too unreasonable? The minimum cost for the VIP private dining room is $58,000? Dominic shouted as if he was a little dissatisfied. Everyone present knew that Brandon was deliberately making things difficult for Connor. If Connor actually bit the bullet and agreed, then he would have to spend a lot of money. If he did not agree, he would then be embarrassing himself in front of everyone. 
Brandon ignored Dominic and said to Connor, So? Just say the word. Yes or no? Could it possibly be that you're frightened by the price of the VIP private dining room? There's no need to get a VIP private dining room, Connor said nonchalantly. Ha ha ha, I knew you were a pauper. You don't have the money, yet you're still posing. Let's switch to the standard private dining room then. The reason Brandon had actually said those words just now was merely to ridicule Connor. After all, if they had really gotten the VIP private dining room, even he might not be able to afford it. Get us a standard private dining room then, gorgeous. Brandon turned to the beautiful lady in a dress and said. Of course, I'll have it arranged for you. The beautiful lady smiled while nodding her head. Hold on. When did I ever say that we're eating in the standard private dining room? It was at that moment, Connor spoke abruptly. What's the matter? You changed your mind because you think that it's too expensive? Brandon turned to Connor and asked. Since you mentioned that it wasn't easy for everyone to come to Brasserie Le Bernardine for once, then why just a standard private dining room? Let's go straight for the supreme private dining room. Connor said calmly. When Brandon heard what Connor said, he instantly froze. The smile on his face also dropped. On the other hand, their classmates were also dumbfounded. Connor, have you gone mad? Do you know that the minimum cost for the Supreme Private Dining Room is $88,000? At that moment, Spencer spoke. That's right. Connor, you can't possibly not know about Brasserie Le Bernardine's minimum spending rule, right? Brandon also had a ghastly expression. Brandon would not have expected Connor to actually request for the Supreme Private Dining Room. The expression of the beautiful lady in white gradually changed. She had thought that Brandon was the wealthiest kid in the group. Never had she expected Connor, who was dressed in a food delivery person's uniform, to be the richest among them. Mandy sized Connor up, and she also had a shocked expression on her face. She could not understand why Connor, who had been stingy, became generous. He was now like an entirely different person. Con, can you really shell out this much? Dominic stared at Connor and asked. Of course I can. However, I'm worried that Brandon won't be able to. Connor responded nonchalantly. After Brandon heard what Connor said, he was taken aback for a moment. Then, he proceeded to yell, fine. Isn't it just a supreme private dining room? Why wouldn't I be able to shell out the amount? Since Connor wants it, then let's get it. Brandon fell right into Connor's trap. Brandon did not have the cheat to say that he did not have the money. So, he could only bite the bullet and agree. Once the beautiful lady had the private dining room set up, she led them into the room. Everyone had puzzled expressions on their faces after entering the private dining room. After all, they could not figure out why Connor, someone who made a living by delivering food, suddenly became so generous. Connor, do you really plan on treating us to a meal here? May's tone toward Connor had changed a little. Her eyes were sizing him up. Of course. Everyone, eat all you want. Connor said nonchalantly. When everyone heard what Connor said, they immediately picked up the menu and started ordering. While they were ordering, Brandon looked like a sore loser and ordered a bottle of red Bordeaux in front of Connor. However, he did not expect Connor to follow along and order another 10 bottles of wine instead of feeling distressed. The order cost them nearly $50,000. Brandon's expression instantly darkened. He knew that he did not have that much money to pay the check. Brandon, aren't you looking a little ghastly there? Are you feeling distressed? Connor turned to Brandon and asked softly. Ho ho, those were just a few bottles of red wine. I have nothing to be distressed over. It's just a small matter. Brandon bit the bullet and replied, his head bowed as he checked his phone. He looked like he was going to look for people to borrow money from. Everyone dug in at once after all food was served. They did not care if Connor and Brandon could pay, but they just enjoyed themselves as long as they were not the ones who would pay for it. Mandy was sitting next to Brandon. Her expression was awful as she knew that Brandon could not afford to pay for today's meals. 
Even if Connor could pay for it, he would probably have to spend all his savings. Was it worth spending all his savings just to save face? Thinking about it, Mandy looked at Connor with even more disdain. She felt that Connor should not have competed with a rich kid like Brandon. Even if he won this time, it would not change the fact that he was a poor guy. One hour into the feast, everyone had had their fill. They all looked at Connor and Brandon, starting to worry that they would not have the money to settle the bill. The lady in a bodycon dress swung her hips as she walked up to Connor and Brandon in her high heels, and she said in a soft voice, the total bill is $140,800, sir. Would you like to pay in cash or by card? $140,000? Hearing the figure, everyone gasped in shock, and their chests were heaving. No one expected that the meal would cost so much. Brandon's expression stiffened. It was $140,000. Even though he only had to pay for half of it, it was still $70,000. He simply did not have that much money in his hands now. While everyone was still in shock, Connor picked up the food delivery bag at his feet and took out a stack of cash. It was exactly $70,000. They saw the banknotes inside Connor's food delivery bag and gasped in astonishment. Holy moly! A whole bag of banknotes. How much is it in there? Connor looked nonchalant as he handed the stack of cash to the lady in a bodycon dress. Here you go. Thank thank you. The lady was a little nervous when she took the stack of cash. She did not expect that Connor would be so generous and did not even bat an eyelid over the meal that cost $140,000. I will only pay $70,000 while he will pay the other half. Connor pointed at Brandon just when the lady was about to leave. Everyone in the room was wide-eyed, looking over at Connor in shock. They never expected that Connor could fork out $70,000 without batting an eyelid. Brandon was still in his seat. Cold sweat trickled down his back as he did not know what to do. Absolutely. The lady nodded, then she looked at Brandon. Would you like to pay in cash or by card? Brandon's mind went blank upon hearing that. He had long expected it would cost a lot to dine in Brasserie L.C. Bernardine. So, before Brandon came, he had borrowed $20,000 from a friend. Together with his own $20,000, he only had $40,000. Brandon did not expect that the meal would cost as much as $140,000. Give give me a second. Let me make a call. Brandon stuttered, and then he picked up his phone and started dialing. Before going out to dinner, everyone thought that the person who would not have enough money to pay was Connor, not Brandon. The lady wearing a bodycon dress knew that Brandon was calling for help, so she said nothing and walked to the cashier. A few minutes later, the lady returned and handed a receipt to Connor and said softly, Here is your receipt, sir. Connor nodded in acknowledgement. Then, he carried the food delivery bag and walked out of the private room. As for whether Brandon could settle the bill today, it was none of his business, and he did not want to know. When Dominic, Spencer, and Eunice saw that Connor was leaving, they hurriedly followed. Wait for us, Connor. Dominic called out as he ran out of the private room. Connor looked back at Dominic with a smile and asked, What's up? Where the hell did you get that money? Was it because Mandy broke up with you? Dominic frowned, asking with concern. It has nothing to do with Mandy. Connor let out a faint smile. I won the lottery two days ago. So now, I have some money. He did not want to reveal himself, so he made up an excuse to explain it. No wonder. Eunice nodded and scratched her chin thoughtfully. Since you have money now, why don't you buy yourself better clothes or use them for more meaningful things? Why waste the money inviting everyone to dinner? I didn't think about it that much, Connor replied her with a smile. No wonder you have the money to invite everyone to dinner, said Spencer. Is there anything else? If not, HL go now. Connor was afraid that his cover story would be blown. By the way, Connor, our class has a WhatsApp chat group. I am thinking of inviting you to join us, Eunice said as she took her iPhone out of her pocket. Uh. Connor hesitated for a moment and looked at her helplessly. I haven't downloaded WhatsApp yet. 
Add me when I get a new phone tomorrow. Okay. Eunice nodded, but she did not say much. Connor then turned and walked out of the restaurant. Dominic and Spencer both looked at Connor from behind in puzzlement. Even though Connor explained that he had won the lottery, they could sense that the current Connor was very different from before. Inside the Supreme Private Dining Room. Brandon had called almost all his buddies, but none of them could lend him some money. The lady in white knew that Brandon had no money to pay, so she called in the security guards, who stood in the doorway, to keep an eye on Brandon. If Brandon could not fork out the money today, they would not allow him to leave the place. Quick! Think of a way, Brandon. Mandy was nervous when she saw the security guards at the door. Don't worry, I'll call my dad and ask him to transfer the money. There was nothing Brandon could do now. He never expected that things would unfold this way today. Not only did he fail to humiliate Connor, but he also lost face in front of his classmates. I'm going to the ladies' room. Mandy then carried her handbag and walked out. I'm going too, May and Lily said in unison and left the private room, too, as if they were afraid that Brandon would borrow money from them. The three girls were in the ladies' room. May took out her makeup set, looked in the mirror, and started to touch up her makeup. Mandy, May, did you too notice that Connor looks like a changed man? He could fork out $70,000 and invite everyone to dinner, and his food delivery bag seemed to have a lot of money in it, Lily said in a low voice while washing her hands. So, what if he invited everyone to dinner? Isn't he still a food delivery guy? The way I see it, he just wanted to show off and make himself feel better in front of Mandy after getting dumped, May sneered. I must have been blind to date a broke guy like Connor back then. I really regret it whenever I think back about it. He spent his entire year's savings to invite us to dinner. I reckon he might have taken a loan. I just don't know what Connor is thinking, Mandy also said with disdain. Absolutely. He is such a pretender. Lily's mouth twitched. Smack. Just then, a blonde man walked in and smacked Mandy's butt. He looked so drunk. Hey, beautiful, why don't we have a drink over there to get to know each other better? Mandy's dress was a revealing strap cami with exposed shoulders. The most alluring part was her full bust. No normal man could resist such a sight. After getting smacked on the butt, Mandy spun around and gave the man a fair one in return. Look at yourself in the mirror. Someone like you should perish the thought of inviting me to a drink. Don't waste my time. After being together with Brandon, Mandy's perception had broadened, and she had also acquired a hot temper. Especially after Connor invited everyone to dinner and paid for it, she was exasperated. Now that someone had groped her, she would not play nice anymore. The blonde man was stunned after getting slapped. Then, he put his hand to his face and shouted, the asterisk TCH, don't take my kindness as a sign of weakness. Aya, the blonde man screamed in agony as he held his crotch and fell to his knees. Mandy had given him a good kicking in his crotch with her high heel when he was not paying attention. Rub your eyes so that you can see clearly next time. I am not someone who you can mess with, Mandy snapped and walked out at once. Stinky de asterisk keds like you have the nerve to invite Mandy for a drink. You are just as disgusting as Connor. May shot a scornful glance at the blonde man and left the place. The asterisk cheese. You three had better watch out. The blonde man shouted while kneeling on the ground, holding his crotch in pain. Mandy, May, and Lily did not take him seriously and went straight back to the private room. When they returned, Mandy saw that Brandon was still talking to his father over the phone. She could even faintly hear Brandon's father scolding him. It was a depressing scene, so everyone bowed their heads and said nothing. Mandy knew that Brandon was in a bad mood right now, so she did not tell him about her being groped. Twenty minutes later, Brandon's father arrived at Brasserie Le Bernardine by car. When Brandon saw his father's car, he ran out to his father. Dad, I have been having. A middle-aged man got out of the car and slapped Brandon in the face. Smack. He then glared at Brandon and berated him, Who do you think you are, $70,000 for a meal? Once we reach home, I will teach you a lesson. The other classmates looked helplessly at Brandon. 
They had known Brandon for so long, and they had never seen Brandon look so embarrassing. Being slapped by his father in front of everyone, Brandon could not feel more humiliated than that. He blamed it all on Connor. If it was not for Connor, he would not have been so embarrassed. Connor had spent all his money on Mandy before the breakup. So, his mobile phone was an outdated Android machine, which could only make phone calls and would crash as soon as he downloaded WhatsApp. Eunice had reminded Connor just now. So, after leaving Brasserie Le Bernardine, he bought the latest iPhone from an Apple store. The cost of the iPhone was just a drop in the bucket compared to how much he had now. Only now had Connor discovered how enjoyable life was for the rich. Half an hour later, Connor rode his electric bike and returned to his rented place. But, the moment he inserted the key into the keyhole, he hesitated. He wondered if Mina would be sitting in the living room with her hands folded, waiting for him to come home and scold him. He honestly thought that he had done nothing wrong at noon. But then again, women never talk sense, and men were at fault for everything. With a mixed feeling, Connor turned the key and the door opened with a click. The living room was pitch black, and the entire house was so quiet that he could hear a pin drop. He was relieved as he laughed at himself for his ridiculous thought. Mina had been shutting herself in the house all day for the past half year of Connor sharing a house with her. No one knew what she was doing. She ordered takeout delivery every day, and the total time of the two of them seeing each other was less than three hours. Sometimes, Connor wondered what Mina was doing inside her room. He tried to listen in occasionally and heard music interspersed with the voice of Mina talking. Turning on the light and gently closing the door with his feet, Connor dragged himself into the living room and collapsed on the couch. Several major things had happened in quick succession today, causing him to feel tired and dispirited. After resting for a while, he dragged himself up, returned to his room, found a clean set of clothes, and went into the bathroom. Another ten minutes passed. Connor, wrapped in a bath towel and wiping his hair, emerged from the bathroom, which was right next to Mina's room. As Connor walked past outside her room, he heard Mina's voice, and he could not help but stop and prick up his ears to listen in. Mina's room was noisy, and the booming music made Connor feel uncomfortable. It even drowned out Mina's voice. After listening in for a while, he could only make out words like tips, guys, and follow. Curiosity killed the cat. Connor could not help himself as he wanted to find out what Mina was doing. That question had been bothering him all this time. She did not go to work or class but holed up in the room all day with her computer always on. She had high monthly expenses with all the branded handbags, cosmetics, Versace, and Dolce & Gabbana, which were not some budget brands. But that aside, the rent alone cost $2,000 a month, which was not affordable for normal white-collar workers. Since Mina was not doing anything, how did she support herself? Recalling the few words that he had just heard, the penny dropped and a thought came to his mind, was Mina a cam girl? Connor was most familiar with the term cam girl. A pleb like Connor often browsed various websites to quench his youthful restlessness. Some live streaming apps had cam girls. As long as one paid, one could interact with the cam girls, request them to dance, sing, or have dirty conversations. When one was acquainted with them, one can even bring them out to dinner and watch a movie. Privately, those cam girls may also interact with their top supporters, sending them selfie videos or something is privileged for being their top sponsors. To put it bluntly, these live streaming apps were akin to the adult websites of some countries. The clothes they wore and the words they said were all highly suggestive and flirty, just stopping short of being naked. When Connor heard Mina's voice, he was on a high, thinking that perhaps Mina was that kind of cam girl. Cam girls mainly relied on tips from the audience and advertisement income. And, Mina was beautiful and dressed sexily. If she was a cam girl, her income would certainly not be low. Connor rubbed his nose and sighed. What is wrong with this world? Pretty girls are selling their bodies or seducing the rich kids. Can't they find a proper job to support themselves? Connor roared in a low and helpless voice. Mandy had given up on herself for the sake of a rich kid. And now, even his housemate was doing the same unsightly thing. It seemed that every beautiful girl had to use some crooked ways to make a comfortable living. He then thought about himself. After three years of working as a food delivery guy, day in and day out, 
he realized that he had lived in vain. Just then, the door swung open with a loud bang. Mina came out of her room and bumped into Connor head-on. Mina was startled, bouncing a step back, and stared at Connor warily. What are you doing standing here? Connor was also startled, not expecting Mina to come out at that time. His gaze fell on Mina, only to see her wearing a pair of hip-length hot pants, which were so tight that they almost sank deep between her thighs. Her off-white, body-hugging, textured strap t-shirt revealed half of her fair and ample bust. Connor swallowed hard, pretending to be calm. Ahem. Well, I just came out of the shower. Connor returned to his bedroom as he spoke. Mina looked at Connor from behind with suspicion. It was not until Connor had disappeared into his room that she remembered that she was supposed to go to the bathroom. She did not think much about it and rushed into the bathroom. That was a close call point one back in his room, Connor quickly closed the door and leaned against it to breathe a heavy sigh of relief. Honestly, Mina had really startled him when she suddenly came out. If she knew that he was eavesdropping on her room, she would kill him on the spot. Connor shook his head, tossed the towel aside, and lay down on the bed to fiddle with his phone. Since he had just bought the phone, he needed to install the apps he usually used. With time on his hands, he first downloaded Twitch, thinking about watching a livestream. Coincidentally, Connor found a familiar face in the recommended channels section as soon as he opened Twitch. That person was none other than Mina. Feeling excited, Connor clicked into the channel named Mina's Private Cabin. In the livestream, Mina was singing, and her voice was sweet. She moved over to Twitch not long ago. Before that, she had been livestreaming on another platform. Her livestream content was mundane. Other than singing and chatting, there was no explicit content, so her popularity was not high. There were very few viewers watching the livestream currently, but the bits, donations, and subscriptions she received every day were enough for her to spend for a month. Hey, beautiful, can I add you on Facebook? Do you have a boyfriend? If you don't, why don't you try me? Quote me a price, beautiful. How much do you charge for a night? Add me on your Facebook, beautiful. I will show you my enormous baby. As a cam girl, Mina would meet many weird viewers every day. But she could not be angry in front of so many people. Getting angry with her audience meant losing them, and it would be difficult to continue working as a cam girl. To develop her channel, Mina selectively answered some viewers' questions and ignored the insulting comments and demands. Fortunately, she had several moderators to help monitor the chats on her channel. I will sing another song for everyone because I'm about to end this livestream. Mina smiled sweetly. Just as she was about to start singing, she saw a viewer with the purple sub-gifter badge enter her livestream channel. Welcome Knowles of Port Hampton to my livestream channel. Mina quickly said. But after that viewer entered the livestream channel, his first chat made Mina feel embarrassed. Since you're so beautiful, show me your pole dancing skill, Mina. 50 bits for that. Holy moly. 50 bits. This guy is crazy rich. Knowles, tip first, and Mina will dance. Exactly. Just singing is no fun. Mina, pole dancing, please. Since Knowles has requested it, Mina, strip now. Because of Knowles of Porthampton's messages, the views on Mina's channel went ape. For a cam girl like Mina to receive a 50-bit reward was high. Supposedly, Mina should feel happy when someone's willing to spend money on her. But, she was not good at dancing, nor did she like the teasing dance. So, she squeezed a smile and said, I can't dance. How about you request a song, and I will sing it to you. But, Knowles of Port Hampton did not seem to buy it. I just want to see you dance. I will first send you 25 bits. Knowles of Port Hampton just sent Mina 5 bits. Knowles of Port Hampton just sent Mina 5 bits. Knowles of Port Hampton just sent Mina 5 bits. Notifications with special effects flashed on the screen. Awesome rich guy. You're my idol. You are the man. Proud of you. Dance now, Mina. The rich guy has sent you 25 bits. Dance. Dance. After Knowles of Port Hampton sent Mina 25 bits, 
the number of viewers had spiked. Some viewers, who had just come in and did not know what was going on, followed the herd and cheered for Mina to dance. Mina was in a pickle. First, she could not dance, and Knowles of Port Hampton seemed to have some ill intentions. If she danced, he might make more demands. Because of the bits, thousands of views had come into Mina's livestream. The viewers seemed to carry a frantic rhythm, some lewd viewers even requested her to dance in a miniskirt. Mina gritted her teeth with an aggrieved look on her face. But she did not dare to cry. In the entire Twitch platform, Mina was an innocent streamer. She could do what other camgirls do and flaunt her body in front of strangers. However, there was no way she could do that. Mina knew if she did that, she would get a lot of tips. But she did not want to do something that was against her principle. Just as the viewers were booing, Connor sent a chat that made him an instant public enemy. What's so manly about scumbags like all of you to bully a girl like this? Among the many chats, this one viewer soon became the object of siege by the other viewers. Isn't it just a dance? How shameful could it be when she is not even stripping? How do you become AB asterisk TCH and remain innocent at the same time? There are no two ways about it. She is just playing a delaying tactic. If I were you, I would have started dancing. Just F asterisk CK off, new account without a cheer badge. Knowles has sent Mina bits to request her to dance. If you are not happy about it, you should also send her bits, loser. This fool is a wuss. You should keep his mouth shut if you can't afford to pay. Because of the bits, viewers in Mina's livestream channel had differing qualities. There were all types of people, including trolls. When they saw a new account that did not even have a badge, it upset them instantly. They started to single him out and attack him. Mina saw the viewer speaking up for her, and she felt touched and sorry for him. She hurriedly tried to stop them from fighting. Cut it out, you guys. I appreciate you all for coming to my livestream to show your support. I thank the viewer who speaks out for me. But I can't do pole dancing. Inside the room, Connor held his phone and saw the chats. His face was darkening. But what Mina said surprised him. It came as a surprise to him that Mina was not swayed by the offer of money. It was hard to stick to one's principle when loads of tips came in. Before this, Connor had always thought that Mina was the kind of snobbish girl who dressed revealingly all day, just to hook up with rich kids. But now it seemed that Mina might look open on the outside, but she was very principled. Let me ask you again, will you dance or not? The chat of Knowles of Port Hampton came again, but Mina chose to ignore him this time. F asterisk Q, B asterisk TCH. Stop pretending. A B asterisk TCH that pretends to be innocent. Believe it or not, do you know that I can ruin your popularity on Twitch? Seeing that Mina ignored him, Knowles of Port Hampton became furious and turned nasty. Mina's expression changed. As she gritted her teeth, she said, Mind your language, Knowles of Port Hampton. I appreciate your support. But, if you don't like what I do, you may leave now. Fine. I hope you will not regret it. Buddies, let us go to another streamer. A hot chick. After sending his last two chats, Knowles of Port Hampton left Mina's livestream channel. Moments later, a message popped up on the homepage. Knowles of Port Hampton just tipped Rabbit Giant 50 bits. Click on the link to enter the livestream. After a while, Mina's popularity took a nosedive. Her viewers dropped from 30,000 to 100. Seeing her viewers leaving her, Mina's eyes welled up as she felt indignant. She said nothing and continued to sing. In less than a minute, the number of viewers watching her livestream had dropped to just a dozen. She looked at the pitiful number of viewers and could no longer hold back her emotions. Tears flowed down her cheeks. CM just sent Mina's private cabin 100 bits. Click on the link to enter the livestream. A huge banner flew across the screen. The 100 bits of tip shocked the viewers in the livestream channel. One bit was equivalent to $1,000.100 bits would be $100,000. And, the person who sent Mina 100 bits turned out to be the new user. Mina looked at the 100-bit tips. 
she was shocked and her eyes filled with disbelief. She never imagined that someone would be so generous to reward her with $100,000. Mina had been a streamer for quite some time and had her own loyal followers. However, her livestream content was too clean, and she had not even revealed her thighs, let alone performing sexy dances and stripping. So, the money she could get every month was minimal. Tips like 100 bits had only appeared in Mina's private cabin for the very first time. Mina stared at the screen, feeling surreal and wide-eyed. After Connor sent Mina 100 bits, Mina's popularity soared again. The number of viewers increased from 1,000 to over 20,000. Who is CM? He forked out $100,000 as a tip at once. Incredible! Those who just said that new accounts were wusses, broke, and losers, please step out. Mina, since the rich guy is so supportive of you, you have no escape tonight. Rich guy, I am 18 this year with long legs and a wasp waist. Please support me. This is my number, 110XXXX. Let's have fun tonight. There was an explosion of discussion with everyone speculating who CM could be. There was no lack of gold diggers who wanted to be a kept woman there. Connor read the comments and just smiled, explaining nothing $100,000 would be an annual salary for an average person, but it was nothing to Connor. Mina was rooted to the spot right now, and she even forgot to thank Connor. CM, are you trying to play the hero? I said I would ban this streamer, and you sent her tips? What are you trying to achieve? Knowles of Porthampton's message popped up in the chat box again. Connor sneered, but he did not respond. Aren't you rich, kid? Then, let's make a bet, I will support Rabbit Giant's livestream while you support that B asterisk TCH. Whoever loses is a Jack asterisk SS. Knowles of Porthampton saw that Connor was not talking and got angry in an instant. Fight back. Don't be afraid of him. Yeah, whack him. As though the situation was not heated enough, the viewers cheered on for Connor. Nina snapped back when she saw the chats. CM, I'm grateful that you sent me tips, but please ignore people like him. Knowles of Porthampton just sent Rabbit Giant 10 bits. Knowles of Porthampton just sent Rabbit Giant 30 bits. Knowles of Porthampton just sent Rabbit Giant 50 bits. While Knowles of Porthampton had given Rabbit Giant nearly $20,000 worth of gifts, Mina's private cabin had yet to receive anything. CM, aren't you a high roller? Did you get cold feet? Let me show you what a real high roller is. CM, why aren't you saying anything? You poor pretender. I have seen many poor d asterisk kids like you. Don't you want to hit on Mina? Don't you even think about getting her if I can't hit on her? Knowles of Porthampton taunted Connor when there was no response from Connor. The viewers who originally supported Connor started to turn against him, following Knowles of Porthampton to insult Connor. CM just tipped Mina's private cabin 1,000 bits. A cool message flew across the screen. 1,000 bits were worth $1 million. When viewers saw the message, they and even the entire platform fell into silence. Mina was stunned and wide-eyed with her mouth agape. She could not imagine that someone would tip her $1 million at one go. Holy moly, another 1,000-bit tip. Awesome rich guy. Who the hell is CM? He is well deserved to be called a rich guy. He's so generous. After a moment of silence, Mina's livestream channel started to fire up, reaching 500,000 viewers, and the chat section exploded. Mina looked at her computer screen, feeling dumbfounded. Where is Knowles of Porthampton? Doesn't he want to bet with the rich guy? Knowles, why are you so quiet? Come on. Don't get cold feet now. Keep tipping. Knowles of Porthampton, who had previously mocked Connor, disappeared without a trace after seeing Connor give out a $1 million tip. Meanwhile, Connor found his phone constantly vibrating after tipping 1,000 bits. Countless streamers sent him private messages. Some even sent photos with extremely explicit content and nearly half of their bust exposed. However, Connor was not tempted at all. CM, thank you, thank you so much. What is your Facebook account? I will add you as a friend. 
Nina was smitten, and her voice emotional. She no longer looked as aloof as before, but instead, she became even more stunning. It's okay. I am going to sleep now. Bye. After Connor sent out the chat message, he exited Twitch and got ready to sleep. As he lay in bed, he thought of his life for the past years. Connor worked his butt off as a food delivery guy for three years to support Mandy and himself, and he endured countless ridicule and insults. But now, he had finally come up in the world, and he would make those who had humiliated him pay for their mistakes. Don't you like rich people, Mandy? If you didn't break up with me, you would have been the richest girl in the world. But alas, it is all too late. Connor could not help but lament softly. Knock. 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 Just then, someone knocked on the door. Who is it? Connor asked subconsciously. But no one else was in the house other than Nina. Are you sleeping, Connor? Sure enough, Nina's sweet voice came from outside the door. It's late at night. Why is Nina looking for me at this hour? Did she find out that I am CM? Connor thought to himself. Then, he said toward the door, not yet. Is there something you need? Come over to my room. I have something for you. Nina then returned to her room. She has something for me? What the hell is she up to? Connor looked puzzled when he heard Nina. After hesitating for a moment, he got dressed, pushed the door open, and walked out. Nina was so beautiful. Even if she was up to no good, he had nothing to lose. After Connor gave a few knocks on the door, Mina came to open the door with a smile. You're here. Please, come in. Connor realized that he had overthought when he saw a table full of delicious food. Are you having a party or something? Why did you suddenly invite me over? Connor asked. I want to share my happiness with someone today. Since I know no one else in Port Hampton, I asked you over. Besides, it was my fault for hitting you with cosmetics today. Think of this as an apology. Mina said with a smile and told him everything that had happened in the livestream today. Connor listened silently and occasionally pretended to be surprised. After all, she still did not know that CM, whom she kept mentioning, was him. I wonder who CM is. He is so generous, Mina said bashfully to Connor as she chewed on her snack. Who else could he be? He is some rich guy, Connor said flatly. I am sure he is. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible for him to tip me with that kind of money. Did you know that when he tipped me today, I was really moved? It would be even better if he is handsome. I admit I would not hesitate to marry him. Her face blushed as she spoke. Connor was startled, and then, he frowned when he heard that. Aren't girls all gold diggers? What are you talking about? When did I become a gold digger? Mina was not too happy. Didn't you just say that you were moved by that rich guy? I was moved because he helped me, Mina hurriedly explained herself. He helped you? Connor asked in puzzlement. Yeah. After graduating from high school, I left home and came to Port Hampton alone. I don't have any skills, and I can only make two or three thousand dollars a month. To support myself, I became a streamer. But, I never sold my dignity and body for money. I have my principles. People insult me and say that I'm a whore online. No one had spoken up for me until I met CM. He is the first person to help me online. Mina's voice was filled with emotions. Then, why did you run away from home? Connor asked after being amazed for a moment. Nothing. Mina gave a perfunctory reply. Don't just talk about me. How about you? I don't even know what you do for a living. Connor briefly introduced himself and talked about himself and Mandy. Mina's situation was similar to Connor's in the sense that they were both alone in this bustling metropolis. Mina might have done better than Connor did, but they both had so much more in common and shared many common topics. Mina went on to tell Connor more about herself, and Connor listened attentively. It was not until LOAM that he returned to his room and crashed. 10 AM the next day. 
After getting out of bed and freshening up, Connor left on his electric bike. He had not bought himself clothes for the past half year because he had to support Mandy back then. So a yellow t-shirt was all he wore all day, and his college mates derided him because of that. Therefore, when he woke up in the morning and saw his shabby uniform, he decided to head to the largest shopping mall in Port Hampton and bought himself a few decent outfits. After arriving at the shopping mall, Connor found a designer clothing store and walked straight in. The salesgirl did not look down on Connor, but instead, she served him with passion. He chose one set of each clothing style, totaling five sets of clothes, costing nearly $30,000. But such an amount of money was nothing to Connor now. After settling the bill, he kept one set for himself and asked the salesgirl to send the remaining sets to his rented place. He then went into the fitting room with the clothes and changed. The saying clothes makes the man could not be more accurate than this. Connor was by no means unattractive, and he was full of masculine charm. Just that the delivery uniform that he wore previously covered up his charm, making him look uncool. But now, after changing into some designer clothes, he looked like a changed person. If a man's charm was worth anything, the current Connor could feed the entire world's population with his handsomeness. There was no doubt that Connor was rich now, as he had spent over $30,000 at once. Coupled with his charming appearance, he had completely captured the heart of the salesgirl. She had stars in her eyes and even winked at Connor when he left. Connor took a deep breath once he was out of the fashion store. He had never felt so good at spending money in his entire life, paying $30,000 just like that without batting an eyelid. Before this, it would have hurt him to death if he had spent a few hundred dollars. But now, he could not help himself. He had the right to overindulge now. Where are you, Connor? The counselor's class is starting in a while. Why aren't you here yet? Just as Connor was leaving the fashion store and getting ready to rush to the university, he got a call from Dominic. I'm on my way. Connor pulled out his phone and replied. Then, he rode his electric bike and scooted to the campus. As a junior, he did not have to attend many classes, except for the counselors, which he had to attend, no matter what. First, Connor did not dare to skip a counselor's class. Second, the counselor was a vixen, and he did not want to offend her. In Connor's eyes, the college counselor was a full-fledged vixen, the kind that bewitched sentient beings. Ten minutes later, Connor arrived at the lecture hall. By that time, the counselor was in the midst of delivering her lecture when Connor knocked on the door softly. Come in. A soft voice spoke. Connor pushed the door open and went straight in. He then turned his gaze to the vixen-like woman on the podium. She was wearing a white shirt and underneath them was her bust, which was ample and round. She also wore a body-hugging short skirt that wrapped her hips tightly, making her curves beautiful and seductive. Moving his eyes further down, he saw a pair of beautiful long legs in high heels. She looked sexy and alluring. The woman was Rachel Wallace, Connor's college counselor. Why are you late? The hot Rachel glanced up and down at Connor, and she asked in a tone that seemed to be a little angry. What else if not because he posed to be rich by inviting everyone to dinner last night? Now that he has spent all his money, he has to go deliver food again, Melvin said aloud. Everyone else burst into laughter upon hearing what Melvin said. Did I ask you? Why are you being such a busybody? Rachel turned to glare at Melvin and chided him. Melvin quickly shut up upon hearing that. There was a rumor going around Port Hampton University that Rachel's background was so powerful that even the Chancellor did not dare to mess with her. So, Melvin had to shut his mouth and behave. I am sorry, Ms. Wallace. I overslept this morning, Connor said, looking at Rachel. Get out and stand in the hallway. If you are still late next time, you don't have to come to my class anymore, Rachel said in an icy voice. All right. Connor nodded helplessly and walked out of the lecture hall. Once he was out in the hallway, he started to think about what had happened in the past two days. He thought all this was incredible. Just yesterday, Mandy had dumped him because he was broke and his college mates had insulted him. And now, he had become the richest man in the world. That feeling was wonderful and unreal. What would Mandy think if she knows that I have so much money? 
Connor could not help but sigh in his mind. Half an hour later, the bell rang, and the class was over. Rachel stepped out of the lecture hall. Her high heels made a loud click-clack sound as she walked up to Connor. She looked at him up and down again, then squinted at him. Help me get something from the registrar's office at four o'clock in the afternoon and deliver it to my dorm, do you hear me? Got it. Connor quickly nodded his head. I will not spare you if you're late again. Rachel then swung her hips and walked downstairs. Connor returned to the lecture hall, looking miserable. When he entered, he found that Mandy and May were not there. Where did you go earlier, Connor? How dare you be late to the counselor's class? Dominic asked softly. Too much gaming last night. I overslept. Connor explained softly. You must have gotten too carried away by winning the lottery, right? Spencer looked at Connor and smiled. How much money did you win? Not much, just 100,000 something, Connor said with a smile. Holy moly! 100,000 something is not much? You are rich! Spencer said in surprise. Connor was in no mood to talk about it. Instead, he glanced around and asked, Where are Brandon, Mandy, and the others? Didn't they come to class today? Didn't you know? After we left yesterday, Mandy, May, and Lily had a confrontation with a goon in the restaurant. It is said that the goon has a bit of a known background and knows someone. He came to the campus this morning to take Mandy, May, and Lily away. Brandon should have gone to rescue them right now, Dominic quickly explained. Ever since she followed Brandon, Mandy seems to have become a different person. She is arrogant. I heard she kicked the goon. But, she didn't know that the guy had a background. Spencer chimed in. Connor could not help but sneer when he heard that. Meanwhile, at a private lounge in a bar called Dusk, a few gangsters were sitting on a couch while eating peanuts and drinking small bottles of alcohol. Mandy, May, and Lily were cowering in the corner of the room with anxious expressions. At that moment, Mandy felt immense regret. She never imagined that the blonde guy would have such a strong background. If she had known who the blonde guy was, she would have never kicked him with her high heels no matter what happened yesterday. The blonde guy was called Todd Knowles. Todd Knowles was a nobody but his older brother was Peter Knowles. Peter Knowles was an infamous gangster near Port Hampton University. The bars, karaoke boxes, and shower facilities around Port Hampton University were all places dominated by Peter. If a student from Port Hampton University crossed Peter, things usually did not end well for them. Bang bang! Suddenly, a loud knock sounded from the outside of the private lounge. Come in! Peter sat in the middle of the couch and said coldly. Brandon walked into the private lounge with a nervous expression. He bowed and scraped as he greeted Peter, Hello, Pete. Is that you, Brandon? Peter looked like he knew Brandon. A smile appeared on Peter's face. When Mandy, May, and Lily saw the smile on Peter's face, a glimmer of hope flashed across their eyes. If Brandon knew Peter, there was still a way to fix the situation. Pete, I'm so sorry. My girlfriend didn't know any better, and she hit your little brother. Could you? Let them go today, for my sake. I'll definitely repay you in the future, Brandon said inferiorly while looking at Peter. Ho ho. Since Mr. Guthrie has requested it, then I will do it for your sake. Peter laughed coldly and said, I originally planned to let my little brother savor these three ladies. But since Mr. Guthrie has made a request, then forget it. Compensate for my little brother's medical expenses, then you can take the three of them. How much are the medical expenses? Brandon froze for a moment before asking through his gritted teeth. Your girlfriend did the damage, so she pays 100000 The other two will each pay $50,000. Peter said while pointing at Mandy. Upon hearing that, Brandon was frozen on the spot. He had a stiff expression on his face. Brandon had spent $70,000 at Brasserie Le Bernardine yesterday. Moreover, it was his dad's money. Now that Peter was asking for $100,000, Brandon could not possibly shell out that much money. What's the matter? 
you don't have the money? Peter asked with a frown as if he perceived Brandon's predicament. Pete, isn't $100,000 a bit too much? Brandon said lowly. Ho ho. If you think that it's too much, that's fine. The three ladies will spend a night with my brother, then we'll call it a day. Peter laughed pervertedly. No. No. Brandon quickly shouted when he heard what Peter said. He then waved his hands. Well then, Pete. How does this sound? First, I take her away. Then, I'll send the money over after two days. Don't worry, I'll definitely have the money ready. Peter's lip curled into a half-smile on his face. All right. Since we've known each other for so many years, I will do it for your sake. Don't you have a BMW? Right now, you can put your car up to be pawned here. Then, you can gather enough money within three days, and I'll return your car to you. When Brandon heard that, he was stunned. What's the matter? You're not willing to? Peter asked coldly. No. Not at all. Brandon quickly shook his head. He fished out his car keys and placed them in front of Peter. All right, take your girlfriend away. Peter said nonchalantly after taking Brandon's car keys. Let's go. Brandon looked at Mandy, May, and Lily with a resigned expression. The three girls quickly stood up and prepared to leave with Brandon. However, Peter suddenly shouted, who allowed you all to leave? I only allowed Brandon to take his girlfriend away, but the two of you are staying. May and Lily instantly became pale when they heard what Peter said. They looked at Brandon and Mandy in despair. Brandon, you. You can't leave us here. May wailed. Brandon turned to glance at May before saying helplessly, I have to even put my car to be pawned. I don't have any spare cash to help you too. The two of you better think of a way yourselves. Brandon was never close with May and Lily, to begin with. If he wanted to save the two of them, that would mean spending another $100,000. Brandon was not willing to suffer such a loss. After Brandon finished talking, he dragged Mandy out of the private lounge with him. May and Lily stood helplessly on their spots, and they had very ghastly expressions. They did not expect Brandon to be heartless enough to leave the two of them behind. Do the two of you plan on spending some money to avoid disaster or do you plan on spending the night here with my little brother? Peter said while drinking beer and looking at them with a perverted gaze. May had a sultry figure and amazing assets. Moreover, she wore something very revealing today. The deep plunge top paired with a micro miniskirt fully accentuated her sultry figure. As for Lily, even though her figure was not as good as May's, she had pretty good looks. She was one of the rare beauties at Port Hampton University. Pete, we. We'll pay. May shuddered with fear when she heard what Peter said. She quickly stammered out a response before taking out her phone and started making calls. Lily was cowering beside May and had also started contacting her friends. Even though May and Lily came from well-off families, they had not reached the point of being wealthy. As such, $50,000 was a huge sum to them. Ten minutes later, the two of them had contacted all of their friends on Facebook. However, no one was willing to lend the two of them money. May, what do we do now? None of my friends are willing to lend me some money. Lily said in a choked voice. She was feeling so anxious that she was about to cry. How would I know what to do? All of my friends are saying they don't have money, May said helplessly while frowning. Lily hesitated for a moment and said lowly, May, I heard from Mandy today that Connor might have hit the jackpot for a lottery scratch card. That's why he had the money to treat everyone to a meal yesterday. Why don't you give him a call and ask him to lend the two of us some money? We humiliated him badly yesterday. Would he still lend us money? May asked hesitantly. Well, we can't find anyone else right now. Why don't we give it a try? All right. May nodded helplessly and dialed Connor's number. In the classroom. Connor saw May's incoming call. He did not even have to think to know what was happening so he immediately declined her call. May did not give up. She dialed his number again. 
Who's this? Connor asked with an unfamiliar tone. Connor, it's me. I need a hundred thousand dollars right now. Could you lend it to me? May looked down on Connor from the bottom of her heart, but she was completely out of ideas right now. Why should I lend you money? Connor said coldly. You, May was stunned when she heard what he said. She then gritted her teeth and said, Connor, didn't you recently break up with Mandy? If you lend me some money today, then I'll be your girlfriend. You know my looks aren't far from Mandy's. Besides, I have a better body than Mandy. You want to be my girlfriend? Connor could not help but laugh. He then said playfully, you think you're worthy? Connor, aren't you taking things too far? Isn't it just a jackpot from a lottery scratch card? Aren't I worthy of being your girlfriend? May felt angry and embarrassed. All right, I'm done wasting my breath. Okay, I can go over there and save you. But I have one condition. You and I will spend the night at a hotel together. How's that? Connor said slowly. You? When May heard what he said, she immediately blushed. She did not expect Connor to be this shameless. I'll let you think for half a minute. After all, call charges are pretty expensive. Connor said coldly. May held her phone and could not help but turn to where the blonde guy was. Right now, she had to choose between the blonde guy and Connor. While Connor was a little on the poor side, he had pretty decent looks. Moreover, he had a burly figure from delivering food all year round and exuded a presence of manliness. If May had to choose between the two of them, she would rather choose Connor. It's just spending a night with him. This is better than being in the hands of the blonde goon. Tvi said some things that humiliated the blonde guy yesterday. Who knows what he'll do to me if I spend the night with him? May weighed her options. She bit her lip and said, All right, Connor. I'll do it. Connor immediately hung up after hearing her response. He felt a little emotional. The May Young who used to humiliate me in every possible way is now willing to sleep with me for $100,000. In this world, prostitution was more acceptable than poverty. Inside a private lounge of dusk. What did Connor say? Will he lend us the money? Lily asked anxiously after May had finished calling Connor. Yep, he said yes. May nodded gently. Her conversation with Connor was still echoing in her mind. May had never expected that she would end up having to ask an incel like Connor for help. And, Connor would lend her money on the condition that she would spend a night with him. It was hard for May to accept that she had to sleep with Connor. But, if she could not come up with $100,000, her fate could be much more terrifying as a goon like the blonde guy could do anything. So, May could only agree to Connor's request. I didn't know that he still had some conscience and was willing to lend us money. Lily was relieved, feeling less worried after hearing that Connor was willing to help them. May furrowed her brows and turned to look at Lily snappishly. I am lending you this money. You will have to repay me when you have money in the future. Why? Isn't Connor the one who lent us both this money? Lily was not too happy. If Connor lent her this money, she could act cute in front of him, finding favor with him, and he might waive her debt. She thought she was good at dealing with an incel like Connor. Who do you think you are? You think Connor is stupid enough to lend us money just like that? He will lend us the money only on the condition that I sleep with him. I will forego this money if you replace me and spend a night with him. May was aggravated, gritting her teeth. Lily was stunned, mouth agape, and could not say a word. After a long while, she looked at May and said, You're crazy, May. How could you sleep with someone like Connor for $50,000? You have any better alternatives other than agreeing to Connor's request? Isn't sleeping with Connor better than with Todd? May said with a sneer. Lily stood there dumbfounded, not knowing what to say. Don't tell anyone else about this. Or else, I promise I will kill you myself. May looked at Lily with threatening eyes. I won't tell anyone. Don't worry, Lily quickly said. Todd was sitting on the sofa and becoming impatient. 
He slammed the table and scolded, Have you borrowed the money yet, you two batches? You two will follow me now if there is no one coming for you. My friend will be here in a while. There was a hint of fear in May's eyes when she heard what Todd said. Five more minutes. If your friend hasn't arrived after five minutes, you know what is going to happen, Todd said impatiently. May cowered in the corner, nodding timidly and not daring to speak. Knock. 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 Just then, someone knocked on the door outside the private lounge. Come in. Peter hollered toward the door. Connor pushed the door open and walked straight in. A twinkle of emotion flashed in the eyes of May and Lily when they saw him. I am here for them, Connor said expressionlessly after glancing at May and Lily. Did you bring the money? Peter asked in an icy voice. He sat in the middle of the couch and did not even look at Connor. Connor put the food delivery bag he was carrying on the table and said, Here are $100,000. Now, let them go. Todd quickly opened the food delivery bag and then walked over to Connor, scanning him with scorn, and grinned. I didn't expect that an incel like you could come up with 100 grand so quickly. You're rich. Whether I'm rich or not has nothing to do with you, Connor said. What an arrogant kid. Todd walked up to Connor and looked at him carefully. He was wide-eyed as if he suddenly remembered something. No wonder you look familiar. You're the food delivery guy near Port Hampton University, right? This is the kid, Todd. I have seen him several times at the university, one of Todd's underlings said. Ha, huh, no wonder you look so familiar. How many takeaway trips did you have to make to earn 100 grand? Was it worth doing it just for these two be asterisk cheese? Todd asked. His voice was filled with disdain. Todd, I heard that his girlfriend just dumped him recently. He spent all the money he made as a delivery guy for three years on that girl, who ended up running away with a rich kid. The most dramatic thing was that he only found out that his girlfriend was cheating on him when he delivered food to a hotel and bumped into her and that rich kid. What a loser, Todd's underling next to him said. Ha, this boy is an exemplary incel. He still wants to play the hero when he can't even feed himself. I almost died laughing. Todd burst into laughter when he heard what his underling said. The others laughed along with him. Connor had a calm expression despite everyone's ridicule. He remained unmoving at his spot and did not refute. To him, these people were merely a bunch of clowns. In their eyes, however, Connor was behaving cowardly. May and Lily watched Connor stand there blankly and unmoving. Their eyes were filled with contempt as they scorned Connor. They had never seen a man remain so indifferent after being humiliated so badly. He was utterly hopeless. The two of them now understood one thing, even though Connor had become wealthy, it still did not change the fact that he was a loser. May was starting to feel regret. Sleeping with someone like Connor would stain her reputation. She was even starting to think that sleeping with Todd Knowles would be much better than with Connor. Are you all done laughing? Connor lifted his head to look at Todd, who was standing in front of him, and asked softly. No. Not yet. Ha ha ha. Let me laugh for a bit more. Growing up, I've never met someone like you. I'm going to die of laughter, Todd clutched his stomach and laughed wildly nonstop. Connor did not say a word after hearing what Todd said. He continued standing there blankly. Lily and May watched Connor with speechless expressions. It took a while for Todd to finish laughing. He looked at Connor and said, All right. Since you've brought the money, I won't make things difficult for you. Lick my shoes clean and I'll let you all leave. Connor's gaze grew cold when he heard Todd's words. He lifted his head and looked at Todd. Suddenly, the entire room became quiet. Todd saw that Connor looked like he did not want to lick his shoes. Todd said with a terrifying expression, Are you F asterisk King Def? I told you to lick my shoes clean. You didn't F asterisk King hear me or what? I've given you the money. What else do you want? Connor said to Todd in a low voice. Right now, Connor did not want to expose his own identity so he did not fuss over what Todd had said earlier. 
However, asking him to lick someone's shoe had crossed the line. Didn't you hear me say what I want? Lick my shoes clean, and then, you can scram with them. Todd obviously did not intend to let them leave with Connor. After all, the two girls, May and Lily, could be regarded as beauties, and chancing upon them once was not easy. That was why he deliberately made things difficult for Connor. If Connor really kneeled down to lick Todd's shoes clean, Todd would find other ways to embarrass him. Connor, why are you just standing there? Hurry up and lick. We can leave when you're done licking. May quickly shouted when she saw Connor standing there unmoving. Connor's gaze instantly grew cold when he heard May's words. He never expected May to say something like that. After all, he was here to save the two of them. Did you hear that, punk? Hurry up and lick my shoes clean. Then, you can leave. Todd said to Connor while laughing. Connor remained expressionless at his spot and did not utter a single word. Todd, stop messing around. At that moment, Peter, who had been silent, suddenly shouted. Peter, you. Todd looked confusedly at Peter. He did not know why Peter had stopped him. Since Connor has brought the money, stop making things difficult for him. Let them go. But I, Todd looked as if he was a little reluctant. I told you to let him go. Didn't you hear me? Peter bellowed coldly. Todd looked at Peter and hesitated for a moment before speaking, All right, consider yourself lucky today. Take these two B asterisk cheese and scram. Don't let me see any of you again in the future. When May and Lily heard what Todd said, they quickly ran toward Connor's direction. A few minutes later, Connor left dusk with May and Lily. Lily turned to glance at Connor and said to him disdainfully, Connor, I heard that you're only willing to lend us money because May agreed to sleep with you. Is that right? Hmm, does that have anything to do with you? Connor asked coldly. Of course it does. How can someone like you sleep with May? Why don't you take a look in the mirror? Lily said with contempt. She then added, we'll pay you back. But regarding. May sleeping with you, dream on. Let's go, May. After Lily said that, she proceeded to drag May away and wanted to leave. She had never uttered a single thank you to Connor from the beginning to the end. Naturally, May did not want to sleep with Connor. After all, she was still a virgin. How could she sleep with someone like Connor? She turned around without hesitation and wanted to leave. The two of you can leave if you dare. If I can save you two from Todd Knowles, then I can also get him to capture you two again. That's why I think the two of you better consider it thoroughly. Connor suddenly shouted just as May and Lily were about to turn around and leave. When May heard what Connor said, her body quivered momentarily and she instinctively stopped walking. Connor, isn't this a bit too much? We're classmates. Is doing such a thing necessary? Lily turned to Connor and yelled. That wasn't what the two of you said when you bullied me. Connor said with a meaningful smile. You? Lily was stunned when she heard what Connor said. Lily, you stay out of this. I'll just spend the night with him. Otherwise, Todd Knowles might actually capture the two of us, May whispered through gritted teeth. How could I possibly let you get tainted by a person like him? Lily yelled while staring at May with her wide eyes. It was as if she cared about May very much. If you feel bad, I'm fine with you spending the night with me instead. Connor said to Lily with a meaningful expression. When Lily heard what Connor said, she immediately let go of May's hand without hesitation. She then whispered, Don't worry, May. I won't tell a single person about this. Lily said and quickly strode far away. She was scared that Connor would suddenly force her to stay. Meanwhile, May stared hopelessly at Lily's back, not knowing what to say. Connor hailed a cab and said to May, don't just stand there. Get in the cab. May stood at her spot and hesitated for a moment. She then gritted her teeth and followed Connor into the cab. Ten minutes later. The cab arrived at the entrance of Seven Days Hotel. Connor knew that many couples from Port Hampton University would come here to hook up every weekend. 
However, Connor had never stayed at a hotel before, so he did not know anywhere else and could only take May here. This is my first time, Connor. Yet, you're taking me to a shabby hotel like this? May said when she got out of the cab as if she was a little dissatisfied. At least I'm taking you to a hotel. Do you want me to take you to the woods and bang you? Connor responded with a blank expression. You? May instantly blushed when she heard what Connor said. She then said through gritted teeth, I'm warning you, don't you tell anyone about us hooking up. Otherwise, I won't forgive you even when I'm dead. Also, when we get into the hotel room later, you're not allowed to kiss or touch me anywhere. Quickly get it done and I'll just pretend that I got bitten by a dog. In the future, the two of us will have nothing to do with each other, do you understand? Connor looked very speechless after he heard what May said. He walked to the hotel's front desk and booked an hourly rate room. When the receptionists saw Connor and May walk in, a hint of confusion flashed across their eyes. After all, Connor was dressed like a loser while May was beautiful and sexy. The two of them did not look like a couple at all. Even though May spoke very loudly when she was making agreements with Connor just now, this was actually her first time hooking up with a boy. So, she was feeling very anxious. May stood by the door and hesitated for a long time, but she still did not dare to enter. Come on in. Connor opened the door and said expressionlessly. No. I won't go. The moment May stepped one foot into the room, her other foot started to back out. Are you going back on your word? Connor looked at May and asked with a poker face. So what if I am? This is my first time. I'm not going to sleep with a loser like you. May glanced disdainfully at Connor and said with contempt. If you don't come in, then I'll give Todd Knowles a call right now. Do you think Todd would be as courteous? Connor said nonchalantly. Do you take me for a fool? Todd Knowles already got your money. Why would he listen to you? Even if I were to leave right now, you can't do anything about it. May said as she turned around and prepared to walk toward the direction of the escalator. If you leave right now, I can get Todd to send you back to me. Do you believe me? Connor stared at May's retreating figure and said coldly. You filthy loser, why are you posing? May turned to Connor and glared at him. She then walked to the escalator without turning back. After May had left, a meaningful smile appeared on Connor's face. He took out his phone and dialed Thomas's number. Mr. McDonald, how may I be of assistance? The moment the line was connected, Thomas's respectful voice sounded. Go to dusk and get in touch with a person called Peter Knowles. Get him to send May Young to room 802 at Seven Days Hotel. Connor said indifferently. All right, Mr. McDonald. I'll get right on it. Thomas did not ask any questions and immediately complied with Connor's request. After Thomas hung up the phone, he got someone to get a hold of Dusk's phone number. He proceeded to contact Peter and Todd. Hello, who's this? In the bar's private lounge, Peter picked up the phone a waiter handed to him and asked impatiently. Peter Knowles? This is Thomas Morgan. Thomas said nonchalantly. Mr. Mr. Morgan? How can I be of your assistance? Peter's tone instantly changed to a respectful one when he heard that the person on the other end was Thomas Morgan. After all, everyone in Port Hampton knew who Thomas Morgan was. Naturally, Peter did not dare to disrespect him. Take your younger brother, Todd Knowles, with you and capture Mae Young. After that, send her to room 802 at Seven Days Hotel, understand? Thomas commanded in an authoritative tone. Ununderstood. Peter complied without any hesitation. Although Peter did not know why Thomas wanted to do such a thing, but not even his boss dared to disobey Thomas's orders. As such, he quickly brought Todd with him and rushed to Seven Days Hotel. Meanwhile, May still did not know what was awaiting her. Half an hour later, Peter and Todd found May at a bubble tea shop near Seven Days Hotel. They took her to the front door of room 802. Let go of me. What do you want? Did Connor ask you all to do this? Quit blabbering and get in. If you dare to escape again, I'll kill you. 
Peter looked at May and said threateningly. After all, Thomas was the one who asked him to bring May here, so it meant that the person in the hotel room was a big shot. Naturally, Peter did not dare to cross their path. That was why Peter took Todd back to the bar after bringing May to the hotel. May was now standing in front of the door and had started to hesitate. She eventually pushed the door open while trembling and walked in. In the bedroom, Connor was sitting on the bed and looking at May with a meaningful expression. It. It was really you? May looked at Connor who was standing in front of her. She shouted with an astonished expression. How was that? I told you I would get Todd Knowles to send you back if you dared to leave. I didn't lie to you, right? Connor looked at May with a meaningful expression. He then walked over to the door and locked it. What are you doing? May quickly shouted when she saw Connor lock the door. Take off your clothes. Connor did not chat around with her and immediately commanded. May was instantly stunned when she heard Connor's words. A hint of fear flashed across her eyes. Even though May looked coquettish on the surface and always wore revealing clothes, she was actually really conservative. Moreover, her hot body and extremely good looks inevitably made her arrogant, so she had never hooked up with a boy before. Now that she was asked to take her clothes off in front of a man, it was practically a form of humiliation to her. Additionally, that man was not just anybody, but the Connor MacDonald that May truly looked down on. She could not even imagine how she was going to live if she actually hooked up with Connor that day. You're not taking your clothes off, aren't you? I'll get Todd to come right now and see what he'll do to you. Connor saw May standing at her spot unmoving. He took a few steps and wanted to leave the room. No, don't. I'll take them off, all right? May quickly stretched her hand out to tug at Connor before she bit her lips and said. Then, hurry up and take them off. Connor turned around and looked May up and down. May took a deep breath and unbuttoned her micro mini skirt with trembling hands. She then slowly took it off. When May took off her micro mini skirt, a pair of fair and slender legs appeared in Connor's view. He had to admit that May indeed had a hot body. It was not an exaggeration to call it unworldly. Go on. Connor said expressionlessly. May stared at Connor and hesitated for two seconds. She then bit her lips and started to take off her top. It only took a while for May to take off her low-cut blouse, and her seductive figure was exposed right in front of Connor. May covered her chest with her hands and said to Connor shyly, Hurry! Hurry up and do whatever you want to do. When Connor heard May's words, he could not help but smile. He then did something that May had never expected. Connor opened the door, turned around, and walked outside. Connor, what are you doing? May quickly shouted when she saw that Connor intended to leave. I have done what I wanted to do. You're free to go. Connor responded coldly. You're. You're done? May was stunned when she heard what Connor said. She stared at Connor with her beautiful eyes, not knowing what he meant. Didn't you want to sleep with me? May hesitated for a moment and asked Connor. However, May thought of something in the very next second. She quickly ran over to him and tugged at him while saying pleadingly, Connor, I know I was wrong. I take back what I said earlier, you can kiss me. Right now, you can do whatever you want. I'm begging you, please don't ask Todd Knowles to come. May thought that Connor had changed his mind, so she pleaded inferiorly with him. Perhaps it was due to May's nervousness that she did not cover her chest with her hands. So, her body was completely exposed. Did I ever mention that I was going to get Todd Knowles? Connor asked May softly. You? If you aren't going to get Todd, then why are leaving? May was stunned briefly before she asked. You didn't actually think that I was interested in hooking up with you, right? Connor looked at May and could not help but laugh. He then said with disdain, I won't have any thoughts for women like you even if you stripped yourself naked in front of me. What I did today was just to see how far a gold-digging woman like you could go for money. I, Connor McDonald, can't sleep with a woman who sells her first time for $50,000. You bastarisk starred. May frowned and glared at Connor while yelling. 
How am I AB asterisk starred? Connor asked her nonchalantly. Connor, you did this to humiliate me, didn't you? May asked angrily. That's right, I'm humiliating you. I wanted to let you know that I won't bother laying a finger on women like you, even if you crawl onto my bed completely naked. Connor responded with contempt. He then turned around and walked out of the room. May was the only one left in the room standing dumbfoundedly. Connor's words from just now echoed in her mind. That was when May realized how ridiculous her behavior was earlier. Maybe she did not have the right to humiliate Connor at all since she was not even much nobler than Connor. Connor took his phone out and dialed Thomas's number once he was out of Seven Days Hotel. How can I help you, Mr. McDonald? Thomas's voice came through as soon as the call went through. Help me check out a guy named Todd Knowles, Connor said softly. You got it, Mr. McDonald. I will send someone right away, and someone will contact you soon. Thomas readily answered. Good. Connor nodded and hung up. Then, he hurried to Port Hampton University. A Bentley stopped in front of Connor before he could enter the university campus. A middle-aged man in a suit stepped out of the car and bowed to Connor with respect. Hello, Mr. McDonald. Connor studied the man in the suit. You're Thomas's guy? Yes, Mr. McDonald. Mr. Morgan asked me to check the background of a man named Todd Knowles. I have obtained all his information. Are you going to go meet him now? The man in the suit asked. Let's go, Connor said, nodding. Please, Mr. McDonald. The man in the suit opened the car's door, thoughtfully putting his hand under the roof rail. He was very diligent. The man's action made Connor feel awkward. You don't have to do that, he said in a low voice. You are Mr. Morgan's boss, and Mr. Morgan is my boss. It is my pleasure, the man in the suit said. Okay. What is your name? Connor smiled at the man in the suit. My name is Kyle Hayes. Just call me Kyle, Mr. McDonald. The man in the suit said as he drove. You're Kyle Hayes? Connor was shocked, and his expression was changing dramatically. You heard of my name before, Mr. McDonald? Kyle asked with a smile. Of course I've heard of you. You're well known in Port Hampton, Connor replied in surprise. Ha, huh, thank you for your compliment, Mr. McDonald. I am just a nobody in front of you. Please feel free to call me if you need me in the future. Kyle looked at Connor respectfully. Connor looked at Kyle helplessly, not knowing how to describe his feelings. Everyone in Port Hampton had heard Kyle's name to a greater or lesser extent, and Connor heard the name from the mouths of his classmates. It was said that there was a bigwig who knew everyone in Port Hampton, and his name was Kyle. In the whole of Port Hampton, almost no one dared to mess with Kyle, and most of the illicit businesses in Port Hampton were under Kyle's control. Connor had never expected that the legendary godfather, Kyle Hayes, would drive him and ask him to call him by his name. If Dominic and Spencer knew about it, would they not be scared to death? Ten minutes later, Kyle parked the Bentley in front of Dusk, then got out of the car to open the car door for Connor. I have asked my men to investigate it, and they have found Todd in this bar. Well, let us check him out inside, Connor said and headed straight into the bar. After a few moments, Connor found the private lounge that he had been to earlier, opened the door, and walked in. Todd was playing poker when Connor came in. He was stunned for a moment before he grinned. Gee, isn't this Connor, the cuckold? Why did you come back here? Are you going to lick my shoes or something? I'm sorry, but it is my shoes that are dirty this time. Connor looked at Todd and smiled calmly. Your shoes are dirty? Todd was dumbfounded when he heard what Connor said. But, he quickly came to his senses and came up to Connor with an angry face. Peter was sitting on the couch, squinting his eyes at Connor, and wondering what was Connor doing coming back here. Kid, you just said that your shoes were dirty, didn't you? Todd looked at Connor defiantly. That's right. Connor nodded lightly. This kid's shoes are dirty. What do you all think we should do? 
Todd looked to his underlings, and then, he barked with over a dozen men lunging up to surround Connor in an instant. Mr. McDonald just said that his shoes are dirty. Why are so many of you surrounding him, Todd? Kyle stepped into the private lounge just then. Peter was sitting on the couch drinking beer when he heard Kyle's voice. He turned his head and was rooted to the spot, looking surprised when he saw Kyle. Who the hell are you? Todd did not know Kyle and stared at him ruthlessly. Peter came up and kicked Todd to the ground as soon as Todd's voice trailed off. Crash! He then glared at Todd and berated him severely. How dare you talk to Kyle like that? Apologize. K, Kyle? Todd was confused, looking up at Kyle and wondering why Peter kicked him. Why are you kicking me, Peter? Who is Kyle? Slap. Peter slapped Todd in the face again and said exasperatedly, This is Kyle. Kyle Hayes. K, Kyle Hayes? Todd was utterly dumbfounded upon hearing what Peter said, and so did others at the scene as they looked at the man in the suit in front of them with a frightened face. It was not after a long while that Todd came out of his shock and fell to his knees, kowtowing to Kyle with a pleading voice. I'm sorry, Kyle. I was too blind and didn't recognize you at once. I wouldn't have dared to talk to you like that if I had known who you were. I came here with Mr. McDonald. One heard that some of you seem to have offended Mr. McDonald, Kyle said in a flat tone. Am, Mr. McDonald? Todd was kneeling on the ground, and it stunned him when he heard that. When he looked up at Connor, his face was ashen and his body shivered in fear. Connor walked over to Todd tardily. I remember right here earlier in this lounge, you enjoyed humiliating me, right? Mr. McDonald, it, it was my fault. I shot off the mouth and was too blind and ignorant. One wouldn't have dared to insult you if I had known that it was you. How could Todd had ever imagined that a poor food delivery guy would be Mr. McDonald, who even Kyle had to respect? But, he did not have time to think much about it now and could only kowtow while begging Connor to let him off. Did you hear what I just said? Connor asked Todd in a flat tone. What did you say? Todd was stunned for a moment before he looked up at Connor. Connor extended his right leg in front of Todd and went straight to the point. One told you that my shoes are a little dirty. Todd swallowed hard and turned to look at Peter, banking his hope on him. However, Peter knew exactly who Kyle was. And since Connor was getting so much respect from Kyle, it said a lot about Connor's background. Mr. McDonald said his shoes were dirty. Didn't you hear him? Kyle hissed. Why, yes, yes, I heard him. Feeling frightened, Todd squatted down and stuck his tongue out as he was ready to lick Connor's shoe. But, Connor pulled his foot away all of a sudden. Todd looked confused and moved his head to follow Connor's foot. But, Connor moved his foot away again. Mr. McDonald, what do you mean by that? Todd glanced up at Connor and asked in puzzlement. Nothing. Just that your dirty mouth disgusts me, Connor said flatly. Todd was rooted to the spot, looking embarrassed before he reluctantly said to Connor, Absolutely, absolutely. My mouth is dirty. I'm not worthy of licking your shoe. Forget about licking my shoe. I'd like to hear you bark like a dog, Connor said softly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Woof, 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 woof. Todd had been so frightened by Kyle that he did not dare to disobey Connor. He crouched on the ground and started barking. Everyone looked on and tried very hard not to laugh. After that, Connor looked at Kyle and said in a low voice, Let's go, Kyle. Peter broke out in a cold sweat when he heard what Connor said. Who would have thought that the high and mighty godfather of Port Hampton was now playing second fiddle to Connor? That made Peter even more curious about Connor's identity. Yes, Mr. McDonald. Kyle respectfully agreed, then he followed Connor out of the private lounge. Stunned for a moment, Peter then picked up the $100,000 on the table, quickly ran after Connor, and smiled. I'm so sorry about today, Mr. McDonald. One didn't mean to offend you. Please take this money back, Mr. McDonald. Keep the money. This little money is nothing to me. Connor replied in an indifferent tone and left the private lounge without even looking at Peter. 
Holding the $100,000 in his hands, Peter stood on the spot, looking embarrassed and puzzled. If Connor was just as Todd said a poor kid who made a living delivering food how could he know someone like Kyle and not care about $100,000? Todd was still on his knees with a hurt look on his face. Are you satisfied with the outcome, Mr. McDonald? If you're not, one will instruct someone to fix Todd again, Kyle said hesitantly as he followed Connor out of the private lounge. Todd is nothing more than a punk. There's no need to bother with what he said, Connor said faintly. Absolutely. Kyle nodded. Let me send you back to the university, Mr. McDonald. It's all right. Your car is too flashy. One don't want to draw too much attention. One will go back on foot. Connor refused without even thinking about it. Well then, if you need my help in the future, call me directly. Sure. Connor nodded back, then he turned and left the bar. After Kyle drove away, Connor walked down the street alone. Looking at the traffic on the street, he started thinking back to what had happened for the past few days. Sometimes, money doesn't only make people take off their clothes, but they also make them kneel and bark like a dog. Connor could not help but laugh. Buzz. Just then, his phone rang. Connor took out his phone and looked at the screen. It was an unfamiliar number from Port Hampton. He answered with a soft voice, Hello, who's this? Connor, it's me. Have you helped me take the book to my dormitory? There was a sensuous female voice on the other end of the phone. The woman was none other than Connor's college counselor, Rachel. Professor Wallace, one just had a brief delay. One will do it now. Are you in the dormitory? Connor suddenly remembered that Rachel had asked him to run the errand when he was standing in the hallway as a punishment in the morning. One will go back later. Please go to the registrar's office and bring the stuff, Rachel replied faintly, and then, hung up. Connor put the phone back in his pocket and ran straight toward Port Hampton University. As much as he had money to do whatever he wanted, he could not help but be afraid of messing with a big meanie like Rachel. Five minutes later, Connor finally arrived back at the university. He ran straight to the registrar's office to pick up Rachel's stuff. He regretted that he turned down Kyle's kindness of giving him a ride and had to walk all the way back alone. Had he accepted Kyle's offer, he would not have been so exhausted. Knock. 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 Connor gave a couple of knocks on the door of the registrar's office. Come in. The voice of what might sound like a middle-aged woman answered. Connor reached out, pushed the door open, and said, Professor Wallace asked me to come over and get something. Upon hearing that, the middle-aged woman glanced up at him and pointed to a large box on the floor. Then, she said expressionlessly, take it. Everything is there. Thank you, Connor replied softly as he bent down to lift the box. He then turned and walked back to the dormitory. Rachel asked Connor to move the textbooks for this semester. Fortunately, they were not heavy and still easy to carry. Prior to this, Rachel had, on many occasions, asked Connor to move things to her dorm room for her. So, this was not the first time he had ever entered the female dormitory, and the female wardens knew Connor. It did not take long before Connor came downstairs. As he opened the door of Rachel's dorm room, an alluring fragrance drifted into his nostrils. It smelled exactly the same as the scent on Rachel's body. Connor took a greedy breath and then walked in. Port Hampton University staff enjoyed great benefits and perks here. The university provided every teaching staff one bedroom and one living room unit. The dormitory room was well decorated. Pious, Rachel was obsessed with cleanliness. The room was spotless. Perhaps pink was Rachel's favorite color. The bedsheet and curtains were in matching pink. Connor put the box on the floor, clapped his hands, and was ready to leave. Just then, he saw something that attracted his eyeballs. A pair of see-through lingerie hanging from the clothes rail on the balcony was swaying gently in the breeze. It was laced and looked sexy. Connor wondered why Rachel bought such a teasing sleeping attire. Could it be that Professor Wallace, who looked open on the outside, was actually sexually wild on the inside? He could not help but swallow hard and walk toward the balcony involuntarily. 
As he was at the balcony and stared at the see-through lingerie, he was instantly turned on and his face showed just that. Not that Connor wanted to do anything. Just that it was a curious reaction of men that came naturally, wanting to take a closer look. I didn't know that Professor Wallace was such a woman. Connor could not help muttering to himself, remembering the gossip about Rachel at the university. The gossip was denigrating to Rachel in a deliberate way. But, Connor still had a positive view of Rachel who might seem a little too autocratic on the outside but was at least kind to Connor. Connor could not even pay his tuition fee when he had to support Mandy last time. It was Rachel who secretly paid it for Connor. She had never told him about it, but Connor was grateful to her. Phew! Before turning to leave, Connor took another deep breath as he stared at the sexy see-through lingerie. Just then, the click-clacks of high heels came from outside. Click-clack, click-clack. When Connor heard the sound, he instinctively ducked into the corner of the balcony. Before he knew it, Rachel, who was wearing a hip-hugging skirt on her hot body, pushed the door open and walked in. Connor saw Rachel and was rooted to the spot, looking up at the lace lingerie in front of him. He knew that if he went out now, Rachel would surely suspect him of something. If his understanding of Rachel's character was anything to go by, he knew that he would be done for if she found out what he was doing. So, he took a deep breath, squatted down instinctively, and hid behind the balcony. The heat really kills me. As Rachel entered the house, she put her handbag on the table and stretched out. Hiding in the balcony, Connor was praying in his mind for Rachel to leave quickly. Thud. Thud. Just then, Rachel took off her high heels and flung them directly on the floor. She then walked barefooted to the refrigerator in the kitchen. Ah! -a, a moment later, Rachel's scream suddenly came from the kitchen. Connor heard it and could not help but arch his back and peep through the gap in the door to take a look at what happened. He found Rachel holding a can of Coke, and her clothes wet after the fizzy drink spurted out of the can and onto her body. Frowning at the sight of the scene, she went back to the living room and took off her coat, revealing a white cami top beneath and her sexy cleavage was plain to see. But now, the cami top was stained with obvious marks on the collar. Connor quietly gasped in wonderment as he saw Rachel in the living room. Is she going to take off her clothes right now? Right after Connor muttered that in his mind, Rachel started to unbutton the back of her cami top. Connor froze in place, silently holding his breath, while the excitement was filling his face. He never expected that Rachel was going to change right in the living room. Rooted to the spot, he did not know what to do. Should he come out now or keep hiding at the balcony? If he came out now, he would have a hard time explaining why he was hiding at the balcony. But, if he did not reveal himself and Rachel really took off her clothes, should he keep looking? Just as Connor was struggling internally, there was a ruffling noise coming from the living room. It was obvious that Rachel had already taken off her cami top. Connor felt his heart pounding and his eyes involuntarily looked into the living room. The white cami top started to slide gently from Rachel's shoulders, revealing her flawless skin. She had a charming face and a perfect body. And, her full bust was almost bursting out of her red bra. Connor could not help but gasp in awe. It was the first time he had ever seen a woman's body in person. Not to mention that Rachel was a goddess-level beauty. Connor's heart thumped so hard that it nearly burst out of his chest. For the half a year during which Connor and Mandy were together, Mandy had been looking down on him. So, the closest contact between the two was only limited to hand-holding. Connor had no chance to make further advances. He had never kissed Mandy, let alone watched her take off her clothes in front of him. After taking off her cami top, Rachel frowned when she saw stains on her bra. She ran barefoot into the bedroom, took a new set of underwear from the closet, and went back to the living room. Connor got even more thrilled when he saw that. Who would have thought that Rachel would change her underwear in the living room? Rachel sat down on the couch, her hand reaching to the back to unhook her bra. As her bra slid off, Connor could clearly feel his heart pounding. A second later, her bust was free from the shackles of the bra and came into full view. Connor was rooted to the spot. His body was stiffening, and his hot breath bursting out of his nostrils. After changing her bra, 
Rachel found a hip-length short skirt from the closet, stood in front of the mirror, and held it in front of her to make sure that it was okay before changing into it on the spot. Rachel seemed to like hip-length skirts like that very much. Usually, she wore it to class. Her exposed thighs and a pair of naked stockings became eye candy for the male students in the class. The hip-length short skirt complemented Rachel's hot figure very well. Especially her undisguised long legs. They were fascinating. After putting on her short skirt, she put on a t-shirt and her high heels before leaving. Connor breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that Rachel was finally leaving. But just as Rachel was about to leave the dorm room, she suddenly saw a large box in the living room. Rachel habitually turned and glanced at the balcony, then walked toward it in her high heels. SH asterisk T. Connor's heart skipped a beat when he saw Rachel coming toward him. But, there was nowhere else to hide on the balcony. Once Rachel came over, she would definitely see him. His heart thumped more violently than when he was peeping at Rachel just now. Click clack, click clack. Connor broke out in cold sweats as the footsteps were getting closer and closer. Connor hesitated for a second before he gritted his teeth and stepped out from the balcony. Professor Wallace. Connor? Rachel gasped in surprise when she saw Connor. You're finally back, Professor. Connor pretended to be calm. Why were you hiding on the balcony, and when did you come in? Rachel blushed when she recalled the scene of her changing her clothes in the living room. Didn't you ask me to help you move some stuff? When I came in, I one saw a cockroach on the balcony and wanted to kill it for you. But, it managed to escape. Connor looked embarrassed as he tried to explain himself. Rachel studied Connor suspiciously and asked, Connor, do you think one would believe this explanation? What I said is true, Professor Wallace, Connor tried to explain again. You know better than anyone else that you were hiding on the balcony and peeping at me just now, Rachel said with a frown as if she had seen through Connor's lie. I, I didn't see anything, Professor Wallace. Did you just change your clothes? Connor shook his head vigorously without hesitation. Rachel could not help but let out a charming smile when she saw Connor's expression. Connor, if you don't tell me the truth today, beware of how one will punish you. I really didn't see anything, Connor said, gritting his teeth. Are you sure you didn't see anything? Absolutely. Since Rachel had discovered him, he might as well deny it until kingdom come. He would not admit that he had peeped at her changing clothes, no matter what. Well then. A suspicious look flashed in Rachel's eyes as he said softly, I hope that this will not happen again in the future. Sure, sure. Connor quickly nodded. You may leave now. Rachel waved at Connor, looking a little helpless. She could do nothing about Connor since he denied it vehemently. Okay, goodbye, Professor Wallace. When Rachel was finally willing to let him go, Connor felt relieved and hurriedly left the room. By the way, Connor, Rachel suddenly called out to him as Connor was leaving. Connor instinctively stopped in his tracks and looked nervously at Rachel. May I help you, Professor? Rachel walked up to Connor in her high heels and looked up and down at Connor. With her height coupled with her high heels, she stood a little taller than Connor. He was now very close to Rachel's chest and could clearly smell the unique scent on Rachel's body. Do you think I look good, Connor? Rachel's fiery lips slightly parted, and the tone of her voice was highly ravishing. Connor froze in place, not knowing how to answer. Say something, do you think I look good? Rachel looked at Connor with a seductive expression. Connor could not help but take a deep breath, and then, he whispered, I really didn't see you changing your clothes just now, Professor. A sly look flashed in her eyes as Rachel curled her lips and said, I'm not talking about that. Even if you have seen it, one will not say anything about you. You didn't mean it, after all. But, one really didn't see it, Connor said, as Rachel was almost driving him crazy. Well, one heard that you have been delivering food part-time. My friend's new bar will be open in a few days. Why don't you work as a server at the bar? Rachel no longer teased Connor but asked with concern. Connor would have agreed at once and been very grateful to Rachel if she had said that in the past. But now, it was different. He had inherited a $10 trillion estate. 
Why would he still want to work as a server in a bar? I'm no longer working as a food delivery guy now, professor. Connor hesitated for a moment before he refused. You're not delivering food now? Then, how are you going to pay for your tuition fees? There was a fleeting puzzlement in Rachel's eyes when she heard his response. As a counselor, Rachel was well aware of Connor's family situation. If it had been done in the past, Connor would have agreed without even thinking about it. But this time, he refused it, to her surprise. Well, I found a more relaxing job now, and one can make some money regularly, Connor explained. Cool. Rachel looked at Connor and nodded. But, my friend's bar is about to open, and he needs workers badly. How about you go over and help him for a week? Professor, Connor hesitated. Connor, if you don't agree, I will have to hold you accountable for voyeurism, Rachel whispered to Connor. I really didn't peep at you just now, Professor, Connor denied it categorically. You know better than anyone else. Rachel rebutted and pouted. Connor hesitated for a moment. Then, he helplessly said, Okay, I will do that as a favor for you. You peeped at me changing clothes just now, didn't you? Rachel suddenly shouted as if she had changed into someone else. Connor had no words. Connor left Rachel's dorm room after a few minutes. But, the image of Rachel's seductive body still lingered in his mind. He had to admit that Rachel was really sexy. Her kind of sexiness was not something that female students like Mandy and May could compare to. Connor found that since he saw Rachel and May naked, the urge to find a girlfriend gradually grew inside him. When Connor was with Mandy last time, he did not get a chance as Mandy just used Connor as a tool. When Mandy found a new tool, she did not hesitate to dump Connor. Who should be my girlfriend? Connor scratched his chin thoughtfully. Had he not inherited the $10 trillion estate, he would never have thought of it that way. After all, he was a poor incel working as a food delivery guy, who no girls would be interested in. But, things were different now. He had inherited a $10 trillion estate and became the richest person in the world. He believed that as long as he was willing to spend money, no girl could refuse him. Eunice seems to be a good choice. Eunice's hourglass body came to mind. He started to think about how to get her. Buzz. Just then, his mobile phone rang. He pulled it out and glanced at it. Thomas was calling. Hello? Connor answered. Are you free tomorrow, Mr. McDonald? Thomas asked in a very respectful tone. Yeah, why? I have made an appointment with your fiancé to meet you at the New Century restaurant tomorrow at nine in the morning. What do you think? Thomas said slowly. My fiancé? It puzzled Connor to hear what Thomas said. Yes, Mr. McDonald. Have you forgotten? If you want to inherit the estate of the former chairman, there is a condition, you must marry Miss Freya. Otherwise, the inheritance will be donated to a charity foundation. Thomas explained slowly. Oh, now I remember. It all came back to his mind at once. At first, he was thinking of finding a girlfriend at the university. But now, it seemed that there was no need for that. How does Freya look? Connor asked Thomas curiously. Why don't you go over there tomorrow and see for yourself, Mr. McDonald? Thomas said with a smile. Never mind. It doesn't matter how she looks. I have to marry Freya anyway if I want to inherit the estate, right? Connor said with a helpless expression. That's right, Thomas said. So, if I don't marry Freya, I won't get a single penny, right? Connor asked with a frown. Absolutely. Alas, what the hell does my granduncle want? He could have just let me inherit his estate without laying down a condition like this. Why did he want to do this? Connor had not met Freya at all at this point. He thought that those chicks who came too easily must be the kind of chubby girls who no one wanted to marry. For that reason, Connor was very depressed now. One got it. I'll go tomorrow. Connor whispered back. By the way, Mr. McDonald, I have one more thing to tell you, Thomas said slowly. What's that? 
Connor asked as he was stunned. Now, Freya and her family still don't know your true identity, which means, in their eyes, you are still a food delivery guy. So, you must not reveal your identity to her. If you marry Freya, you will be the live-in son-in-law of the Phillips family, Thomas said. What? You are asking me to be a live-in son-in-law? Connor cried out when he heard what Thomas said. Exactly, Mr. MacDonald. From now on, you must not reveal your identity to Freya, and your only choice is to be the live-in son-in-law of the Phillips family, Thomas said slowly. No. I will not say no even if 1 a.m. to marry an ugly woman. But now, you're asking me to be a live-in son-in-law. Isn't that too much? He was emotional, as he was just a normal man who was resistant to being a live-in son-in-law. These are the two conditions that the former chairman has stipulated in his will. You might have not read it carefully when you signed it, Mr. MacDonald. Thomas sounded as if he could not do anything about it. I feel like one have been conned. If one had known that there were so many conditions attached, I wouldn't have signed it. Connor was depressed. So, are you thinking of giving up on the inheritance, Mr. MacDonald? Thomas asked after he was startled for a moment. Uh, why would I do that? Connor changed his mind instantly. He complained for a while just now. But, there was no way that he would give up the $10 trillion inheritance just because of this. He had just gotten out of poverty for a few days, and he certainly would not give up his current life. I didn't mean anything else, Mr. MacDonald. One was just asking, Thomas said lightly. So, when can one reveal my identity? Connor asked after thinking for a moment. As soon as you married Freya, Thomas said. Cool. Connor hung up the phone irritably as soon as he finished. At first, Connor was full of expectations for his future girlfriend after feasting his eyes on the naked bodies of May and Rachel. But Thomas's phone call shattered all of Connor's fantasies. That Freya must be an ugly monster that no one wants. Otherwise, they wouldn't get a live-in son-in-law. It's a freaking trap. Connor grumbled and turned off his phone as he walked toward the lecture hall. In Connor's understanding, only a loser would be willing to be a live-in son-in-law. He might be broke, but that did not mean that he did not have a backbone. He could endure every hardship just to live, but he could not accept that he was going to be a live-in son-in-law. Connor was thinking about meeting Freya and did not notice the oncoming beauty. They both collided hard with each other. The pretty woman, wearing a pair of three-inch high heels, tumbled backward at once. Aya, ah, she screamed instinctively as she reached to grab Connor's clothes, trying to save herself. But, Connor, too, had lost his balance and fell to the ground with the pretty girl in his arms. Let go of me. The pretty girl shouted when Connor fell onto her. But, it was too late. Connor's entire body was over her as they both tumbled to the ground. The pretty girl was stunned when she saw Connor's head sticking to her chest. You freaking pervert, get off me! The pretty girl yelled at Connor with an angry and embarrassed expression. When Connor heard her words, he was stunned for a moment and wanted to stand up. You! Hurry up and get away from me! The pretty girl could not breathe with Connor's weight on her, and she yelled with an exasperated expression. Connor quickly stood up. Meanwhile, the pretty girl also slowly stood up after seeing Connor detach himself from her. She then examined herself. Connor looked up and down at the pretty girl. She was dressed casually and was about five foot four. She had fair skin and slender legs. Her loose clothes could not hide her amazing figure. She had a makeup-free oval-shaped face that was smooth and delicate as if it was a ripe apple. I've been lucky with the ladies for the past few days. Connor could not help but sigh internally. Meanwhile, the pretty girl was also looking up and down at Connor. When she saw the canvas shoes Connor was wearing, a hint of contempt flashed across her eyes. Don't you have eyes? You freaking pervert. You wanted to take advantage of me, that's why you bumped into me, right? The pretty girl shouted at Connor exasperatedly. Ma'am, can't you be reasonable? Even if one didn't have eyes, you do, right? You were clearly the one clinging onto me just now, that's why one fell onto you. How did it become me taking advantage of you?
Connor asked the pretty girl unhappily when he heard what she said. I think you wanted to take advantage of me. I've seen plenty of losers like you. Why don't you take a look at yourself? How dare you take advantage of me? The pretty girl said with a look of disdain. Connor stared at the pretty girl in front of him and did not know what to say. Even though she had great looks, she was too unreasonable. What's the matter, Maya? At that moment, a few young people walked over from nearby. There were both girls and guys. Whether it was the girls or the guys, they were all dressed very stylishly and were stark contrasts to Connor. The pretty girl turned to glance at them when she heard the question, but she did not say a word. After all, she did not want her friends to know that she had just been taken advantage of by Connor. At that time, a young man with curly hair walked to the pretty girl's side. He sized Connor up and frowned while saying, So it's you, the poor loser. Connor recognized the young man with curly hair. He was called Hugh Duarte. He was also a junior at Port Hampton University, and he came from a well off family. Most importantly, he was really close with Brandon. He and Brandon often humiliated Connor in university together. Maya, what did this food delivery guy do to you just now? Hugh shouted while pointing at Connor with an outstretched hand. Food delivery guy? The pretty girl was stunned when she heard the curly haired guy's words. She then frowned and said, You know this guy? Of course I do. Who in Port Hampton University doesn't know Connor McDonald's nickname? The yellow robe lad, the delivery warrior, that's him. He's the infamous pauper in our college. One heard that his girlfriend cheated on him a few days ago. Connor said sarcastically, completely disregarding Connor's reputation. Meanwhile, the pretty girl's look of disdain grew even more intense after she heard what Hugh said. Maya, did he do anything to you just now? Tell me in one foot eleven inches get him to kneel down and apologize to you. Hugh shouted loudly. When Connor heard what Hugh said, he could not help but look up and down at him with a meaningful gaze. Maya, you don't have to worry about it being troublesome. You can tell me if he did something to you. Hugh continued shouting at the pretty girl arrogantly. However, the pretty girl hesitated for a moment and gently shook her head. She already felt embarrassed enough after being taken advantage of by Connor today. Now that she knew about Connor being a food delivery guy, she would be a laughing stock if other people found out. That was why she quickly shut up and did not say anything. He really didn't do anything? Hugh could not help but feel stunned for a moment when he heard the pretty girl's words. He then asked with a puzzled expression. No, let's go. The pretty girl glanced at Connor loathsomely before turning around and walking away. Just you wait, punk. I'll deal with you when I have the time. Hugh said to Connor before turning around and leaving with the pretty girl. When Connor saw that Hugh had left, he took out his phone and he wanted to call Thomas to get him to teach Hugh a lesson. But after he gave it some thought, he decided to let it go. Connor felt like he did not have to waste his time on people like Hugh anymore. Five minutes later, Connor returned to the classroom. It was coincidentally the interval before another period. Everyone in the class was sitting in groups and chatting. Meanwhile, Brandon and Mandy did not come to class, and their whereabouts were unknown. May and Lily were at their seats. When they saw Connor walk in, a strange glint flashed across their eyes. May, did you really sleep with Connor? Lily hesitated for a moment, but she ended up asking the question that she had in mind. May bit her lips when she heard Lily's words. She did not know how to explain what happened that day. If May said that she slept with Connor, then Lily would surely make fun of her. However, if she told Lily that Connor had taken her to a hotel and asked her to take off her clothes but left without even touching her, that would seem even more embarrassing. Why don't you think about how you're going to return the $50,000 to me? You don't have to worry about anything else. May hesitated for a moment and changed the topic. Maybe it was because Connor had treated everyone to a meal, as everyone was treating Connor differently. Some of them even voluntarily greeted Connor. That had never happened before. Other than Dominic, Spencer, and Eunice, the rest of Connor's classmates looked at him like they were looking at a beggar. They wanted to stay far away from him, 
and they thought that speaking to Connor would make them lose their reputation. Connor sat back in his seat. He realized that Dominic, Spencer, and the others were chatting with his classmates. Hey, did you guys see it yesterday? There seems to be a new crazy rich guy on Twitch. A chubby-looking guy shouted excitedly. I was busy playing League of Legends yesterday, so one didn't have the time to watch live streams. However, I did see an announcement about this crazy rich guy called something like CM tipping over $1 million on Twitch. They're crazy rich, Spencer responded while laughing. I heard that this CM seems to be competing with Knowles of Port Hampton, that's why he tipped over $1 million at once. Dominic whispered. Ho ho. That Knowles of Port Hampton tipped rabbit giant hundreds of thousands and provoked CM with words. However, he did not expect the crazy rich guy to tip over a hundred thousand at once. Knowles of Port Hampton was so frightened that he did not dare to say a word. This CM person is so generous. When will I meet someone this crazily rich? A girl from their class who had charming looks and a hot body also seemed to be doing live streams on Twitch. Unfortunately, she did not have any popularity at all, let alone getting tipped by crazily rich people. Oh Betty, I think you should try wearing a nurse's uniform during your livestream. You might get a lot of viewers. Spencer grinned and said. Get lost. The girl cursed a little loathsomely. After Connor heard what they were talking about, only then did he realize that they were talking about him tipping Mina on her channel. These people probably would never know that the crazy rich guy that they looked up to was actually sitting right next to them. A few minutes later, the school bell rang. All of the students went back to their seats. Their two classes in the afternoon were finance, but Connor was not interested in finance. Moreover, Connor felt like all he had to know was how much money he had left in his bank account, so it was not necessary for him to learn any of this at all. Hence, he lied on the desk and slept. Spencer and Dominic were a little shocked to see Connor sleeping. After all, Connor had always been a hard-working and studious person in their eyes. However, he was actually sleeping in class right now. Connor had been so hard-working in the past purely because he wanted to get a scholarship. However, the harsh reality was that the college's scholarships were all internally reserved for students that came from influential backgrounds. Connor would never get one no matter how hard he tried. However, Connor did not care about the meager amount of money, so he did not pay attention to every class. Two class periods ended within a blink of an eye. The students left the classroom and prepared to head to the college's cafeteria to eat. Connor, my dad transferred me my living expenses today. Why don't I treat you to a meal? Dominic knew that Connor had spent all his money to treat everyone to the meal yesterday, so he kindly offered to treat Connor to a meal. There's no need to. I'll make myself a meal when I get home later. Connor hesitated for a moment and rejected him with a soft tone. You're not going to eat? A hint of confusion flashed across Dominic's eyes when he heard Connor's words. If this were before, Connor would immediately have agreed to his offer. However, Connor was now actually voluntarily refusing it. MHM. I'm not feeling that hungry yet, Connor rejected. Dominic stared at Connor and hesitated for a moment. He then said softly. All right, then. I'll treat you when there's a chance next time. Ha ha ha. Certainly. One foot eleven inches treat you to a meal when there's a chance. Connor reached out and patted Dominic's shoulder before turning around and heading out of the classroom. Both Dominic and Spencer watched Connor's retreating figure with puzzled expressions. Spencer, did you notice how the Connor now is a little different from before? Dominic said lowly. MHM, a little. Spencer nodded lightly. Logically speaking, he should have spent most of his prize money after treating everyone to that meal, right? Dominic asked with a frown. That's right. I don't even know what Connor was thinking. Spencer said in a confused tone. Whatever. Maybe Mandy ticked him off. He'll be fine after a while. Let's go eat. Dominic said lowly before heading out of the classroom. After Connor left the college, he went back to his rented unit. He ate a bowl of instant noodles before lying down on his bed and watching Mina's livestream. 
The audience went crazy the moment the name CM appeared in the livestream. They greeted Connor in the comments. Connor ignored the commenters and quietly watched Mina's livestream. He had to admit that not only Mina was pretty, but she was also great at singing. His phone screen showed Mina with beautiful black hair draped across her shoulders. She was wearing a tight black t-shirt that perfectly outlined her chest, a mini skirt, and a pair of black stockings that tightly wrapped her slender legs. She looked extremely sexy and charming. However, Connor still thought that Mina looked more charming and attractive in real life. What she looked like on screen was nowhere as beautiful as she was in real life. You stupid b asterisk tch, just you wait. You better not let me find out where you live. I'll make you pay for this. At that moment, a comment by Knowles of Porthampton appeared on Mina's livestream. Mina frowned when she saw Knowles of Porthampton's comment. However, she did not say a word and continued singing. On the other hand, some of the fans in the livestream scolded Knowles of Porthampton. However, Knowles of Porthampton had exited the livestream channel after he left the comment. Connor watched the livestream for a while and sent some donations before shutting off his phone as he was preparing to go to sleep. Connor, are you asleep? Nina's voice suddenly sounded. No, what's the matter? Connor quickly responded before getting dressed and opening the door of his room. Have you had dinner yet? I just ordered some grilled wings. Would you like to have some with me? Mina asked Connor with a smile. Mina had changed into a black lacy nightgown that revealed her bare thighs. She looked incredibly sexy. Connor could not help himself but hesitate for a moment when he heard her words. He then said softly, Sure, but my room is pretty small. Why don't we eat in your room? Mina could not help but check out Connor's room when she heard what he said. She then frowned and said, This is my first time coming into your room. Your room is so tiny. Yeah. I don't have much money and this room was cheap. That's why one rented it. Connor responded with an awkward expression. Oh. Mina nodded lightly and did not say anything. She turned around and walked toward her room. Connor then followed Mina to her room. The two of them sat around her dining table and chatted while they ate. Did you watch my live stream today? Mina asked Connor softly. I did. Connor nodded and pretended to ask in an ignorant tone, I saw this Knowles of Porthampton guy scolding you in the comments. Why did he scold you? Mina was stunned for a moment when he heard what Connor asked. She then pouted and said, that guy is a bastard. Why is he a bastard? Connor asked nonchalantly. Didn't Knowles of Porthampton send me donations on my live stream yesterday? He then got my number through the platform staff and asked me out for a meal. He even invited me to join his streamer guild. Mina regarded Connor as someone she could confide in, so she did not exactly hold anything back when she spoke. His streamer guild? Connor was stunned for a bit when he heard what she said. A hint of confusion flashed across his eyes. Yeah, his streamer guild. Many female streamers on Twitch are in his guild. When he's free, he'll help them get onto the charts and recommend it or whatever. Mina said slowly. That's a good thing, right? Connor asked puzzledly. A good thing? Mina could not help but pout. She then frowned and said, it is a good thing. But, you don't understand how things work in the live streaming industry. If one join his streamer guild, I'll have to split the donations that I've earned with him by 50-50. Moreover, he and I will have to. Have to. Mina paused for a moment when she said that. Her face then turned beet red. He and you will have to what? Connor was dumbfounded for a moment and asked. Well, you know, that. Mina frowned and said resignedly. Ho ho. There's something like that? You have to split half of your money with him and sleep with him. How could he think of something like this? Connor regained his composure and said. Yeah, so one immediately refused his offer. He then said that he'll find out where. I stay and threaten me, Mina said slowly. Oh, I didn't know that. Connor looked at Mina and nodded with a smile. 
If he really dares to come to you, come tell me and I will help you. You will help me? Mina was stunned and let out a helpless smile when she heard what Connor said. In Mina's eyes, Connor had problems feeding even himself. Where would he get the ability to help her? Yes, one will help you, Connor said firmly. It's okay. It's no big deal. One don't think that Knowles of Port Hampton knows where I live. 1 a.m. going to be just fine. Mina let Connor save face by tactfully declining. Well, then. If there's anything you need, just call me, Connor said calmly. I will. Mina did not say anything further since Connor was so enthusiastic. She just nodded silently, and then, she continued to enjoy her grilled wings. After a while, Mina suddenly looked up at Connor. Why don't you move in with me, Connor? Poof. Connor was drinking coke when Mina said that. Things squirted out of his mouth in an instant. He then looked at Mina with an unusually shocked expression. You, you and me living together? Connor was wide-eyed, and his voice was trembling a little. Living together? Mina blushed when she heard that. Then, she said with a little shamefulness and anger in her voice, What are you thinking, Connor? I mean your room looks so shabby, and there happens to be an empty room at my place. So, I am thinking of letting you move into that empty room and save you some money. Oh well, okay. Connor felt a little disappointed after hearing Mina's reply. Besides, I spend most of my time live streaming and sleeping. I don't have time to clean up the house. If you move in, you can just help me clean up the house instead of paying me rent. How's that? Mina looked at Connor and asked softly. Mina was not interested in money. She said so because she was worried that Connor would feel embarrassed to move in. Connor looked at the smitten Mina and felt touched. But, he had a fiancé now. Would it be right to share a house with a girl? Besides, he did not want anyone to know that he had inherited a $10 trillion inheritance. Things might become known eventually if he stayed with Mina. I appreciate your kindness, Mina. But, one don't think it's good and proper for us to stay together. Connor thought for a moment and then refused. Why? Are you afraid that one would take advantage of you? Mina said to Connor dismissively. Not at all. Instead, I am worried about you. I might lose control of myself and take advantage of you. After all, you are such a hot girl. Besides, you are a streamer now. Your fans will kill me if they find out that you are living with a man, Connor said with a smile. Mina said nothing else since Connor was not interested in moving in. Half an hour later, Connor returned to his room. Connor might have declined Mina's offer to stay with her, but deep down inside, he regretted it. It's all Freya's fault. If it weren't for her, I would have a pretty girl in my arms now. He complained, feeling not too happy. After all, Connor was so rich now. If he could live with Mina, he believed that he would get her eventually. But, he did not dare to think about other girls because he had a fiancé now. But what Mina said also became a reminder for Connor. Now that he was so rich, he did not have to keep staying in that dilapidated rental place. Instead, he could buy a sports car and a mansion in Port Hampton. Connor fell asleep as he planned what he would buy next. At 9 a.m. the next day, Connor's ringing phone jolted him out of his sleep. He grabbed the phone and glanced at the screen. It was Thomas calling. So, he quickly answered. Are you going to the New Century restaurant now, Mr. McDonald? Thomas asked. Oh, sh asterisk t. I totally forgot about it. I will go right away. Last night, Connor was fantasizing about how to spend the money in his hands. The more he thought about it, the more excited he was. That was why he forgot about meeting his fiance today. After hanging up the phone, he rushed out of the house without even brushing his teeth. Thomas had told him that his fiance did not know his identity, so Thomas did not send someone to pick him up. Consequently, Connor had to take a cab to the New Century restaurant. He had never been to New Century restaurant, but he knew that it was one of the few three Michelin-starred restaurants in Port Hampton and it was very expensive. 
Usually, only the rich in Port Hampton would dine in such expensive restaurants. On the other side, inside the private dining room of New Century Restaurant, two girls were chatting and playing with their mobile phones as if they were waiting for someone. One of the girls looked like she was in her early 20s, pretty and wearing a white dress like she was still in college. And the other girl, who was slightly older than the other, was pretty, too. She had perfect facial features and flawless skin even without makeup. Every inch of her skin seemingly showed the creator's biasness. She was about 25, tall and plump, wearing a black business suit that set off her near-perfect body to the fullest. I didn't know that you have a fiancé. The girl asked, blinking her big lustrous eyes in puzzlement. One knew about it just a few days ago. It's not much earlier than you did. The beautiful woman in a business suit said helplessly. Ah, I pity you for getting a fiancé out of nowhere. If I were you, I would have cried to my death in my room. But since I am here today, I would like to see if that person deserves you. If he is not, I will certainly oppose it, the girl muttered softly. What is the point of opposing it? It's pre-arranged by the family. One can do nothing about it, the girl in a business suit whispered. It's all right. If you don't like the man, I will tell my uncle-in-law. How can my cousin marry someone randomly, the girl said with her arms akimbo. The girl in a business suit could not help but let out a sweet smile, don't just talk about me. What about you? One saw that you weren't happy yesterday. What's going on? My blood boils just from mentioning it. The girl pouted. What's wrong? The girl in a business suit said with a faint smile. When I went to Port Hampton University to visit my friends, someone ran into me and fell on top of my, my, the girl blushed, not knowing how to continue. Lying on top of you, the girl in a business suit asked with a smile. No, it was way more terrifying than that. He bumped into my bust head on not once but twice. I think he did that deliberately. The girl continued. And then, I heard my friend say that the guy was a poor food delivery guy. I was so fit to be tied but I couldn't tell my friend that I was taken advantage of by a person like him. So, I let him go. Thinking about it will make my blood boil. No wonder. The girl in a business suit nodded with a smile. Now that I have told you about it, don't tell anyone else. One feels so ashamed of it. The girl quickly said. Don't worry. One won't tell anyone else, the girl in a business suit said with a saint smile. 10 a.m. Connor arrived at New Century Restaurant at last. It was not lunchtime yet, but the entrance of New Century Restaurant was already fully parked by luxury cars. Those coming here were mostly fashionably dressed young people. Connor was wearing new clothes today, but he still looked a bit out of place compared to those people frequenting the restaurant. Connor went straight in as he came in front of the entrance. The security guard at the entrance was stunned for a second when he saw how Connor was dressed. He held up his hand to stop Connor with a frown. Are you here to apply for a job? You should go in through the back door. I'm not here to apply for a job. I'm here for lunch. Connor glanced up at the security guard and replied expressionlessly. You are here for lunch? The security guard looked doubtful and said nothing when he heard what Connor said. He just let Connor in. Most of the people who came to New Century Restaurant were rich kids, and there was no shortage of ordinary people, who were mostly friends of the rich kids. So, the security guard did not give it a second thought. Connor was shocked to see the decoration inside the New Century Restaurant as he stepped in. The lobby was paved with milky white Italian marble and the brilliant light of the crystal lighting reflecting off the pale gold wallpaper on the wall looked splendid. There was also a bronze chandelier hanging from the ceiling. It looked luxurious and elegant. All doorpost frames and interior utensils were handmade. Connor felt that he had walked into a scene in the movie with all the wallpaper, chandeliers, high ceilings, and luxurious tableware. It felt so royal. If Thomas had not made a reservation at this restaurant, Connor would have never come to a place like this in his life. This was the world of the rich, a paradise that the poor could never step into in their lifetime. In the eyes of ordinary people, a place like Brasserie Le Bernardin was unattainable enough. 
but Brasserie Le Bernardine looked like a little brother compared to the new Century restaurant. Connor pulled out his phone and wanted to call Thomas to ask where his reserved dining room was. But as soon as he took out his phone, he felt his stomach ache. So, he turned around and went into the toilet. Even the toilet was spotless, beautiful, and cozy. Meanwhile, in the private dining room, the girl took out her mobile phone and glanced at the screen. It was ten. She could not help furrowing her brows. What kind of person is your fiancé? Aren't we supposed to meet at nine? It is already ten, and he hasn't yet arrived. The girl in a business suit frowned but said nothing. Being late on the first date really disgusted her. You absolutely must not marry someone who comes late for a date like this. Countless rich kids in Port Hampton are lining up to invite you to a meal, yet they never get a chance. But this guy has yet to show up. The girl complained indignantly. Maybe something caused the delay, the girl in a business suit whispered back. What could be more important than dating you? The girl said, and her eyes widened as she stood up. I'm going to the ladies' room. When the jerk arrives, I will teach him a lesson. Okay, the girl in a business suit replied faintly. The pretty girl swung her hips as she walked out of the private dining room in her high heels. Just as she came in front of the ladies' room and was about to enter, she saw a familiar guy standing in front of the sink outside. The pretty girl was stunned for a moment, then she stopped and carefully looked at him, who was washing hands in front of the sink. This guy looks so familiar, the pretty girl mumbled to herself. Just then, Connor had finished washing his hand. He turned around as he shook the water off his hands. He did not expect that someone was standing behind him, and the water was sprinkled directly on the girl's face. Aya, the girl instinctively screamed while taking two steps back and glared at Connor. Are you sick or something? Can't you see, she froze in place before she could finish her sentence. What a coincidence. Connor looked at the pretty girl in front of him and smiled awkwardly. The pretty girl standing in front of Connor was none other than the girl who he had run into at Port Hampton University yesterday. It is you, Satter. The pretty girl shouted with anger and embarrassment. How did I become a Satter? Connor looked helpless when he heard what the girl said. What are you if you are not a Satter? The pretty girl sneered with her hands folded. The pretty girl had been thinking about how to get her revenge on Connor after leaving Port Hampton University yesterday. Her body had never been touched by any man, let alone her breasts. After learning that Connor was a poor food delivery guy, she felt even more disgusted with him. Just that there were friends around her at Port Hampton University at the time, and she was afraid to tell them that Connor had molested her. But, it was different now as no one here knew her. So, she calculated in her mind how to retaliate against Connor. I don't have time for you now. You may say whatever you like, but 1 a.m. not a satyr. He turned around and was about to leave. It was almost 10 a.m. now, and he was in a hurry to meet his fiancée. Connor had tacitly acknowledged that his fiancée was ugly, but he still held on to some hope and fantasy. Stop. The pretty girl saw that Connor was leaving and quickly stopped him. What do you want? Connor turned his head and looked at the pretty girl helplessly. You just threw water in my face, and you're going to leave just like that? A fleeting sense of cunningness flashed in her eyes. What do you want, then? Connor asked with a frown. What do I want? The pretty girl could not help but laugh, stepping forward and looking at Connor carefully, kneel and apologize to me. Otherwise, I will tell the restaurant manager that you tried to rape me and he will fire you. You're going to ask the restaurant manager to fire me? Connor looked at the girl in front of him and did not know what to say. The pretty girl had heard Hugh talk about Connor at Port Hampton University before. She knew very well that Connor was nothing more than a poor in cell. How could he afford to dine in the New Century restaurant when he was just a food delivery guy? The only explanation for him being here was that he was working part-time there. That was why she threatened Connor in retaliation for touching her breasts. You had better get down on your knees and apologize quickly. Maybe I will let you go if you can please me. Or else, I will call the manager and he will fire you. The pretty girl said smugly with her arms akimbo. 
If you want the manager to fire me, then please do it quick. I'm not working here anyway, Connor said faintly. Heck, the pretty girl sneered. Stop pretending in front of me. If you're not an employee, are you a customer here? Do you think one don't know about you? Hugh told me at Port Hampton University yesterday, you are just a poor food delivery guy. Not feeling in the mood to talk to her, Connor turned around and wanted to leave. Did I say you can go? The pretty girl grabbed Connor and continued. It's not easy for you to get a job here, right? At the very least, you can earn more over here than delivering food. And, the job looks more decent. Do you really want to lose this job? Please take your hands off me. I am not an employee here, and one have already apologized to you yesterday. Why are you still harping on it? Connor said impatiently. The girl had an almost perfect-looking face and body. The only thing was that her personality was unflattering. So, Connor did not like her at all. You still want to pretend, huh? I will see how long you can pretend. The pretty girl pulled out her mobile phone and made a call as she spoke. Hey, is this Mr. Sullivan? The girl asked with a frown. This is Sullivan speaking. How may first help you, Ms. Phillips? An employee of your restaurant tried to rape me. Hurry come over here and fire this person. Or else, one will call the police. The girl shouted cynically. Don't be angry, Ms. Phillips. I will go over there now. If news of an employee attempting to rape a female customer leaked out, it would send a fatal blow to the image of the new Century restaurant. So, the manager sounded nervous. It's in front of the ladies' room. Come over here, the pretty girl said and then hung up. Mr. Sullivan will be here soon. I will see what you can do. She clutched Connor's clothes and said smugly. I told you I am not an employee here. It's useless for you to call the manager over, Connor said helplessly. Humph. I see you are afraid now. She snickered and continued. If you kneel and apologize to me now, one will let you go. Otherwise, just wait to be fired. Connor looked at the girl in front of her, and he hesitated for a moment before saying in a low voice, Okay, then wait for the manager. You, the pretty girl did not expect that Connor was still so defiant at this point. She hesitated and said nothing. She waited for the restaurant manager to come over and fix Connor. After a while, Mr. Sullivan arrived with seven or eight security guards and came toward where Connor and the pretty girl were. The large group of people instantly attracted everyone's attention. Are you all right, Ms. Phillips? Mr. Sullivan trotted up to the pretty girl and asked nervously. This employee of your restaurant just deliberately threw water in my face. I demand that you fire him immediately. Seeing that the customers in the restaurant were looking at her, she was too embarrassed to say that Connor had tried to rape her. So, she came up with another excuse. Mr. Sullivan quickly turned to look at Connor in puzzlement. What are you waiting for, Mr. Sullivan? Fire this guy for me, right away. The girl got upset when she saw that Sullivan stood on the spot and said nothing. Miss Phillips, you, you must have made a mistake here. He is not our employee. Sullivan looked at the girl helplessly. He is not an employee in your restaurant? The pretty girl was startled for a moment, looking surprised. I told you earlier that I am here for lunch, and you still didn't believe me, Connor said. The girl blushed, gritting her teeth indignantly. Mr. Sullivan, even if he is not an employee here, can't you kick him out? Aren't you putting me on the spot, Ms. Phillips? You are both guests in our restaurant. How can I ask our guests to leave? Mr. Sullivan was in a pickle. You, the pretty girl could not find a word to respond. Her face looked angry. What's going on, Maya? Just then, a sweet graceful voice came from among the crowd. Everyone, including Connor, turned their heads instinctively and looked in the voice's direction. When Connor saw the woman, he was rooted to the spot, looking shocked. There were many beautiful girls at Port Hampton University, but Connor felt that no one got as close as this woman in front of him. Even Mandy and May were no match for this woman's beauty. She was wearing a black business suit and tight stockings on her long legs. 
she was tall, plump, and attractive. Connor's eyeballs almost popped out of their sockets with a fiery fire burning inside. In his imagination, a cold and beautiful woman like her would only exist in a TV series. Seeing one in real life felt so unreal. Connor wondered how such amazing beauty could exist in the real world. After waiting for a long time in the private dining room and the pretty girl had not returned, the girl in a business suit was worried and came out looking for her. She never expected to see the pretty girl having a conflict with a guy as soon as she came out. What happened, Maya? The girl in a business suit asked with a frown and could not help but turn her head to look at Connor. This jerk bullied me just now. The pretty girl came up to the girl in a business suit and said in a crying voice. How did he bully you, the girl in a business suit asked. He threw water in my face, the pretty girl said, looking pitiful. The girl in a business suit turned her head and looked at Connor, then at the girl again. I think he probably didn't mean it, Maya. Just let the matter rest. Connor was impressed when he heard that, feeling that this woman was much more sensible than the nasty pretty girl. There is something that you may not know. He did it deliberately, the pretty girl said. How do you know he did it deliberately? The girl in a business suit knew her cousin's attitude well. Her charming smile instantly captivated everyone, including Connor, at the scene. The pretty girl hesitated, and then, she walked over to the girl in a business suit and whispered something in her ear. There was a strange look that flashed in the eyes of the girl in a business suit, but she said nothing. Mr. Sullivan, you just said that this person is a guest at your restaurant and you can't ask him to leave. So, what if he is not a guest at your restaurant? Do you have the authority to kick him out, then? Seeing that the girl in a business suit did not stop her, the pretty girl shouted at Mr. Sullivan. Not a guest at our restaurant? Sullivan was stunned, looking confused when he heard that. After all, why would he be here at the New Century restaurant if not for lunch? The restaurant manager was puzzled. What do you mean by that, Ms. Phillips? I know this person. He is a poor in cell working as a food delivery guy. Do you think someone like him could afford to dine in this restaurant? The pretty girl said insistently. Sullivan could not help but turn to look at Connor in puzzlement. Look at him. He is a pauper. How could he afford to dine at the New Century restaurant? I think this young man is looking for someone here, or he has another purpose, one guess? Even if he is here to look for someone, you can't just let him in like this. It will disturb everyone dining here. The restaurant patrons started to discuss among themselves when they saw Connor's appearance. The pretty girl was even more emboldened when she heard the discussions. Mr. Sullivan, one suspect that this person is likely to steal things here. You should quickly kick him out of here. The expressions of those restaurant patrons changed. They quickly checked whether they had lost anything. Sullivan's expression looked grave. If Connor was really like what the pretty girl said, which was coming here to steal things, he would not escape the crime if his superior were to hold him accountable. How would you know that 1am not here for lunch? And, on what basis do you think 1am a thief? Connor took a step forward and said to the pretty girl with a bitter expression. Humph! How can a food delivery guy afford to dine in this place? The pretty girl sneered dismissively. It is up to me if I can afford to dine here. What right do you have to stop me from dining here, and do you have any proof to show that I am a thief? Connor said in an unusually calm tone to the pretty girl. A sense of panic flashed in the pretty girl's eyes when she saw the confidence in Connor's eyes. She knew very well that the accusation was just her conjecture with no substantial evidence. Now that Connor suddenly demanded her to produce the evidence, she, of course, could not come up with any. Let it go, Maya. The girl in a business suit stopped the pretty girl as she did not want to create more trouble. Number one I'm dead sure that this pauper couldn't afford to dine here. Still not giving up, the pretty girl pointed at Connor aggressively. Miss Phillips, if you can produce the evidence that this person is not here for dining, one can ask the security guards to kick him out right away. Sullivan stepped forward and said respectfully. The pretty girl frowned, looking helpless as she had no evidence at all. Since you want proof, I can prove it. The voice of a man came from among the crowd just then. 
Connor turned to look behind him, and only to see Brandon and Mandy walking out from the crowd. Who are you? Sullivan asked in puzzlement as he did not know Brandon. It doesn't matter who I am. What matters is who he is, Brandon said as he brought Mandy toward Connor. Who is he? Sullivan asked curiously. His name is Connor MacDonald, a student of Port Hampton University, who is also my classmate. So, one know him well. He works part-time as a food delivery guy to support himself. How can he afford to dine in the New Century restaurant? Brandon said in a very contemptuous tone. People started to discuss among themselves again upon hearing Brandon's words. They would still have some doubts if only the pretty girl said that Connor did not have the money to come to this place. But now the two people were saying the same thing, that gave more credibility to the pretty girl's words. In fact, Brandon and Mandy could not afford to dine in the New Century restaurant. It just so happened that a friend of Brandon's was holding a birthday party there and that was why they were there. But, they never expected to run into Connor. Connor had humiliated Brandon at Brasserie Lou Bernardine last time. Since then, Brandon had been looking for an opportunity to get his revenge. Now, the opportunity that Brandon had been waiting for had arrived. Even Brandon himself did not dare to dine in the New Century restaurant, let alone Connor. He still remembered that Connor had spent a full $70,000 at Brasserie Lou Bernardine last time. How could Connor still have the money to spend there? Mr. Sullivan, if you don't believe me, I can ask my girlfriend to come out and testify. She is Connor's ex. I think her words carry more weight, Brandon said when Sullivan gave no response. That's right. I was this and Sel's girlfriend. Mandy stepped out cooperatively after hearing what Brandon said. Everyone looked surprised. Who would have thought that even Connor's ex-girlfriend would testify against and denigrate him? The pretty girl looked even more triumphant after Mandy stepped out. The most important reason I broke up with him was that he was broke, really broke. He couldn't even feed himself. Can you all see the fabric shoes on his feet? He picked them up on the street while he was delivering food one day. While he delivered food for others, he couldn't even afford a meal. And oftentimes, he had to eat the food of others, which had been cancelled. Do you think such a destitute in cell could afford to dine in the New Century restaurant? Mandy verbally attacked Connor ruthlessly. Her words were harsh. If the words of Brandon and the pretty girl had no credibility, surely the words of Connor's ex-girlfriend would. Everyone looked at Connor with contempt. Meanwhile, Connor looked at Mandy calmly with a helpless expression on his face. He really could not understand it. Did Mandy not know why he was so broke while they were together? He worked his butts off delivering food day in and day out just to make money to satisfy Mandy's endless materialistic desire. Even if he had to starve for three days, he would still buy Mandy her favorite handbags and lipsticks. If it was not for Mandy, he would not have become what he was today. He accepted the fact that Mandy left him because he had no money. After all, money was often the thing that made or broke a relationship. But, he just could not get why Mandy still wanted to take a shot at him even after they broke up. Mr. Sullivan, doesn't the New Century restaurant have a membership plan? You just have to ask him for his membership card and you will know if he is a guest in this restaurant, Brandon said. Right. Sullivan suddenly realized that upon hearing what Brandon said, Lai took a step forward and said to Connor, Sir, please show your membership card. Connor looked at the restaurant manager and shook his head. I don't have a membership card. Everyone was in an uproar upon hearing that. Connor's reply was tantamount to acknowledging tacitly that he was not here for dining. If he was not here for dining, then what he was doing there was really obvious. Mandy was triumphant, looking disdainfully at Connor. Deep down inside, she was laughing at him. Oh, Connor, did you really think that by winning the lottery, you can change the fact that you are an incel? New Century Restaurant is not a place where a person like you can enter. Brandon was even giddier, looking at Connor with a smirk. This was what he wanted, smashing down Connor with just a few words. An incel would always be an incel. There was no way that he could leap from an incel to becoming a rich kid. Of course, the pretty girl was the most jubilant of all. 
She had nearly given up when the restaurant manager asked her for proof just now. It was the guy and woman who came out of nowhere and saved the day. She finally had a chance to take her revenge on Connor for taking advantage of her earlier. While Connor was surrounded, the girl in a business suit was the only person who looked at him with a hint of sympathy in her eyes. She felt that her cousin, Mandy, and Brandon had gone too far. Even if Connor was not here for dining, they should not have humiliated him like this. It was akin to violating his dignity as a man. Kid, what are you doing here if you are not here to dine? Sullivan asked in an icy voice. Can't I come to your restaurant without a membership card? Connor asked expressionlessly. Of course not. Everyone in Port Hampton knows that the New Century Restaurant is a member-only dining place. Non-members may not dine here. Sullivan yelled. I am invited here, Connor said faintly. You are invited? Sullivan was startled for a second. Yeah. Connor nodded. Who would invite a pauper like you to dine here? Connor, when will you stop lying? Can't you stop pretending? Mandy snickered. What are you all still waiting for? I now suspect that this kid is stealing in our restaurant. Apprehend him now. Sullivan roared angrily as he turned and shouted at the security guards behind him. Wait a minute. The pretty girl suddenly called out when she saw that these security guards were about to grab Connor. As Sullivan turned to look at her in confusion, the pretty girl walked up to Connor in her high heels. Connor, I told you that as long as you kneel and apologize to me, I will help you intercede and ask Mr. Sullivan to let you go. Why should I apologize to you? Connor shot a cold glance at the pretty girl and asked dismissively. Then, whatever happens, you asked for it. The pretty girl hissed. A hint of displeasure flashed in her eyes. The seven or eight security guards rushed up to Connor as the pretty girl left. A sinister smile broke out on the faces of Mandy and Brandon when they saw that. The girl in a business suit frowned, wanting to speak up for Connor. But, she was helpless as her cousin had a tough personality. So, she hesitated and did not say a word. She planned to call the restaurant manager and ask him to cut Connor some slack only after they took Connor away. Buzz. Just as everyone was gloating over Connor, his cell phone rang. Connor took out his phone and glanced at it. It was Thomas calling. He picked it up and said, Hello? Everyone was speechless when they saw Connor was answering the phone. Really? Should he not quickly explain himself instead of taking his time to answer the D asterisk MN phone? They just did not get what was in Connor's mind right now. Have you arrived at the New Century restaurant, Mr. McDonald? Thomas asked. Yeah, I'm here, but the restaurant manager wants to kick me out. I tried to explain to him, but he wouldn't listen, Connor said in a helpless tone. He wants to kick you out? I'm sorry, Mr. McDonald. I probably didn't make it clear enough for him. Please pass the phone to the manager, and one will talk to him. Thomas sounded somewhat angry. Okay. Connor nodded gently and then handed the phone to Sullivan. Someone wants to talk to you. Who is that? Sullivan took the phone from Connor with a confused look. Hello, may first know who 1am speaking to? Tell me, Andrew, what the hell are you doing? Thomas shouted in an extremely angry voice. Am, Mr. Morgan? Andrew Sullivan, the restaurant manager, trembled with fright when he heard Thomas's voice. Go to a quiet corner and talk to me, now. Thomas bellowed. Okay, okay. Andrew quickly walked away. Thomas knew that Connor could not reveal his identity now, so he instructed. Andrew to walk away. There was a trace of confusion in everyone's eyes as Andrew walked away. But, they did not give it a second thought, as they thought that a pauper like Connor could do nothing, even if he had someone to his rescue. Mandy and Brandon still stared with contempt at Connor, as if they were waiting for Andrew to fix Connor. Maya, forget about this matter today, will you? You have achieved your purpose. Anyone can make mistakes. Forgive him if it's possible. The girl in a business suit hesitated before whispering to the pretty girl. No, I have to fix him today. 
You don't know how much I hate him. He deliberately took advantage of me yesterday. The pretty girl pouted, muttering angrily. The girl in a business suit could only sigh helplessly and did not want to intervene. Brandon focused his attention on the two beautiful women who could be regarded as the best of the best, and they were in a different league altogether compared to someone like Mandy. He did not really love Mandy. Instead, he was just playing her. Hesitating for a moment, he then walked over to the pretty girl with a flattering look. As Brandon went to chat with another girl in front of her, Mandy was resentful. But, she did not dare to say anything. She just stood awkwardly on the spot. Connor saw that and could not help but smirk. What are you laughing at? Mandy looked not too happy when she knew what Connor was gloating about. Connor looked at Mandy, shaking his head but said nothing. Hey, beautiful, what is your name? Brandon smiled and asked the pretty girl. Who are you? Get away from me. The pretty girl brushed Brandon off by replying in a disgusted tone. Brandon might have helped her once, but she felt that the guy was a scum because he tried to chat her up in front of his girlfriend. That really offended her. Smiling awkwardly, Brandon turned around and returned to Mandy's side. Just then, Andrew ran back nervously with Connor's phone in his hand. He was sweating profusely as if he had just come out of a sauna. Everyone had a puzzled look on their faces when they saw Andrew's expression. They did not get it. Was Andrew not just taking a call? How did he suddenly become so panicked? But, they may not know that the new Century restaurant was actually owned by the Empire World Corporation, the chairman of which was Connor. Andrew had no idea that he had unknowingly offended the chairman of the restaurant. He knew he had screwed up so much that he was even thinking of killing himself, right now. I am really sorry, Mr. McDonald. I have just learned that you are indeed a VIP of our restaurant. One apologize to you for what one have done, Andrew said respectfully as he walked up to Connor. Everyone was rooted to the spot, looking shocked, when Andrew suddenly groveled in front of Connor. Who would have thought that Andrew would look like a different person after taking the phone call? Thomas had just specifically instructed Andrew that he must not reveal Connor's identity. That was why Andrew talked to Connor like that. Or else, he would have gotten down on his knees and kowtowed to Connor. He was a just insignificant restaurant manager, yet he had followed the outsiders to attack and kick the chairman out of his own restaurant. He must have a death wish. The pretty girl, Brandon, Mandy, and others were all utterly shocked. What did you say, Mr. Sullivan? How could he possibly be the guest of honor in your restaurant? The pretty girl stepped out and asked with a frown. So, can one go now? Connor looked at Andrew nonchalantly. Sure, sure. Andrew nodded respectfully at Connor and ignored the pretty girl. Connor took the phone back from Andrew and left as everyone looked on. Both Mandy and Brandon looked at Connor from behind, not knowing what happened. What is going on, Mr. Sullivan? How can you let him go? The pretty girl asked the restaurant manager, looking not too happy. What happened today was a misunderstanding, Ms. Phillips. That gentleman is indeed a VIP of New Century Restaurant. He is a guest of private dining room one. Andrew explained helplessly as he wiped the beads of sweat from his forehead. A guest of private dining room one? The girl in a business suit and the pretty girl looked stunned when they heard that. Did you make a mistake? The two of us are guests in private dining room one. That guy must be lying just now, Mr. Sullivan. You should catch him, the pretty girl shouted. I am not mistaken. He is indeed a guest of private dining room one. We have a reservation record at the reception, and it was Mr. McDonald who made the reservation, Andrew said with a frown. That's impossible. You must have made a mistake. It was my cousin who made the reservation. How could it be that guy? As the pretty girl spoke, she turned to look at the girl in a business suit. You may take a look for yourself at the reservation record if you don't believe me, Miss Phillips, Andrew explained helplessly and did not want to argue with her. I'll take a look. I don't believe that a food delivery guy can afford to dine in this restaurant. The pretty girl was not convinced. That won't be necessary. 
It wasn't me but my fiancé who made the reservation. The girl in a business suit said in a low voice, biting her lip. What? The pretty girl was wide-eyed with a shocked look on her face. Andrew said that it was Connor who made the reservation, and the girl in a business suit denied that she made the reservation and said that it was her fiancé who she had never met who did that. Could it be that the guy is your fiancé? The pretty girl covered her mouth in disbelief as she suddenly figured it out. That's impossible. There was a hint of helplessness in the eyes of the girl in a business suit. She had never met her fiancé. The Phillips family was a prominent family in Port Hampton, and she was the only daughter. So, no matter what, it was impossible that she was to marry someone like Connor. Even if she had to marry, she should marry someone from other prominent families in Port Hampton. Let's go. Let's go in to find Connor now and see what's going on, shall we? The pretty girl hesitated for a moment and then dragged the girl in a business suit back to private dining room one. Brandon and Mandy looked baffled when they saw the two girls go away because they simply did not figure out what was going on. They could not understand why an incel like Connor had suddenly become a VIP of New Century Restaurant. Mr. Sullivan, Brandon stepped forward and wanted to ask what was going on. But, Andrew snubbed him and walked away. Brandon should have been grateful for not being kicked out of the restaurant. If it was not for Brandon fanning the flames, Andrew would not have offended Connor. It was the most ridiculous joke Andrew had ever heard in his life when Brandon said that the chairman of the New Century restaurant was an incel and a food delivery guy. What's going on with Connor, honey? How could he have the money to dine in a place like this? Mandy asked Brandon with a frown. Connor must have used some tricks to deceive the restaurant manager. Even if he had won a lottery, he would have spent most of the money at Brasserie Le Bernardin last time, so he couldn't have afforded to dine in this place, Brandon whispered, as he gritted his teeth. Should we tell the restaurant manager, then? Mandy asked. She was frustrated because Connor was not chased out of the restaurant. I think Connor is colluding with the restaurant manager. It's useless for us to talk to the restaurant manager now, Brandon said. He remembered the restaurant manager's attitude toward him just now. Plus, he was not a member of the New Century restaurant, so it was pointless to talk to him again. Alas! Mandy sighed when he heard Brandon say that. Don't worry, an incel will always be an incel. Sooner or later, he will be exposed. It's still not too late to fix him by then, Brandon said sinisterly as he turned to look at Mandy. So, what should we do now? Mandy asked, nodding thoughtfully. My friend should have arrived by now. Let's go. Brandon said as he looked at the time. Meanwhile, the pretty girl and the girl in a business suit were back in the private dining room one. They were stunned, and their faces looked surprised as soon as they stepped into the room when they saw Connor sitting inside. Connor also saw the two girls coming in at once. He stood up with a hint of helplessness on his face and said, What do you really want, beautiful? One have apologized to you for bumping into you yesterday. Throwing water on your face was also an unintentional act. Why are you still harassing me? Connor was thinking about meeting his fiance, so he thought the pretty girl was here looking for trouble. Why are you in this room? The pretty girl looked at Connor and asked, I reserved this room. Where do you think I should be? Connor said after he was startled for a second. That's not what I am asking. I mean, why did you reserve this private dining room? The pretty girl asked, looking shocked. To have lunch, of course, Connor answered. He did not want them to know that he was here to meet his fiance. Otherwise, the girl would create trouble with him again. Are you waiting for someone? The girl in a business suit, who had been silent all this while, suddenly asked. The question startled Connor for a second. He felt puzzled and said, Yeah, one have an appointment. Is the person you are meeting called Freya Phillips? The girl in a business suit stepped forward and asked. How, how did you know that? Connor looked in astonishment, and his mouth agape. The two girls looked at each other helplessly as they knew that Connor was the fiancé who the girl in a business suit was going to meet today. I, I can't believe that your fiancé turns out to be this sadder. The pretty girl stuttered as she said it to Freya, who was rooted to the spot with a stiffened smile on her face. 
she was not a gold digger. But after hearing how Maya described Connor earlier, she already had a terrible impression of him, and naturally, she resented the fact that Connor was her fiancé. What are you two talking about? Connor heard their conversation and asked in puzzlement. But, Freya and Maya were rooted to the spot, not knowing how to answer Connor's question. Say something. How did you two know that I was going to meet Freya? Connor stepped forward and continued to ask. Freya looked at Connor and hesitated for a moment. Then, she bit her red lip and whispered, Because I am the one you are supposed to meet. It was the shock of a lifetime, and Connor's mind went blank instantly. Before meeting Freya, Connor had always thought that his fiancée was ugly and had an unpleasant personality. But, he could not have been more wrong. His fiancée was such a stunning beauty. Not to mention that she had a hot body and an extraordinary personality. He had first inherited a dollario trillion inheritance, and now, he was to marry a stunning beauty. He felt that he was the happiest man in the world. Freya looked at Connor in front of her as incredulity and surprise filled her eyes. She never expected that her fiancé was someone like Connor. Maya was standing next to Freya, looking as shocked and dumbfounded as Freya was. Freya could not accept it for a long time after she knew that she had a fiancé. First, she did not even know who the person was. So, why should she marry him? What kind of woman would not want to marry someone she really loved? Besides, it was the 21st century. Arranged marriages were so yesteryear. She had once threatened to kill herself just because she did not want to meet this so-called fiancé. But then, after her father told her something, she had no choice but to accept it. It turned out that Philip's corporation was in financial difficulty and needed a large sum of funds to turn it around. He had sought out financing from many domestic banks and business partners, but none of them were willing to help. If this continued, Philip's corporation was likely to face bankruptcy, and her father would probably have to go to jail for it. Just when her father was in despair, a foreign company found her father and expressed its willingness to inject capital into Philip's corporation on the condition that the Philip's family was to sell 51% of their shares to them and for Freya to marry Connor. And so, that was how Freya became Connor's fiancé. Freya had thought about it for a long time after knowing the reason. She was willing to make the sacrifice if she could save the entire Philip's family. After all, she did not want to see Philip's corporation go out of business, nor did she want to see her father in prison. Besides, since the other party had designated that she had to marry Connor, it meant that Connor must be super rich, and marrying him would be of great help to Philip's corporation. But, Freya never expected that the person she was going to marry was a destitute food delivery guy. At first, she had given up the fantasy of love in exchange for material satisfaction and saving Philip's corporation. But Connor, who was standing in front of her, not only had no way to meet Freya's material needs, but he also did not seem to be of any help to Philip's corporation. She could not understand why the foreign company would make a request like this. Meanwhile, Connor was still immersed in the fantasy of Freya. He did not look forward to marrying Freya at first. He even resisted it a little. But, he instantly changed his mind when he learned that his fiancée was a stunning beauty. I would not approve of you marrying someone like him, Freya. I'm going to find my uncle-in-law and ask him why he wants you to marry a person like him. Maya snapped back and grabbed Freya's hand to bring her out of the private dining room. That won't be necessary. One know what's going on. Freya said and then walked straight up to Connor. You're my fiancé, aren't you? Freya's question stunned him at first. He reached to scratch his head before replying with an embarrassed look. Well, I suppose, yes. Then, let us sit down and talk, Freya said. Maya saw that Freya had no intention of leaving. She looked on with confusion and said frustratedly, What do you have to talk about with this kind of incel, Freya? Are you really going to marry him? Maya still knew little about the situation of Philip's corporation right now. However, Freya knew that her only option now was to marry Connor, or her father would not get the foreign funding. So now, even if Freya did not want to marry Connor, she could not just leave like that. Freya had always been very intelligent as the daughter of the Phillips family. 
She figured that even if Connor was not a rich guy, as long as Philip's corporation could sail through this difficulty, it would still be good for her family. Besides, what made Freya feel good was that Connor seemed to be more controllable than the other rich kids. You will go back with me now, and I will certainly dissuade my uncle-in-law, Maya said. She could not bear to see her cousin marry Connor. So, she was very emotional. It's okay, Maya. Freya said then sat down gracefully in a chair. She held her hand out to point at the seat opposite her and said, have a seat. Connor hesitated for a second before he sat down across Freya. Your name is Connor MacDonald, right? Freya asked. That's right. I'm Connor, he said, nodding happily. Freya felt even more disgusted when she saw Connor's reaction. I suppose you know why we're here today, right, Connor? Absolutely. Connor nodded. Thomas had already told him about the Phillips family before he came. Freya stared dead at Connor with her big round eyes and said with no hesitation, since you know, then things will be easy. One will marry you. What Freya said stunned Connor. He did not expect Freya to agree to marry him so readily. According to the will, Connor must marry Freya within two years without revealing his identity. Thomas was using business means to force the Phillips family to let Freya marry Connor. But, this was actually just to help Connor and Freya confirm their relationship. It did not mean that Freya must marry Connor, and even if she had to, it did not have to be within two years. So, Connor was still worried about how to convince Freya to marry him. After all, he still could not reveal his identity. As long as he did not reveal his identity, he was still an incel and a food delivery guy without money. Not even ordinary girls would want to marry someone like Connor, let alone a stunning beauty like Freya. But, what he never expected was that Freya agreed to the marriage as soon as they met. You are not crazy, are you, Freya? Why did you promise to marry a guy like him? Maya looked at her in shock, and her eyes were wide open. Connor was stunned and asked Freya, are you really going to marry me? That's right. I will marry you, but with three conditions. As long as you agree to these three conditions, I will marry you at any time, Freya said slowly. What are the three conditions? I'm all ears. Connor knew that Freya would not agree to marry him so readily for nothing. Freya looked at Connor for a moment and then said, First, we will get married and be known as husband and wife in public. But privately, you are you, and 1 a.m. me. That's fine. Go on. Connor nodded. Freya looked at Connor and continued, Second, you must not touch me simply because you and I are husband and wife in name. That's also fine. What about the last condition? Connor could not help but laugh. By that time, he could already feel that Freya did not want to marry him at all. She just wanted Connor to play along so that she could get Thomas's investment in Philip's corporation. Third, you have no right to interfere in whatever I do, Freya said slowly. I have no right to interfere in whatever you do? Connor rubbed his nose and asked softly, What do you mean? It's simple. If I meet a man one like and fall in love with him, you should not interfere. By the same token, if you meet a girl you like, you may also do whatever you like, and I will not interfere, Freya explained slowly. You mean you only want us to be husband and wife only in name, right? Connor asked. That's right. That's exactly what one mean. Freya looked at Connor and said in a sincere tone. If I were to say that I'm willing to marry you, you would probably not believe it. So, it's better to lay it bare before us and be fair to the both of us. If one promise you these three conditions, your family will get the financial backing and stay afloat, and I will only marry a wife who is not exactly my wife and who I can't even touch. So, why should I do this? What do one get in return? Connor narrowed his eyes and uttered these two questions in succession. Hearing Connor MacDonald's words, Freya Phillips could not help but feel stunned. She never thought Connor to be so brilliant. He reacted instantly. Connor, I know your situation. You are short on money right now, right? As long as you agree to three of my conditions, one will give you $10,000 per month for your living expenses as compensation. Freya said softly to Connor. Are you planning to keep me as a toy boy? 
Connor asked with a playful smile. Think whatever you want. Freya replied disdainfully, then, she continued, with your current financial situation, $10,000 per month won't be a small amount for you. You can sleep on it. As long as you agree to these three conditions, we can go to collect the marriage certificate any time. After listening to what Freya had to say, Connor seemed to realize something. The three conditions that Freya had proposed were very unreasonable. Even if Connor agreed to marry Freya, he would be no different from being a celibate. Freya was definitely out of Connor's league, but Connor couldn't do anything about the situation. Moreover, even if Freya was looking for an extramarital companion, Connor didn't have the right to intervene. This was obviously a humiliating experience for Connor. No man would agree to such conditions. Moreover, Freya planned to provide Connor with $10,000 every month. It was even more undignified for a man to receive money from a woman for his living expenses. Freya must have been forced to go on a blind date with this broke chap. Now, she is deliberately humiliating Connor so that he will back off. The three conditions that Freya raised earlier were so over the top. Connor will definitely not agree with them. Freya is so brilliant. Maya Phillips, standing nearby, could not help but praise Freya silently. I think $10,000 a month is too little, isn't it? Right then, Connor's voice suddenly interrupted Maya's thoughts. What? This bastard agreed? Is he so shameless? Not only did he agree, but he also claimed that $10,000 a month are too little? What kind of person is Connor? Maya stared at Connor in disbelief. At this moment, Maya despised Connor to the core. She had thought that Connor was just a little shameless. But now, she felt that Connor was very shameless and didn't have a shred of dignity at all. If you think $10,000 are too little, what do you think about $20,000? Freya didn't think that Connor would agree to her unreasonable requests either. She couldn't help but feel stunned for a moment before asking softly. All right, $20,000 per month it is. I agree to your conditions. Connor replied casually. You, you are agreeing for real? Freya asked in disbelief when Connor so readily agreed. Yeah, $20,000 a month is not a small amount. How many takeouts do I have to deliver to earn $20,000? Connor replied with a smile. You don't mind if I sleep with other men? Freya continued. I don't mind. Besides, you will be giving me $20,000 every month for my living expenses anyway. So, you can do whatever you want, Connor teased. Looking at Connor's shameless grin, Freya was rendered speechless and was thoroughly disappointed. She simply couldn't understand how a man could go so low. At this moment, Connor's thought was straightforward. Since Freya didn't like him that way, there was no need to force Freya to marry him. Although Freya had a great figure and was very good looking, it won't make things sweet if he were to force it. Connor agreed to marry Freya only to fulfill the requirements of the will, and Freya wanted to marry Connor only to save the Phillips family. Both parties took what they needed and played along. Connor only pretended to be like a gold digger earlier to hide his identity. When Freya and Maya saw Connor agreeing to those three conditions, the contempt toward Connor grew stronger. At this moment, Connor was a complete loser in their eyes. Why else would Connor agree to such a request? This is my business card. You can find my contact information on it. I will transfer to you your living allowance every month after you share your bank account number with me. After a short moment of hesitation, Freya took out her business card from her bag and handed it to Connor. Okay, thank you, boss. Connor accepted the business card and replied with a smile. How can you be so shameless? Do you think it is appropriate for a man to spend a woman's money? Watching the two, Maya couldn't bear it anymore. She stood up and shouted at Connor. I managed to get my living expenses covered by a rich woman based on my capabilities. Do you think anyone would take care of your living expenses just like that even if you wanted to? Connor turned to look at Maya and said disdainfully. You, you are the most shameless man I have ever met. Hearing Connor's words, Maya was so angry that her face turned red. All right, Maya, get a grip. 
Freya frowned and scolded. Then, she looked at Connor and said, Do you have anything else to add? Can I ask you a question? Connor hesitated for a moment before asking calmly. What is it? Do you not want to marry me because I have no money or because you simply don't like me? Connor asked softly. When Freya heard Connor's question, a hint of confusion flashed across her eyes. She replied softly, isn't that the same thing? No. Connor shook his head gently. Then, it is because I don't like you. Freya replied firmly, then stood up and said, as for the wedding date, I will inform you soon. All right. Connor nodded in agreement. Freya picked up her bag, turned around, and walked out of the room. Maya glared at Connor and ran out of the room. After leaving the room, Maya asked Freya, confused, Freya, are you really going to marry a broke chap like Connor? If you marry him, your life will be ruined, do you get that? Phillips Corporation is facing financial difficulties. One can only solve the problem by marrying Connor. Freya replied softly. But Freya, you're such an amazing person. How can you marry such a loser? That's not fair. Maya said agitatedly. As long as he agrees to my three conditions, what does it matter if I marry him? That's true. Connor is really useless. He agreed to such unreasonable conditions. He even thought the amount of money you offered him was too little. I've never met such a shameless person in my entire life. Maya uttered in disdain. Both of us are taking what we need. When Phillips Corporation's funds are ready, I will divorce Connor. As long as Connor does not touch me, I won't lose anything. Freya replied softly. Freya, you're so clever. Connor is such a fool. He even agreed to such conditions. When it all suddenly dawned on Maya, she instantly burst out laughing in glee. Freya Phillips and Maya Phillips left the private room. New Century Restaurant's manager, Andrew Sullivan, entered the private room where Connor McDonald was. Mr. McDonald, one was unaware of who one was dealing with earlier and have offended you. Please don't fire me. One didn't do it on purpose. After entering the private room, Andrew seemed nervous as he loudly begged Connor. When Connor heard Andrew, he slowly raised his head and glanced at him. Then, he said indifferently, what happened today has nothing to do with you. Don't worry, I won't fire you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Andrew said, unusually agitated. Have you told anyone else about my identity? Connor knocked on the table and asked. No. Earlier, you specifically told me not to expose your identity. I'm the only one in the restaurant who knows about it. No one else knows about it. Andrew replied respectfully. Good. Connor nodded slightly and continued, Oh right, are the two people who mocked me earlier also members of your restaurant? Those two aren't. They came in with their friend. Andrew thought for a moment and replied. Then, chase them out and cancel their friend's membership while you're at it. But do not expose my identity. Do you understand what I'm saying? Connor said indifferently. Mr. McDonald, don't worry. Leave it to me. Andrew said as if he was treading on thin ice. Connor nodded in satisfaction. He turned around and walked out of the private room without saying anything else. After seeing Connor leave, Andrew immediately felt relieved and sighed heavily. Then, he took out his walkie-talkie and shouted into it, Security, go to private room number 8 now and chase all the guests out. Roger that. After the head of security heard Andrew's order, he hurriedly responded affirmatively. Andrew already held a grudge against Brandon Guthrie and Mandy Hines. If the two hadn't stepped forward to testify, how could Andrew have offended Connor? Now that Connor had spoken up, Andrew won't be nice to the two. Soon after, the security guards chased Brandon, Mandy, and the others who were eating. What right do you have to kick us out? Do you know who 1AM? I am a platinum member of your restaurant. Where is your manager? Get him to come out and see me. After Brandon's friend was kicked out of the private room by the security guards, he felt very embarrassed and shouted agitatedly. 
I am the manager of the restaurant. You can tell me if you have anything to say. Andrew strolled out of the crowd. Mr. Sullivan, you came just in time. What's wrong with your security guards? My friends and one were having dinner in the private room. Why did you suddenly kick us out? Are you worried that I can't pay you or something? Brandon screamed, his eyes bulging. Mr. Collins, you should ask your two friends why you are kicked out of the restaurant. Andrew turned to look at Brandon and Mandy. Why are you asking us? Brandon frowned and asked. Hearing this, Andrew couldn't help but sneer, then he said expressionlessly, earlier, you slandered other customers in the restaurant and had made a negative impression on the other customers. That's why I asked the security to kick you out. Upon hearing this, Brandon couldn't help but feel stunned for a moment. Then, he realized that it was because of Connor. Moreover, you have also implicated Mr. Collins due to this matter. Our restaurant has revoked his membership, so now he has no right to eat here. Andrew continued. Mr. Sullivan, what did you say? My membership has been revoked? When Mr. Collins heard what Andrew said, his facial expression immediately turned ugly. After all, it wasn't easy to obtain a membership card at New Century Restaurant. Mr. Collins had to obtain a membership card through his connection with several relatives. Now, it was suddenly being revoked. AAR. Collins could not accept this. Mr. Collins, I'm sorry. The higher-ups ordered this. It has nothing to do with me. Andrew replied expressionlessly. When Brandon heard what Andrew said, his expression instantly darkened. Brandon knew how important this membership card was to Mr. Collins, and he knew how important Mr. Collins was to him as well. Today, Brandon came to Mr. Collins' birthday party mainly to curry favor with him. After all, Mr. Collins' family had a huge bidding project, and Brandon's father's company was also ready to bid. Earlier in the private room, Brandon had already discussed it with Mr. Collins, and Mr. Collins readily agreed. But now, because Brandon and Mandy had slandered Connor, Mr. Collins' membership was instantly revoked. Brandon didn't know how to explain it to him. Mr. Collins, you don't have the right to enter the restaurant now. One hope you will cooperate. Andrew said to Mr. Collins. Brandon, who the F asterisk CK did you offend? If you are going to offend someone, don't get me implicated. Mr. Collins scolded Brandon angrily. Mr. Collins, let me explain. Brandon said quickly. Explain? My F asterisk King membership is already gone. Why do you still bother to explain to me? Get out of here now, and don't let me see you again. Mr. Collins' membership at the restaurant was unexpectedly revoked, so he was feeling very depressed. After cursing loudly, he turned around and left. About the bidding, Brandon hurriedly shouted after him. To hell with that. My luck sucks when I see you. Mr. Collins scolded him mercilessly. Brandon was stunned to the spot. He seemed desperate. He had put so much effort into this for so long, but a single sentence completely ruined him. He wanted just to die now. What kind of influence does Connor have? Even if we slandered him earlier, Andrew wouldn't have made such a big fuss out of it, right? Mandy commented with a frown. Connor must have offered Andrew something. These two are clearly in cahoots. Brandon gritted his teeth and replied in a low voice before he continued, I have underestimated Connor before. When I return to school, I will definitely teach him a good lesson. Brandon realized that his luck had made a turn for the worst ever since he got together with Mandy. His luck was especially rotten when he encountered Connor. Therefore, Brandon now hoped to find an opportunity to vent all the anger pent up inside of him in the next few days. My darling, so what should we do now? Should we go somewhere else to grab a bite? Mandy hesitated for a moment before asking Brandon softly. F asterisk CK, my cooperation with Mr. Collins has been ruined, and you still have the appetite to eat? Are you a pig? Brandon looked at Mandy beside him and scolded her unhappily. Right now, Brandon's mind was filled with thoughts on how he should explain this to his father when he got home. After Brandon scolded Mandy, she quickly shut her mouth and didn't dare to say more. 
After leaving New Century Restaurant, Connor McDonald had no idea what was happening in there. He didn't care because he knew that Andrew Sullivan would definitely be able to handle the rest after he left. I didn't expect my fiancé to be such a beauty. It's a pity that she doesn't like me at all. Connor couldn't help but sigh softly. Although Freya was very beautiful, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that she was stunning. However, it wasn't nice to force it. Connor understood this much. Either way, Connor only needed to fulfill the requirements in the will to get the inheritance without hiccups. Moreover, Connor felt that the status of his relationship with Freya suited him well anyway. They got what they wanted. She could look for a man she liked, and Connor could also look for a woman he liked. Connor was no longer the same person he was before. Naturally, he could not be without a woman by his side. Hi, sir. We have new property available here. Would you like to come in and take a look? At this moment, a delicate and pretty young woman in a white one-piece dress with a ponytail approached Connor and spoke with a smile. When Connor heard this, he could not help scanning the young woman before him. Although she dressed very ordinarily, she looked charming. At the very least, she was prettier than Mandy Hines, Mae Young, and the others. Her large, shiny eyes were bright and lively. Her long and fair legs were exposed, making him want to touch her. I'm sorry, I have something to do later. At this moment, Connor was thinking about what Freya had told him, so he was not in the mood to look at the property. After saying that, Connor turned around and was about to leave. Sir, please come in and take a look. Just treat it as doing me a favor. The beautiful young woman saw that Connor was about to leave, so she hurriedly called out in a low voice. A favor? Connor could not help but feel stunned for a moment, then he asked in puzzlement, How do you want me to help you? I'm a student of Port Hampton University. My name is Lily Schmidt. The young beauty said softly to Connor. So? Connor asked. Every weekend, one work part-time at the property showroom to distribute flyers. But we have some key performance indicators to hit when we distribute flyers. Every day, we have to get 10 customers to go to the showroom to look at the properties. Only then can we get paid for today's work. I have only gotten 9 customers since this morning without taking any breaks. Now it's almost time to get off my shift. Can you help me with this? Lily explained anxiously. Connor hesitated for a moment when he heard what Lily said. Connor considered whether he should purchase a house last night, anyway. Coincidentally, he bumped into Lily today. It was indeed not an easy feat for such a young lady to hand out flyers here, so he nodded and said, All right then, I'll go in with you to take a look. Thank you. You're a good person. Lily replied happily after Connor agreed. No need to thank me. Connor replied with a smile. Follow me. Lily hurriedly led Connor to the showroom. Not long after, Connor reached the showroom with Lily's lead. But just as he was about to walk into the showroom, Connor heard a woman's angry shout, Lily Schmidt, what are you doing? Why do you bring every Tom, Dick, and Harry to the showroom? What is wrong with this person? When Connor heard that, he raised his head and looked over. He saw a sexy uniformed beauty walking out of the showroom in a pair of high heels. The uniformed beauty was around 25 years old and looked extremely charming. Especially her pair of seductive eyes, it was as if they could bore into one's soul and seduce them. Her beautiful figure was tightly wrapped in a black uniform. Her collar revealed a glimpse of snow-white skin, and her bosom was almost bursting out of her blouse. Looking down further, he saw a pair of slender, fair legs in tight black stockings, unreservedly exposed. This woman gave Connor the feeling of a seductress, unusually sexy and charming. Ms. Lawson, he's a customer I just got. Lily explained to that woman, a little fearful. Customer? After the female manager heard this, she looked at Connor with disdain. Then, she pouted, sneered, and said, Oh Lily, my dear Lily. Say, is there something wrong with your brain? Do you think this person can afford to buy a property? He probably can't even afford a toilet. 
Even if one have expectations for you, you can't just randomly find a scrap collector to fill the bill, right? After Lily heard what was said, she looked at Connor awkwardly. It was indeed so, Connor did not seem dressed like someone who could afford a property today. Lily, this person doesn't count. There are only 10 minutes left before wrap-up. Hurry up now and find me another customer. The female manager shouted at Lily impatiently. Yes, Ms. Lawson. Lily replied nervously, then turned around and walked out of the showroom. But Connor reached out and pulled Lily back. Then, he looked at the female manager playfully and asked, How do you determine who is a worthy customer? How do one determine who is a worthy customer? When the female manager heard this, she couldn't help but laugh coldly. Then, she narrowed her eyes and said, Of course, it's someone who can afford to buy a house. So, how can you be so sure that one cannot afford to buy a house? Connor looked at the female manager and asked with an extremely calm tone. When the female manager heard what Connor said, she couldn't help but feel stunned for a moment. Then, she carefully looked at Connor and immediately covered her mouth and laughed coquettishly. As for the other employees in the showroom, when they heard what Connor said, they, too, laughed out loud. They looked at Connor with disdain. Kid, I don't know if other people can afford it, but you definitely can't. Do you know how much the properties here cost per square foot? Do you know how much the properties here are worth? The female manager walked up to Connor in her high heels and asked provocatively. I don't. Connor looked at the female manager and shook his head gently. Let me tell you, the cheapest villa here costs close to $10 million. Do you think you can afford that? Can you even enter such a place? The female manager looked at Connor and continued. $10 million? That expensive? Connor pretended to be shocked as he exclaimed. Now you know. The female manager couldn't help but sneer, then she continued. I advise you to be a little self-aware. A loser like you wouldn't be able to afford a mere toilet here even if you were to not eat or drink for the rest of your life. I advise you to stop wasting time and get out of here. Looking at this sexy beauty before him, Connor could not help but feel like laughing. Perhaps she did not know that standing before her at this moment was an influential person that was Connor. Buying the entire property here was a child's play to Connor, much less a villa. Mr. McDonald, I'm really sorry. Why don't we go outside? Lily Schmidt stood next to Connor and said to him with an apologetic expression. Lily, too, felt that the properties here were not something a person like Connor could afford. The kind-hearted Lily could not bear to watch Connor being humiliated by her manager, so she wanted to get Connor to leave as soon as possible. Hearing Lily's words, Connor turned to look at her and said softly, Go? Why should we go? I happen to want to buy a house. Why shouldn't I look at the properties you have here? What are you still pretending for, SC asterisk bag? Did you not understand what Ms. Lawson said just now? The properties we have here are not something that poor people like you can afford. Get lost. One of the male employees of the showroom shouted at Connor. Lily's expression was one of helplessness now. She really could not understand. Connor clearly could not afford to buy any properties here. Why did he stay just to be humiliated? At this moment, Lily began to regret her action. She should not have brought Connor in just now. You are the manager of this showroom, right? Connor ignored the male employee. Instead, he walked up to the sexy and beautiful female manager as he asked coldly. Yes, 1 a.m. the manager of this showroom. The female manager raised her head arrogantly. Then, show me some of your properties. Connor said slowly. When the female manager heard what Connor said, she could not help but frown. Perhaps it was because she was good-looking, even though she was frowning, she was still so sexy and charming. Do you not understand human language? Didn't I tell you earlier that people like you cannot afford the properties here? You better get out of here or I will call the security guards to kick you out. The female manager pointed at the entrance of the showroom as she shouted. Mr. McDonald, let's go. Lily could not help but reach out to pull Connor away. Connor sized up the female manager and could not help but shake his head. 
he felt very helpless. Connor had initially wanted to buy a house anyway. It was by chance he came to the showroom today. He really wanted to know more about the properties here. However, the attitude of the manager of the showroom was too harsh and unacceptable, so Connor hesitated for a moment before turning around to leave. Ms. Lawson, what's going on? At this moment, a middle-aged man spoke up from somewhere further in the showroom. When everyone heard that, they turned their heads to look. They saw a middle-aged man in a black suit walking out of the showroom. Mr. Carter, why did you come outside? When Ms. Lawson saw the middle-aged man coming out of the showroom, her expression instantly changed, and she spoke with a charming smile. I heard you guys outside just now, speaking so loudly about chasing a customer out? What's going on? The middle-aged man frowned and questioned. Mr. Carter, so what happened here is that this brat has come to our showroom to cause trouble. I am about to ask the security guards to chase him out. Ms. Lawson hurriedly explained. He came to the showroom to cause trouble? When Mr. Carter heard this, he couldn't help but frown. Then, he went up to Connor and asked carefully, Sir, what exactly happened? I came here to look at houses, but the manager of your showroom didn't like me and even wanted to kick me out. Connor replied indifferently. When Lily heard what Connor said, she immediately became nervous. Lily knew that this middle-aged man was Ms. Lawson's immediate supervisor. Connor was undoubtedly tattling on Ms. Lawson. If Ms. Lawson were given disciplinary action, she would definitely not have it any better either. Hearing what Connor said, the middle-aged man turned and glared at Ms. Lawson. Then, he smiled and said to Connor, Sir, regarding the negligence of our showroom staff, I sincerely apologize to you. I am the person in charge of this showroom, Yannick Carter. I will arrange for someone to serve you now. Please wait for a moment. When Connor noticed a positive change in attitude toward him from the middle-aged man, he stopped having thoughts of leaving. Instead, he said politely, All right then. Chloe Lawson, what are you still standing there for? Hurry up and introduce the new property to our customer. Yannick turned and shouted at Ms. Lawson. Mr. Carter, do you think this kid is here to buy a house? Introducing the property to him is a waste of time. He must be here to cause trouble. Chloe grumbled unhappily. Chloe Lawson, how many times have I told you, the customer is our first priority? As long as he walks into the showroom, he is our customer. Whether the customer can afford a house or not, you should treat them well. This is the most basic professional quality of a sales staff. Don't you know that? Yannick admonished without hesitation. In fact, from the first encounter, it was obvious to Yannick that Connor would definitely not be able to afford the properties they had to sell. However, Yannick felt that if he were to really make Connor leave with such a bad taste in his mouth, it would have a very negative impact on the showroom. That was why he insisted on having Chloe serve Connor. Chloe hesitated for a moment before walking up to Connor and speaking in a very arrogant tone, follow me, I will show you around. Although Chloe Lawson was not happy about the situation, she didn't dare to go against Yannick Carter's order. She could only bring Connor to the showroom's sand table model. Yannick knew that Connor definitely couldn't afford the villa here, so he didn't stay too long and immediately left the showroom. At this moment, Lily Schmidt stood rooted to the spot, nervous as her eyes were filled with helplessness. She knew she had offended Chloe by bringing Connor here today. Once Connor left, Chloe would fire her for sure. So right now, Lily was at a loss. She could only lower her head and fidget with the helm of her clothes. Chloe led Connor to the sand table model and pointed at a villa in the corner, snappily saying, this is the last villa we have. It covers an area of 400 square feet and comes with a garden. The price of one square meter is $20,000. Including the handling fees, taxes, and other fees, the total cost is $8 million. $8 million? Connor could not help but feel stunned when he heard the number. That's right. This villa is located in an obscure corner, so it is cheaper. As for the other villas, one square foot would cost at least $40,000 or more. Chloe replied indifferently. Then, she sized Connor up and continued, however, one guess you can't afford even the cheapest villa, right? 
Hearing this, Connor glanced at Chloe but said nothing. All right, drop the act. After all, how can a loser like you have the money to buy a villa? I don't want you to waste your time either. Move along now. I won't hold what happened before against you. After Yannick left, Chloe started sounding sarcastic again. At this moment, Connor and Chloe were standing very close to each other so that Connor could smell the faint perfume on Chloe. Putting aside Chloe's personality, she had quite a great figure. She could be considered a beauty among beauties. Especially her pair of full breasts under the white blouse. How sure are you that I can't afford this villa? Connor raised his head and glanced at Chloe. His tone was cold as he spoke. Whether you can afford it, you should know that yourself. Let's not mention eight million dollars. One would consider you impressive if you can even come up with eighty thousand dollars today. Chloe rolled her eyes and said to Connor disdainfully. Ha! Huh. After Connor heard what Chloe said, he sneered and didn't say anything more. He turned around and was about to leave. Poor loser. I knew you couldn't afford it. What a waste of time. Seeing that Connor was about to leave, Chloe couldn't help but mutter disdainfully. Connor wasn't in the mood to continue paying attention to Chloe. Instead, he turned around and walked out of the showroom. It wasn't that Connor couldn't afford this villa. Connor only felt that the location of this villa wasn't great. After all, he had inherited $10 trillion in inheritance. If he really wanted to buy a house, he would definitely have to buy the best villa in the best location. On the surface, everyone there thought Connor did not have the money and was not worthy of this villa. Little did they know, this villa was not worthy of Connor's current status. Lily Schmidt, what are you still standing there for? You can leave now. Chloe saw Connor leaving and rolled her eyes at Lily. Ms. Lawson, is. Is it time to get off work? Lily was surprised when she heard what Chloe said. She bit her lip and asked in a low voice. Get off work? Chloe sneered and then said sarcastically, That's right, you can get off work now. And it's permanent. You don't have to come back anymore. Lily led Connor into the showroom, which had caused Chloe to be scolded by Yannick. Chloe was very upset by that, so she was going to vent her anger on Lily. When Lily finally realized what Chloe had said, she was stunned and looked aggrieved. Ms. Lawson, I. Lily opened her mouth, wanting to explain. Ms. Lawson, 111, L. Can't you understand human language or something? One said you've been fired. Get lost now. Chloe shouted coldly. Lily stood where she was and hesitated, tears welling up in her eyes. Lily's family situation was not good to begin with. A few years ago, Lily's father fell seriously ill, which had run the family's finances dry. Lily's university tuition fees were paid by her mother's hard-earned money. As Lily attended university, she worked part-time too. One reason was that she had to pay her tuition fees, and the other was to support the family expenses. Therefore, this job was critical to Lily. When he heard what happened behind him, Connor turned to look at Lily. When he found Lily crying, he couldn't help but ask softly, What happened? Are you okay? No, nothing. Lily reached out to wipe the tears from the corner of her eyes and turned around to leave with Connor. Connor hesitated before stopping in his track. He turned around to look at Chloe, asking softly, Why did you fire her? I'm the manager of this showroom. I can fire whoever one want. What does that have to do with you? Chloe replied with disdain. Mr. McDonald, just stop. Let's go. Lily reached out and tugged at Connor as she said softly. Connor glanced at Lily sympathetically. He had no intention of leaving at all. Instead, he walked up to Chloe and said grudgingly, Lily didn't do anything wrong today. Why did you fire her? Who do you think you are? Why did one fire her? Do I owe you an explanation for that? Chloe spat, disgusted. You don't need to explain to me but you should give Lily an explanation. Otherwise, one will go to the person in charge of your showroom right now. Connor glared at Chloe and threatened. 
You want an explanation, right? Chloe sneered and continued, then, I will give you one. I fired her because she was not good at her job. She does not have foresight. She brought everyone and anyone into our showroom. This will affect the image of our showroom. You have to understand that the properties we sell here are all worth tens of millions. If our customers see a loser like you come in to look at the properties, wouldn't that make us a joke? Why do you think one should let this kind of employee stay? You think she doesn't have foresight? Connor asked softly. That's right. She even brought a loser like you into the showroom. Does that not show that she lacks foresight in? I'll buy the villa you showed me earlier. Before Chloe could finish her sentence, Connor interrupted her. What? What did you say? Chloe's eyes widened as she asked Connor in shock. I said, one will buy the villa you showed me earlier. Connor repeated calmly. You want to buy that villa? When Chloe Lawson heard what Connor McDonald said, she could not help but feel stunned for a moment. Then, she started laughing hysterically. The other showroom staff also started laughing as if they had heard the funniest joke in the world. Mr. Mr. McDonald, I'm fine. I'll just look for another job. Let's go now. Lily Schmidt was very touched when Connor stood up for her. But she knew, where would Connor get $8 million to buy that villa? So at this moment, Connor's words were nothing more than a joke to her. Are you done laughing? At this moment, Connor suddenly interrupted everyone's laughter. Chloe stopped laughing and scanned Connor up and down, then she said disdainfully, you just said that you want to buy this villa, right? This specific villa is being sold at a special price. We don't accept loans for it. It can only be paid in full. The deposit is $5 million. The remaining $3 million must be paid within a month. If you want to buy it, just pay up then. The deposit is $5 million? Connor couldn't help but feel stunned when he heard that. What? You don't have the money? Chloe laughed mockingly. No, I don't think there's a need to go through so much trouble. I'll give you $8 million at a go. Connor said casually. Seeing Connor's appearance, surprise flashed in Chloe's eyes because she vaguely felt that Connor wasn't joking with her. Could this guy be a rich man's son? A bold guess suddenly came to Chloe, but she quickly dismissed the idea. After all, which rich man's son would dress like this? Mr. McDonald, let's go quickly. Lily tugged at the corner of Connor's shirt, wanting to drag him away. After all, from what she could see, Connor was just standing up for her. Where was he going to get the money to buy the villa? I haven't bought the villa yet. Why are you in such a hurry to leave? Connor replied indifferently, then looked at Chloe and said, Why are you still daydreaming? Hurry up and prepare the contract. Do you really have the money to buy this villa? Chloe looked at Connor and asked, surprised. Put. Connor took out the black gold card Thomas Morgan had given him and tossed it onto the table. Then, he said indifferently, $8 million, swipe the card. Hearing Connor's order, the staff and customers of the showroom were now all focused on him, their faces filled with confusion. Who would have thought that a loser like Connor McDonald could buy a villa worth $8 million in a lump sum? Those who came here to look at the properties were the richest of Port Hampton. But even they wouldn't be able to take out $8 million so readily. Is this a bank card? How come I've never seen it before? Chloe looked at the Amex black card and asked scornfully. There were less than 10 people in all of Oprana who could own an Amex black card. Moreover, all of them were big shots with powerful backgrounds. Therefore, ordinary people didn't know the existence of the Amex black card at all. Not to mention Chloe, even the other rich kids present didn't know the actual value of this bank card. Won't you know whether this is a bank card after swiping it? Connor plopped down on the sofa and casually replied. Thomas had told Connor that this card didn't have a limit. It didn't matter how much money Connor spent, it would be accepted as long as it didn't exceed $10 trillion. However, Connor had never had the opportunity to use this card because he still had $1 billion in his bank card, enough for his daily expenses. 
That was why Connor wanted to try out this black premium card. Hearing what Connor said, Chloe was stunned and hesitated. Then, wanting just to try it out, she asked her staff to bring the POS machine over. Chloe then entered the shocking figure of $8 million into the POS machine. Then, she said to Connor, now, enter the password. Connor took the POS machine and entered the password. At this moment, everyone in the showroom was holding their breath as they looked at Connor. Time seemed to have come to a standstill at this moment. Everyone was waiting for the outcome from swiping the card. Lily was also looking at Connor. She seemed a little doubtful. It was now Lily started to feel that what Connor claimed earlier might just be true. Beep. Transaction is successful. As the POS machine's notification sounded, the entire showroom was dumbfounded. Everyone was stunned, their eyes filled with shock. Who would have thought that this seemingly broke young man would actually spend $8 million to buy that villa? Moreover, this man looked very young, probably only a little over 20 years old, but he was actually so carefree with the money, it was simply terrifying. However, the most shocking thing was that Connor had not uttered a single nonsensical word from the start. He did not even ask more about the villa before swiping his card. If it were anyone else, they would have tried to find out more about the villa, right? Somehow, they would at least go to the villa to take a look first, right? However, Connor actually did none of those things. Instead, he chose just to swipe his card. Everyone's perception of Connor changed immediately, especially some of the sales ladies. At this moment, it was as if they wanted to take off their clothes and throw themselves into Connor's embrace. After all, selling a villa worth $8 million, just the commission alone would at least be $500,000. However, at this moment, the ones who were the most shocked were Lily and Chloe. Lily stared blankly at Connor. She had never expected that the person she had casually pulled from the streets would be such a rich kid. At this moment, Chloe's face was also filled with shock. However, other than shock, there was also a hint of embarrassment. She had undoubtedly shot herself in her foot with the things she said to Connor earlier. At this moment, her perception of Connor had also changed. She now realized that the young man standing before her was actually such a rich kid. This money has been transferred, right? Connor suddenly broke the ice and asked Chloe. It's. It's in. Chloe replied with a trembling voice. She no longer had the courage to look Connor in the eyes. Her mind was constantly replaying the incident earlier, and her face had turned even redder. Mr. Mr. McDonald, I. I'll go prepare the contract for you. Chloe stammered as she spoke to Connor. Okay. Connor replied indifferently. After Chloe heard this, she hurriedly turned around and left. On the other hand, Connor crossed his legs on the sofa, waiting quietly. Everyone was looking at Connor with a strange gaze. The men were all envious and jealous, while the women's eyes were filled with admiration as they constantly threw flirtatious glances at Connor. It seemed as though if Connor were to say the word, they would immediately get in bed with him. They felt less guarded now. Lily was the only one who had not recovered from what had just happened. She felt that everything that had happened today was all a dream. Chloe Lawson walked over to Connor McDonald with the contract in her hand a few minutes later. She leaned over and said sweetly, Mr. McDonald, I have prepared your contract. You just have to out down your signature. Connor wasn't sure if Chloe was doing it on purpose, but she leaned over closer to Connor, revealing her fair and voluptuous chest that was attractive. Did I say 1am going to buy this villa for me? Do you think this villa is worthy of me? Connor admired Chloe and asked calmly. Mr. McDonald, this villa is indeed not worthy of you. Are you planning to give it away? Chloe leaned over and asked, puzzled. When the other people in the showroom heard what Connor said, they were stunned, too. After all, Connor had already paid the money in full earlier. If he was not buying the villa for himself, was he planning to give it to someone else? Everyone started to feel a little envious. They were jealous of the lucky person who would get a villa worth $8 million for no reason. Lily, come here. At this moment, Connor suddenly spoke. When Lily heard Connor's order, she was surprised. 
Chloe was also a little puzzled. Connor claimed that he did not buy this villa for himself. He wasn't planning to live in the villa but wanted to give it away. On top of that, he is also asking Lily to come over. Chloe only had one thought then. Did Connor buy this villa to give it to Lily? Lily stood in place in a daze. She seemed to be at a loss for words. She had not wholly processed that Connor bought the villa for $8 million in a lump sum. All of this was too overwhelming to her. It was all so surreal. Lily, what are you still standing there for? Mr. McDonald is asking you to come over. When Lily did not move nor react, Chloe frowned and called out to her. Yes, Ms. Lawson. Lily hurriedly agreed, then nervously walked up to Connor and asked timidly, Mr. McDonald, what? What do you want me to do? You signed the contract. Connor sat on the sofa and said very calmly. Hearing what Connor said, the room immediately burst into a flurry of activities, everyone was shocked. Everyone immediately understood what Connor meant by that single sentence. He planned to give the villa to Lily. No one would have thought Connor, who was dressed like a loser, would be able to afford this villa. Now, he had bought the villa but not for himself, for Lily Schmidt, whom he had known for less than two hours. Most of the customers who could come to look at properties in Port Hampton were of the wealthy class in Oprana, but this was the first time they had met such a wealthy tycoon like Connor McDonald. He had spent $8 million just so casually. And that purchase was made for someone else. This was too unbelievable. Everyone looked at Connor, deep shock in their eyes. To them, all of this was so surreal. It was like a movie scene playing right before them. If they hadn't seen it with their own eyes, they wouldn't have believed that this could happen in real life. In fact, $8 million was nothing to Connor. However, Connor wasn't the type of rich person who spent money lavishly. He did think that the villa's location was a little too obscure. So, even if he were to have bought it, he wouldn't live there anyway. Therefore, he might as well just give it to someone else who could use it. He gave it to Lily because he saw a small part of his past in Lily. He and Lily had one thing in common, they were insulted by others because they did not have money. Mr. McDonald, what? What did you say? This is your villa, I. I can't sign it. Lily exclaimed. Lily, pure and kind-hearted, did not know what Connor meant and quickly stuttered in response. Sign it. This villa is yours now. Connor looked at Lily and said calmly. This villa is mine? Lily looked at Connor and was once again surprised. Yes, I'm planning to give this villa to you. Connor looked at Lily and nodded slightly. Seeing this, Chloe's eyes suddenly widened as mixed feelings filled her heart. She couldn't help but feel a little regretful. Why didn't she entertain Connor properly when he came in? Not only did she fail to please Connor, she even ridiculed him. Chloe was already 28 years old this year. She had worked in the showroom for five years, and it was not easy for her to get to the manager position. However, she had also learned something in these five years, that if she wanted to survive in this society, she had to be rich. So even though many people tried to woo her, she rejected them. She felt that these people were simply not rich enough to satisfy her material needs. Chloe had always fantasized that she would meet a super rich kid to marry her one day. That way, her life would be complete. However, she never expected that she would really need a super rich kid today and not recognize the opportunity. Connor was young and rich, and he was pretty handsome. To Chloe, he was the Prince Charming she dreamed. So, Chloe was extremely regretful. She regretted that she did not seize the opportunity to please Connor. If she had treated Connor well earlier, perhaps this villa would not have been given to Lily, but her. Mr. McDonald, this villa is worth more than $8 million. We don't know each other. Why are you giving it to me? Lily asked. After finally processing what Connor had said, Lily was wary about Connor giving her the villa for no reason. So, she asked him out of curiosity. There's no reason. I just feel that this villa is not good enough for me, so one thought of giving it to someone else. Since you brought me here today, it means that we are fated. 
Moreover, I think you kind of need some money right now. After signing the contract, you can sell the villa and do something great for your life. Connor looked at Lily and said slowly. Lily stared at Connor. She knew very well that nothing is free in this world. Since Connor wanted to give her the villa, he must have some requests. As for what kind of request, Lily could already guess. To Lily, an $8 million villa was something she never could imagine owning. Even if she resold it, she could at least get $6 million. If Lily really got this money, she would be able to cure her father of his illness, but she would also be able to live a happy life with her parents. She wouldn't have to work part-time every day. If that was the case, Lily felt that she would do it even if she had to pay a certain price. Sigh. Lily Schmidt took a deep breath and quickly made up her mind. She whispered to Connor, Mr. McDonald, you really intend to give this villa to me, right? Yes. Connor nodded indifferently. Lily saw Connor nodding and didn't think much about it. She picked up the contract from the table and quickly signed it with her name. When everyone saw that Lily had signed the contract, they seemed envious. After all, to them, it was as if Lily had won the lottery. At this moment, Chloe was even more regretful. If it weren't for her snobbery, the person signing the contract would have been her. As Connor bought the villa in a lump sum, there weren't so many complicated procedures. After a while, Lily was done with the procedures with the showroom staff. Lily had officially become the owner of the villa. Everyone in the showroom was looking at Lily with such envy right now. Everyone was fantasizing about how great it would have been if today's incident had happened to them. After seeing Lily finish the transaction procedures, Connor turned around and walked out of the showroom. For even a second, he did not look at Chloe, who was standing at the side, trying to attract his attention. Lily saw that Connor was about to leave, so she quickly ran after him. Then, she said shyly, Mr. McDonald, thank you for giving me a villa. You're welcome. Connor replied calmly. Well, this is my cell phone number. If you need anything, you can call me anytime. Lily hesitated before taking out a note from her clothes and handing it over to Connor. She looked timid. What do you mean if I need anything? Connor asked. Connor was confused by what Lily said. Um. You? You have given me such an expensive villa. Isn't it because you want to? Lily's face turned red, and she couldn't finish the rest of her sentence. What do you mean? Connor asked. Connor was still confused. Aren't you planning to keep me as your mistress? Lily finally mustered up the courage to speak her thoughts. Keep you as my mistress? Connor was stunned and didn't know what to say. He looked at Lily standing before him and was speechless. He only did it because he never thought that giving the villa to Lily would make her think that he wanted her as his mistress. However, Connor did not have such intentions. Mr. McDonald, don't worry. One have been with anyone, even when I have started university. One have never had a boyfriend. This is my first. Lily noticed that Connor did not speak and thought that Connor was wary of her purity, so she quickly added to reassure him. Connor scanned Lily from head to toe. He had to admit that Lily was quite interesting. She had a curvy figure and a youthful and beautiful face. She was a masterpiece. With a bit of makeup, she could look better than a few actresses. Connor from before would have immediately taken such a beauty to a room without saying a word more. However, Connor had met Freya Phillips. Although Freya was only his fiancée in name, Connor still didn't want to sleep with other women. At the very least, as long as Freya didn't do anything mean to Connor, he wouldn't wrong Freya either. I think you may have misunderstood me. Connor hesitated before gently replying to Lily. I misunderstood you? A hint of doubt flashed in Lily's eyes. I don't have any ulterior motive giving you this villa. I just felt sorry for you when you were bullied. It reminded me of myself before. This villa is nothing to me, so I gave it to you as a gift. Connor looked at Lily and explained slowly. Chloe, who was walking over, heard what Connor said. She couldn't help but inhale sharply. Her face was full of shock. 
After all, this was the first time she met someone and treated an $8 million villa as a meaning gift. After all, this was $8 million, not $800. However, she did not know that this $8 million villa was nothing to Connor. Mr. McDonald, do you really not want me to be your mistress? Lily looked at Connor, puzzled. No. Connor shook his head affirmatively. If that's the case, I can't accept this villa. Lily hesitated and said through gritted teeth. Why not? Connor asked her, taken aback. This villa is so expensive. I can't accept it if you were to give it to me for no reason, Lily said softly. Didn't I tell you just now? This villa is nothing to me. You don't have to worry about what I will do to you. At this time, Connor felt helpless, too. He didn't expect Lily to be so straightforward. She wouldn't accept the villa if she were not his mistress. It was the first time Connor met a beautiful woman who wanted to be his lover. When Connor was poor, all the girls would treat him coldly, including Mandy Hines. But now, everything had changed. Maybe this was the power of money. But? Lily, why are you so insensible? Mr. McDonald has given you a villa, so you should just accept it. Why are you spewing nonsense? At this moment, Chloe suddenly walked out of the showroom and loudly advised Lily. Ms. Lawson, one can't accept such a valuable thing. If Connor wanted to be Lily's sugar daddy and had given her a villa, Lily would be able to accept it feeling relieved. After all, she would have then exchanged her body for this villa. But now that Connor didn't want anything and gave her this villa for free, she simply could not come to terms with that. Lily, if I remember correctly, your father is still in the hospital, right? And isn't your family so poor that they can't foot the medical bill? Now, as long as you sell the villa, you will have the money to pay for your father's surgery. Chloe looked at Lily and continued. Lily could not help but hesitate when she heard Chloe's explanation. Then, she raised her head to look at Connor. Don't worry. Since I said that I would give the villa to you, I won't take it back. Now that this villa is yours, you can do whatever you want with it. Connor said to Lily softly. Hearing what Connor said, Lily was filled with joy. She bowed to him and said loudly, Mr. McDonald, thank you so much. One really don't know how to thank you. You don't have to. Connor replied indifferently, then turned around and left the showroom. Lily was in a daze. She watched Connor leave with a grateful look in her eyes. Chloe sashayed in her high heels hurriedly after Connor. Mr. McDonald, wait. Is there anything else? After leaving the showroom, Connor turned to look at Chloe and asked calmly. Connor didn't have a good impression of Chloe, so he didn't really want to talk to her. Mr. McDonald, didn't you just say that the properties here are not good enough for you, she asked. Well, we have a high-end villa area in the suburbs. If you are interested, I can take you there to have a look, and also. Chloe deliberately moved closer to Connor and said to him flirtatiously. It's getting a little late. Let's talk about it next time. Connor rejected Chloe's advances without hesitating. Mr. McDonald, we still have time. Let's go there and take a look. After all, a villa looks different at night. Chloe winked coquettishly at Connor. Connor hesitated when he saw Chloe's flirtatious look. The showroom was at least an hour away from the suburbs anyway. Usually, it took quite some time to view properties. So the viewing might last until 11 o'clock at night. In that case, Chloe Lawson would have a chance to ask Connor McDonald to stay the night. As long as Connor stayed the night at the villa, Chloe only needed to seduce Connor a little to get him into bed with her. Chloe had a sexy and charming figure and appearance, especially her legs that seemed to go on for miles, she was simply irresistible. So Chloe thought, as long as she stripped naked and lay in Connor's arms, he definitely wouldn't be able to resist the temptation. Nah, one have school tomorrow. Besides, I am in no hurry to buy a house. Just as Chloe was plotting how she should seduce Connor at the villa later, Connor interrupted her thoughts. Chloe was stunned by Connor's response as a strange look flashed in her eyes. Mr. McDonald, are you, are you sure you don't want to go and just take a look? Chloe implored Connor. 
I'm sure. One have something to do later. Connor replied indifferently, then turned around and walked away. After all, Connor was not in a hurry to buy a house, and even if he wanted to buy a property, he didn't want to let Chloe close the deal. As for Chloe's plans, Connor wasn't suspicious at all. Otherwise, Connor might have agreed to go to the villa with her because of her good looks. Seeing that Connor was about to leave, Chloe quickly reached out and grabbed his arm before saying in a cute voice, Mr. McDonald, I'm really sorry about what happened today. I shouldn't have said those things to you. It's okay. I didn't take those words to heart at all. Connor turned to look at Chloe and said indifferently. I just want to apologize to you. I'm really sorry. Chloe apologized and bowed deeply and seductively to Connor. Chloe noticed Connor's expression and her heart skipped a beat, thinking she had a chance. So she deliberately leaned forward and wanted to pretend to fall into Connor's arms. However, Chloe did not expect Connor to sidestep her at that very moment. Chloe lost her balance and fell to the ground. Connor, standing at the side, immediately exclaimed, Are you okay? I'm... I'm fine. I just slipped. Chloe shook her head and deliberately shook her beautiful legs. Then, she reached out to get Connor to pull her up. Connor didn't care to bother to reciprocate Chloe's actions at all. After knowing that Chloe was fine, Connor turned around and left through the door. Meanwhile, Chloe sat on the ground, dazed. She didn't expect Connor to be indifferent to the temptation of a beautiful woman like her. Is Connor even a man? Chloe sat on the ground and shouted agitatedly. Lily Schmidt watched as the scene unfolded in the showroom. When she had asked to be Connor's mistress, he had rejected her. This made her feel insecure. She thought that she didn't deserve to be even Connor's mistress. After all, Connor was so rich. Many beautiful women must surround him. It was evident that he wouldn't like her. However, Lily did not expect that Ms. Lawson, the sexiest and most beautiful manager in the showroom, would fall short of Connor's taste. In addition to what Connor had done just now, this made Lily even more curious about him. She was very curious about who Connor was. Not only was he so generous, but he was also so indifferent to beautiful women. Meanwhile, after Connor left the showroom, he hailed a taxi and went home. Connor had met with Freya Phillips and then spent a long time in the showroom, so it was almost 10 o'clock in the evening when he got home. When he got home, Connor first took a relaxing shower, then he lay on the bed and started to browse on his phone. It was already 10 o'clock at night, which was the time for Mina's live stream. Connor habitually tapped on her live stream. After entering Mina's live stream, Connor noticed that more than half of the streamers on the platform had actually added the words, Welcome, Mr. CM, to the name of their live broadcast room. It was very obvious that the Mr. CM they were referring to was Connor because his online username was CM. When Connor first tuned into Mina's live stream on Twitch, he had donated a million dollars worth of gifts in one go to her. His fame instantly spread across the whole platform. The female streamers on Twitch knew about CM, a patron, and they all hoped that one day, he would visit their live stream. There was a large number of fans following Connor on Twitch. As long as Connor appeared in any live stream channel, they would follow him into that. It was a great way to increase the popularity of the live stream. Connor was not interested in other live streamers on Twitch, so he tuned into Mina's live stream as usual. Mina was still sexy and charming. At the moment, she was focused on singing. Due to Connor's generous tip the last time, many netizens on the platform knew of Mina as a live streamer. Moreover, Mina was also very beautiful. Therefore, the netizens were willing to stay in the live stream channel and listen to her sing. When Connor entered Mina's live stream channel, a strange thing happened. No netizens were greeting Connor today. When Connor entered Mina's live stream channel a few days ago, the netizens went crazy and kept sending a barrage of messages to greet him. Now, the netizens did not greet him, and even Mina did not welcome him. It was as if Connor was invisible, and no one paid attention to him. However, Connor did not overthink it. After all, it was good that no netizens were bothering him. Otherwise, every time Connor entered Mina's livestream channel, he would receive private messages from random strangers. 
Some people wanted to borrow money, people who wanted to treat him to a meal, and some people wanted to be friends with him. Some female live streamers even sent private photos to him, saying that they wanted to sleep with him. Their only request was for him to tune into their live stream channel once. Ever since Connor had donated a million dollars worth of gifts to Mina on her live stream channel, he would come to Mina's live stream almost every night to send gifts to her to increase his popularity. However, the amount wasn't much. It was only ten to twenty thousand dollars now. After all, if he spent millions of dollars on Mina every day, he would look like a creep. Today, Connor planned to buy a few gifts for Mina and then go to sleep. However, when Connor tapped on the gift option, something strange happened. The screen suddenly turned black, and he was suddenly logged out. Has my account been hacked? Connor was stunned. He wanted to log in again, but the password was incorrect. It doesn't make sense. My password has always been CM666666. How could it be wrong? Connor couldn't help but frown and mutter to himself. He had a habit of using the same password for everything, his initials and six sixes. Connor was broke before, so he was never worried about things like that happening to him. After a few minutes, Connor McDonald had tried to log in several times but to no avail. The system kept showing him that his password was wrong. When Connor had registered his Twitch account, he didn't connect the account to his phone number. This meant that Connor had no way to verify his account with his phone number. After half an hour, the system kept showing Connor that his password was wrong. So, Connor gave up the account and registered a new account called CM2. Connor's Twitch account didn't have much money anyway, so he didn't feel bad about it being stolen. After registering the new account, Connor specifically made it a point to connect his account to his phone number to prevent such a thing from happening again. After filling out the basic information, Connor tuned into Mina's live stream channel. He instinctively wanted to buy a few gifts, but a message box appeared on his screen at this moment. CM had sent a message to Connor. CM tipped Mina 50 gifts. Click on the text to enter the live stream channel. When Connor saw this message, he was instantly stunned. Meanwhile, the netizens in Mina's live stream channel started to send barrages of messages. They typed out the word CM on the public message box. Connor quickly tapped on that CM's profile, and sure enough, it was the same account he couldn't log into earlier. That was to say, someone had logged into his former account and was impersonating him. So I have really been hacked? Connor looked at his mobile phone and sighed in confusion. He couldn't understand why someone would hack his account when he only had a few hundred dollars left in that account. Perplexed, Connor lay on the bed, looking at his phone screen. Could it be that Knowles of Porthampton has hacked my account? Connor wondered. However, he quickly pushed the thought aside because he noticed that the person who hacked his account didn't use his former account to promote other streamers. Mina had previously told Connor that Knowles of Porthampton was actually the boss of a live streaming company. He had many live streaming guilds under his belt, and he had wanted to sign Mina onto his guild. If Knowles of Porthampton had hacked the account, then he would definitely use Connor's reputation to promote his guild. However, the person who hacked the account did not do so. He even sent 50 gifts into Mina's live stream channel before going offline. This made Connor even more confused. What was this person trying to do? Connor stared at his phone and thought for a long time. In the end, he could not think of anything that made sense. Furthermore, Mina had already logged off. So, Connor turned off his phone and was about to sleep. Buzz buzz buzz. At this moment, Connor's phone suddenly vibrated. He picked it up and glanced at the screen. He found that it was a voice message from Mina. He quickly opened it and listened to its content. Connor, are you asleep? I have good news. Mina's sexy and charming voice was heard. What is it? I'm not asleep yet. Connor replied immediately. Knock, knock, knock. Less than a minute after Connor replied, there was a knock on the door. Connor quickly got out of bed and opened the door. He found Mina standing elegantly at the door in a cool nightgown. Perhaps because the livestream had just ended, Mina wore a sexy nightgown with suspenders. 
It casually wrapped around her seductive body and was very revealing, making it difficult to look away. What made you so happy? Connor looked at Mina and was stunned for a moment, then he asked her with a smile. Mina walked into his room boldly and sat on Connor's bed as she said with a smile, make a guess. You won the lottery? Connor asked softly. A few days ago, I received a million dollars from a rich man. It is basically like winning the lottery. Mina said proudly. So, what is it? Connor asked. Connor was stunned for a moment before he asked. Make another guess. I'll give you a hint. It is related to my live stream. Mina said impatiently and seemed a little upset after seeing Connor's lack of reaction. It is related to your live stream? Connor rubbed his nose. Yes, it's related to that tycoon in my live stream. Mina continued to prod him. Connor suddenly had a bad premonition when he heard that. He hurriedly asked, What exactly is it? Ugh, how can you be so stupid? Forget it. I'll just tell you. Mina waved her hand in disappointment and said, Do you remember that a tycoon named CM gifted me a million dollars worth of gifts in my livestream a few days ago? Yes, what's up with that? Connor nodded slightly. After all, he was CM. How could he not remember? I've been feeling bad ever since Sim sent me a million dollars worth of gifts, so I sent him a few private messages. One wanted to treat him to a meal, but he ignored me. Today, he had actually taken the initiative to talk to me. Mina squealed. When Connor heard that, he was surprised to the core. Connor finally understood why that person hacked his account. He didn't go for the money in his account, nor did he go for the reputation of his account. His target was Mina. Why do you seem a little unhappy? Mina saw Connor's face turn gloomy, so she asked softly. Huh, it's nothing. Connor replied perfunctorily. He was thinking about what the hacker planned to do at this moment. So he sounded a little distant. CM not only chatted with me but also added me on Facebook. I said one wanted to treat him to a meal, he immediately agreed. Mina continued to look at Connor. You added him on Facebook? And you want to treat him to a meal? Connor asked in shock. Yeah, he sent me so many gifts recently, so I added him on Facebook. What's wrong with wanting to treat him to a meal? Mina replied matter-of-factly. Has it not occurred to you that he might have other intentions? Connor hesitated before saying what was on his mind. Other intentions? Hearing what Connor said, Mina couldn't help but hesitate. Then she bit her lip and said softly, I think CM must have some intentions because he is so willing to send me so many gifts. So, I plan to get in touch with him tomorrow. If it all goes well, I don't mind trying to date him. After hearing what Mina said, Connor felt as if he was struck by lightning. He never thought Mina would actually have such thoughts about him and would want to try to date him. Then again, Mina did not know that Seam was Connor. The person she was going to meet tomorrow was simply an impersonator. That guy had stolen his account just to connect with Mina on Facebook and then ask her out. When they were done with dinner, would he take her to a hotel and do something to Mina? Although Connor had never revealed his identity to Mina before, he was being impersonated right now. It was likely that the hacker will make a move on Mina, so Connor suddenly had the urge to tell Mina the truth. But Connor was also worried that even if he revealed his identity to Mina, she might not believe that he was CM. After all, Connor was just a broke loser in Mina's eyes. I wonder how old CM is and if he's handsome. Mina had no idea what Connor was thinking. She muttered to Connor with a face full of anticipation. What if you go to that dinner tomorrow and find out that he's a bald, greasy, middle-aged man? Connor asked quickly. If he's middle-aged, one foot eleven inches return the money to him. After all, he has given me so much. I definitely can't take this money. Mina said slowly. After hearing what Mina said, Connor was even more speechless. Mina's intention was straightforward. If the other party were about the same age as her and had a decent appearance, she would date that person. However, if the other party were older and middle-aged, Mina would return the money to him. 
There was nothing wrong with what Mina said. However, when Connor thought about it again, he realized that this whole situation was wrong. The money was Connor's. Although Connor didn't care about the money, he was not ready to have that handed to a stranger for no reason. That person was a hacker, which made Connor feel very uncomfortable. Sigh. Connor took a deep breath and said to Mina softly, Mina, there's something one haven't told you. What is it? Mina blinked and asked him curiously when she saw that his expression had suddenly turned serious. I'm the real CM. One gave you those gifts. Connor revealed his identity. Mina was surprised. She looked at Connor in confusion. Connor McDonald, what did you just say? Mina hesitated for a moment. She thought she heard him wrong. So, she frowned and asked again. Actually, I'm CM. The man using the account CM today is a fake. To prevent Mina from being cheated, Connor had to tell her the truth. H2. Mina stared at Connor for a long while. Then, she burst out laughing. Connor was rendered speechless when he saw Mina laughing. He had expected Mina to react in such a way if he told her everything. What are you laughing at? Connor asked Mina helplessly. Connor, you are such a joker. You don't have to make this kind of joke if you want to cheer me up, Mina said to Connor flirtatiously. Ma'am, I'm not joking with you. I'm telling you the truth. Connor growled. The truth? Mina laughed at Connor before continuing, Okay, one know you're joking with me. How can you be CM? You must be joking because I'm in a good mood today, right? Connor was out of words. He was worried that Mina would be cheated by some strangers, but here she was, thinking he was joking with her. That hacker had brazenly stolen Connor's account, so he must be planning to do something to Mina. Mina, I'm not joking with you. I'm very serious. I'm CM. I was the one who gave you the gifts before, but my account was hacked earlier. That guy is lying to you. Do you understand what I mean? Connor told Mina seriously. Mina couldn't help but feel stunned when she noticed Connor suddenly being serious. She chewed her lip and said softly, Connor, are you really not joking with me? No. Connor shook his head. How is this possible? Mina suddenly became serious, too. She said gently, do you know how many gifts CM has given me these few days? Connor was speechless for a moment. Although he did often tune into Mina's live stream channel to give gifts to her these few days, he did not keep track of how much money he had given her because he couldn't care less about the money. Seem has given me nearly $3 million in gifts these past few days. Do you have this much money? If you are really CM, why didn't you use this money to improve your life? Why didn't you move to a better place? Mina looked at Connor and continued to question him. Connor seemed even more helpless now. He didn't know how to explain everything to Mina. He couldn't just tell Mina that he had suddenly become rich because he had inherited $10 trillion. At that moment, Mina couldn't even believe that he was CM. She definitely wouldn't believe it if he told her that he had inherited $10 trillion. Connor, since you claim that you are CM, do you have any proof? Mina suddenly asked Connor. Proof? Connor was stunned for a moment. Yes, if you are really CM, then you should have proof to prove your identity, right? Mina gently nodded. Hearing this, Connor seemed even more helpless. The only proof he had was his CM Twitch account. But that account had been hacked. He couldn't log in at all. Mina smiled faintly when Connor stood there without a word, then she said, All right, Connor, drop the act. One no you must be joking with me. How can you be CM? CM is one of the most famous tycoons on Twitch. He could just give millions of dollars per pop. Connor was nothing more than a poor delivery boy in Mina's eyes. He was nothing compared to CM. Forget it. Since you don't believe me, there's nothing one can do. Connor replied helplessly. It's getting late. I'm going to leave now. Mina seemed to have sensed the atmosphere getting awkward, so she didn't continue the conversation with Connor. 
Instead, she turned around and was about to leave Connor's room. Wait. Just as Mina was about to walk out of the room, Connor suddenly called after her and reached out to grab her. What's up? Mina turned to look at Connor and asked, puzzled. I have something that can prove that I am CM. What is it? The username CM. The capital alphabets are my initials. That is why I picked that username. Connor looked at Mina and explained confidently. Connor, your proof sounds very forced. Put aside the fact that many people have the same initials and that CM has four alphabets, should I believe that everyone with those initials in their names is CM then? After hearing Connor's so-called proof, Mina rolled her eyes. It was evident that she did not believe him. Connor was speechless. He smiled wryly and said, well, even if you don't believe that 1am CM, one know that the person you're going to see tomorrow is a fake. So whatever it is, you shouldn't go and meet him. Connor looked at Mina said in a deep voice. What makes you think he's an imposter? He used CM's Facebook account to add me as a friend, that means he is CM. Mina seemed to be a little upset now. One don't care how he added you on Facebook. Whatever it is, you shouldn't go and meet this person tomorrow. Connor was no longer in the mood to prove his identity, nor was he in the mood to explain to Mina the truth of this matter. He just didn't want to see Mina being deceived. Connor, what's going on with you today? Why can't I go to meet that person? Mina looked at him and asked, puzzled. Because that person is a liar. Connor snapped. Mina was shocked. A trace of anger flashed in her eyes. She then said to Connor coldly, Connor McDonald, aren't you pushing it a little bit too far? How am I pushing it too far? Connor looked at Mina and asked with a puzzled expression. How can you say that he is a liar? CM has helped me so much, and he has given me so many gifts. How can you call him a liar? If he is a liar, one hope there will be more liars in this world then. Mina shouted. Obviously, Mina would not believe a single word that Connor said. Whether he is a liar or not, you cannot meet him. Connor was not in the mood to explain more to her, so he shut down the conversation firmly. Connor McDonald, who do you think you are? What does my meeting with him have to do with you? Aren't you overthinking things? Mina shouted agitatedly. I am overthinking? When Connor heard that, he suddenly felt as if his heart had been stabbed hard. Didn't Connor do all this for Mina? But in Mina's eyes, he was just a busybody. Connor looked at Mina in a daze. It was hard to describe his mood at this time. In Mina's eyes, he did not think that everything he had done would look like he was a self-serving person. Connor, I know what you're thinking. You feel jealous that I am going on a date with CM because you like me, don't you? That is why you have made up such a story to trick me. You just want to stop me from meeting CM, no? Mina seemed provoked by what Connor said. She simply couldn't tolerate someone speaking negatively about CM. So, she had started to shut Connor down. Me liking you? When did I say that I like you? Connor was angry now. Although Mina was beautiful and had a very sexy figure, Connor was not attracted to Mina at all. Even when Connor was tuning into Mina's livestream, it was only because Mina was his housemate. He didn't mean anything by it. He was only a good housemate. Are you still denying it now? Mina looked at Connor and sneered before continuing, Connor McDonald, let me remind you to think too highly of yourself. Although I often chat with you these few days, I only treat you as a normal housemate. One don't have any other intentions toward you. I initially had a positive impression of you, but what you said to me today is disappointing. Ha! Connor looked at Mina and smiled helplessly. He had given up on persuading Mina not to meet the imposter. After all, in Mina's eyes, he was a terrible person. So even if the so-called CM deceived Mina, it had nothing to do with him. Whatever. I've already told you what one tell you today. If you don't believe me, one can't do anything about it. If you want to meet him, then go and meet him. Connor said to Mina disappointedly. Mina was stunned for a moment. Then, she turned around and walked out of Connor's room. 
Connor helplessly watched Mina leave. In the beginning, he had given Mina those gifts because he wanted to help Mina, but he didn't expect all of these to happen. What Mina said earlier really broke Connor's heart, so he didn't plan to continue meddling in this. After closing the door, Connor lay on his bed and closed his eyes, ready to sleep. But for some reason, Connor couldn't fall asleep no matter how hard he tried. He felt uneasy. He wasn't feeling that way because someone had impersonated him, but because of Mina's attitude toward him today. Maybe in Mina's eyes, a loser like me isn't worthy of being her friend, and maybe to her, I am out of her league. Connor couldn't help but sigh softly. Although Connor didn't intend to pursue Mina, he still felt very uncomfortable after hearing how Mina spoke to him today. Even though he was a wealthy man now, he felt that as long as a woman knew his identity, she would throw herself into his arms. But those who didn't know about Connor's wealth would all despise him. It was so with Mina, and it seemed to be the same for Freya Phillips and Maya Phillips. It seems that society nowadays is very materialistic. Connor smiled bitterly, then closed his eyes and went to sleep, having pushed thoughts about Mina aside. The next day. 8 o'clock in the morning. After washing up, Connor was prepared to go to class. However, just as Connor opened the door, he saw Mina walk out of her room. Mina looked particularly attractive today. She was wearing a body-wrapping t-shirt. She looked busty, and a silver, chunky necklace rested strategically on her sexy collarbone. She seemed extremely dazzling. She sported a short skirt that accentuated her seductive figure. Complementing her long and straight legs was a pair of black high heels. She looked extremely pleasing to the eye. When Connor saw Mina's outfit, he could not help but feel stunned. He knew that Mina was definitely going on a date with the other CM today. He was a little disappointed. It seemed that Mina still didn't believe him. So he ignored her and walked outside. Connor. Mina suddenly shouted. Connor turned to look at her. Then, he asked expressionlessly, what's up? About, uh, I'm sorry about last night. I overreacted and overstepped the line. Mina walked up to Connor and said softly. It's fine. Connor replied indifferently. He did not try to advise Mina not to see that stranger again. Instead, he walked out of the apartment. Half an hour later, Connor arrived at his class. There were still over ten minutes before class started, so there weren't many students in the classroom. Dominic, Spencer, and the others hadn't arrived yet. Connor found a seat at the back of the classroom and sat down. He took out his phone and researched ways to retrieve his hacked Twitch account. However, he couldn't figure it out even after studying it for a while. Five minutes later, the number of students in the classroom gradually increased. Brandon Guthrie, Mandy Hines, Lily Sullivan, and the others had arrived. When Brandon saw Connor, a hint of ferocity flashed in his eyes. Yesterday at New Century Restaurant, Connor had caused Brandon a lot of trouble, so he had been thinking about how to take revenge on Connor. At this moment, Mandy was also looking at Connor resentfully. After all, Brandon's family business had been affected, so Mandy was also very unhappy about it. Moreover, Mandy Hines had suffered losses at the hands of Brandon Guthrie one after another, which made her very unhappy. As for Mae Young, there was no more to say. Previously, Connor had brought her to a hotel room and asked her to take off her clothes before he turned around and left. Although Connor did not do anything, May felt that Connor might as well have done something to her. After all, to have a man walk away after a woman took off her clothes was a great insult to that woman. The bell rang soon after, indicating the start of the day's lessons. Rachel Wallace wore a formal outfit. She had light makeup on and was wearing a body-hugging wrap skirt. Her slender and fair legs sported a pair of black high heels. She looked exceptionally sexy and charming. When Dominic saw Rachel walk in, he could not help but seem excited. He turned and said to Connor, Our lecturer is so hot. If only I could marry a woman like Rachel Wallace. Dominic commented quickly and stared at Rachel without any reservation. Meanwhile, Connor looked at Rachel's sexy figure on the podium and couldn't help but recall the scene when he saw her changing her clothes in the dormitory not long ago. The image of Rachel's sexy and gorgeous curves was etched upon Connor's mind. 
At this moment, Rachel, standing on the podium, seemed upset. There was a trace of anger in her beautiful eyes. It was evident that she was not in a good mood today. Connor McDonald, step out with me now. Rachel glanced at Connor and said to him coldly. Connor could not help but feel stunned for a moment. Then, he stood up and asked, Ma'am, what's the matter? In this session, everyone will self-study. Connor, step out with me. She responded coldly and walked out of the classroom, her behind swaying. Connor hesitated for a moment before following her out of the classroom. After walking out of the classroom, Connor realized that Rachel didn't intend to stop. Instead, she was walking toward her dormitory. Connor followed Rachel, not daring to say a word. He could only silently admire Rachel's sexy and seductive legs. He silently wondered, just what did he do that warranted Rachel calling him to her dormitory to speak about it? The students in the classroom were puzzled, too. No one knew what had happened. Spencer, do you think Connor offended Ms. Wallace? At this moment, Dominic seemed a little worried about Connor. He couldn't help but ask Spencer in a low voice. I don't know. One mean, Connor couldn't have offended her in any way. Spencer was as perplexed as everyone else. If Connor has really offended Ms. Wallace, he must be in trouble. Dominic knew that Rachel was not someone to be messed with. Therefore, he was very worried about Connor. On the other hand, Brandon, Mandy, May, and the others were secretly thrilled. Right now, they were hoping that Connor had gotten in trouble. It would be best if he was expelled from the university. Meanwhile, Connor followed Rachel out of the class. Connor noticed that Rachel didn't seem to have any intention of stopping. Instead, she was walking toward the university's dormitory. Connor followed after her, confused. He couldn't understand why Rachel had led him to the dormitory. However, Connor had to admit that he enjoyed the view behind Rachel. This was because he could admire Rachel's slender and fair legs. In Connor's eyes, Rachel was very attractive. Ma'am, why did you ask for me? Connor hesitated before asking Rachel softly. You'll know in a while. Rachel replied expressionlessly and continued to walk toward the dormitory, her heels click-clacking against the floor. Soon, Connor followed Rachel into the dormitory. After entering the dormitory, Rachel sat on the bed, her fair legs gently crossed. She then said to Connor, Connor MacDonald, you should know why I have brought you here, right? After hearing that, Connor was stunned for a moment. He said helplessly, ma'am, one really didn't peep at you changing your clothes the other day. Didn't one already explain it to you? I'm not talking about that. Rachel replied coldly. So what is it then? Connor asked, puzzled. Haven't you noticed that something is missing in my dormitory? Rachel asked. What is missing? Connor seemed completely confused. After all, he had only come to Rachel's dormitory to help her move the teaching materials. He didn't take anything from the room. So, how could something be missing? Ma'am, what did you lose? Connor hesitated before asking her. Are you still trying to deny your wrongdoings now? Go to the balcony and take a good look at what's missing. Rachel pointed at the balcony and shouted at Connor coldly. Connor subconsciously turned to look at the balcony and still couldn't figure it out. The only thing missing was the sexy hollowed-out pajamas that were hanging on the laundry hanger on the balcony. Ma'am, what exactly is missing from your balcony? Connor hesitated before asking in puzzlement. When Rachel saw Connor looking confused, she couldn't help but sneer at him. Then, she said softly, Connor, I've already put it so bluntly. Are you still pretending to be innocent now? Ma'am, I really don't know. Connor MacDonald said helplessly. Sigh. Rachel Wallace took a deep breath to calm herself down. Then, she said, the pajamas that I hung on the balcony are missing. No one else has entered this room except for you. If you claim that you didn't steal my pajamas, who did? Connor felt as if he had been struck by lightning. He did not expect that the thing that Rachel had lost was those sexy pajamas. Right now, Rachel had mistakenly thought that Connor had stolen the pajamas. 
It was true that Connor had gone to the balcony because of those pajamas. However, he wasn't perverted enough to steal Rachel's pajamas. Ma'am, although one went to the balcony the other day, I didn't steal your pajamas. Connor explained to Rachel helplessly. You were the only one who entered my dormitory room. If you didn't steal it, who else could have done it? Tell me. Rachel stared at Connor and shouted at him in shame and anger. Even if I came to your dormitory room, that doesn't prove that one stole your pajamas, right? Connor paused and then continued, Oh right, ma'am, when I came to your dormitory room, I noticed someone else on the balcony. That was why I went to the balcony. Could that person have stolen it? Since things had come to this point, Connor could only make up an excuse to fool her. However, Rachel did not seem to fall for Connor's trick. She stared at him, her eyes filled with anger as she said, Connor McDonald, didn't you say you went to the balcony to help me kill cockroaches? Besides, even if someone else entered my dormitory room, my pajamas were still there when you left. I only realized that my pajamas were gone when I came back at night. Rachel exposed Connor's lies. Ma'am, since you claim that your pajamas were still there when I left, what makes you think I stole them? Connor found a loophole in her logic and quickly defended himself. Rachel was taken aback for a moment. Then, she said in a low voice, maybe you came back and stole my pajamas? Ma'am, you are wronging me. I have come to your dormitory room so many times. I would have done it long ago if one really wanted to steal your pajamas. Why should one have waited until now? Connor explained in desperation as he inched closer to Rachel. Rachel looked at Connor and suddenly realized that his words made sense. After all, if Connor had wanted to steal her pajamas, there was no need for him to do it only now. Besides, ma'am, 1 a.m. already so close to you. If one stole your pajamas, I would be the first suspect. So why would I take such a big risk to do it? Connor struck while the iron was hot and continued to explain. Rachel's eyes narrowed as she scrutinized Connor. It wasn't easy to read what she was thinking. Connor was very nervous, too. He didn't know if Rachel would believe him. However, either way, he didn't steal Rachel's pajamas. Therefore, he definitely wouldn't take the blame. So you didn't steal my pajamas? Rachel hesitated before asking Connor softly. No, definitely not. Connor shook his head without thinking. Well, I'll believe you this time. You'd better not lie to me. If I find out that the pervert is you, one foot eleven inches teach you a lesson. Rachel said to Connor coldly. Don't worry, ma'am. I didn't steal your pajamas. Why would I steal your pajamas? Connor said confidently. Don't you know what you boys do when you steal my pajamas? Rachel blinked and said with a faint smile. Then, she licked her lips and continued, Oh Connor, don't think I don't know what those boys in class are thinking. Their eyes light up when they see me. You guys must be talking about me behind my back. Uh. Connor was surprised. A surge of heat surged up to his head from the bottom of his heart. He did not expect Rachel to be so direct as to talk about these things with him. When Rachel saw Connor's expression, she could not help but smile charmingly. Then, she took off her coat. Rachel wore a formal shirt that was body hugging. She looked very attractive. Oh, Connor, why are you standing so far away? Get over here and have a little chat with me. As Rachel spoke, she reached out and patted the spot next to her. Connor was astonished. He seemed to be in a daze. He didn't know what kind of game Rachel was playing with him. Oh, Connor, what are you still standing there for? Quickly come over here. Rachel said to Connor with a coquettish smile. Well, ma'am, I'll just stand here. Connor replied awkwardly. He had no idea what Rachel, the seductress, was planning to do to him, so he didn't dare to sit next to her. All right then. Seeing that Connor had no intention of coming over, Rachel lifted her sexy legs and leaned her body slightly backward, getting into a charming pose, then, she asked Connor softly, Oh my dear Connor, what do the boys in class say about me? They all praise you, ma'am, for your beauty, good personality, and interesting lectures. Oh Connor, we are already so familiar with each other. 
you don't have to be so polite to me. Why don't you tell me something that I usually can't hear? Rachel interrupted Connor and said charmingly. Something that you usually can't hear? Connor looked at Rachel and hesitated. Then, he whispered, Ma'am, you know that I don't have many friends in the class, so I'm not very sure what they say about you, ma'am. Then what kind of woman do you think 1 a.m.? Rachel licked her alluring red lips and asked curiously. A talented, beautiful, and kind-hearted woman. Connor hurriedly replied. You think I'm beautiful? Rachel asked happily. Yes, very beautiful, and very sexy. Connor nodded gently. Then, tell me honestly, have you secretly fantasized about me? Rachel looked at Connor and continued to ask. Okay. Connor McDonald was stunned by what Rachel Wallace said. He didn't know what Rachel was trying to do by telling him all this. Yes or no? Rachel looked at Connor and asked. No. Connor shook his head without thinking. You're lying. I can see it in your eyes. Rachel smiled faintly and continued, Actually, I wouldn't be angry with you even if you did. But no matter what, you couldn't have stolen my pajamas, right? Ma'am, one really didn't steal your pajamas. Connor was feeling very frustrated now. So, he had raised his voice in agitation. Rachel carefully sized up Connor. She had initially planned to divert Connor's attention and then extract the truth from him. However, she realized that Connor was not so easily distracted, so she gave up interrogating him. All right, since you didn't steal it, one foot eleven inches let you go now. You can leave. Rachel waved her hand dismissively at Connor. All right. Connor immediately heaved a sigh of relief after Rachel had agreed to let him go. Then, he turned around and walked out of the room. All right, Connor, my friend is having an opening ceremony for his bar the day after tomorrow. Don't forget to go to the bar to work your part-time shift. When Connor was about to leave, Rachel hurriedly reminded him. Don't worry. One won't forget. Connor replied softly. Also, you can't tell anyone about what happened today, and you can't tell anyone that I wear those pajamas. Otherwise, you'll be dead for sure. Rachel warned. I know. I definitely won't tell anyone. Connor replied helplessly. Then, he turned around and left Rachel's room. Rachel then sat on her bed alone. She narrowed her eyes, and her thoughts were difficult to read. Phew. After leaving Rachel's dormitory room, Connor let out a heavy sigh. His initial nervousness had also eased quite a bit. Since Connor had inherited a $10 trillion inheritance, his life had also undergone a considerable change. The only thing that could not be changed was that every time Connor met a woman like Rachel, he would feel an indescribable nervousness. No one knew why he was nervous. Five minutes later, Connor returned to the classroom alone. It was already break time. The students were all chatting in the classroom. When Dominic saw that Connor had returned, he quickly ran to him and worriedly asked, Connor, why did Ms. Wallace ask for you? It's nothing. She just asked me to help her move some things. Connor naturally did not dare to tell Dominic what had just happened. Otherwise, Rachel would not let him off. Dominic and Spencer knew that Rachel had indeed asked Connor to move some things before, so they did not suspect anything. Oh right, Connor, are you free today after class? Dominic suddenly asked Connor. Yes, why? Connor asked back. If you are free, let's go to dusk and have a drink? Dominic looked at Connor and smiled mysteriously. A drink? Connor was a little confused. He had never been to a bar as he couldn't afford it before. This time, it was unclear what was up, but Dominic had taken the initiative to invite Connor to a bar. That's right. Didn't you break up with Mandy Hines? I noticed that you haven't been in a good mood recently, so I asked Cindy to ask a few girls from her dormitory. That way, we can get to know them better. Dominic Turner explained cheerfully. Connor knew that the Cindy Dominic was talking about was the girl he had been pursuing. Connor didn't know what kind of relationship the two of them had. Bro, I don't like going to bars. 
Why don't the two of you go instead? Connor hesitated for a moment before refusing again. No. I've already arranged that with Cindy. The other two girls in her dorm are also single, and there happen to be three of us here. Moreover, Cindy's dorm has a gorgeous girl called Natasha Scott. I'll be your wingman. Maybe the two of you will end up together. Dominic said enthusiastically. Seeing Dominic's enthusiasm, Connor was too embarrassed to refuse. He could only nod and say, all right then, one foot eleven inches go with you. But one don't think she will like me. How do you know that Natasha won't like you? Dominic grinned and then took out $2,000 from his wallet and handed it to Connor. Connor was puzzled for a moment. Then, he asked, confused, why are you giving me money? Girls nowadays like rich kids. Take this money. You can pay at dusk tonight. When the girls see you pay, they will have a good impression of you. Dominic explained with a smile. H2. Connor looked at the $2,000 that Dominic gave him and suddenly felt touched. After hesitating, he didn't say anything more. Instead, he put away the money that Dominic had given him. Dominic, do you still remember that CM who gifted a million dollars on Twitch a few days ago? At this moment, a boy sitting in front of Dominic turned to ask him. Connor couldn't help but look up at him when he heard that. This boy was called Zach Jensen, the gossip in their class. Zach Jensen knew everything that was happening in the university. Zach was also the guy who spread the gossip about Rachel being someone's mistress. Although Zach made up a lot of gossip, some of them were true. Therefore, the students in the class kind of acknowledged his knowledge as facts. I remember him. What's up? Dominic nodded. I know who that CM is. Zach smiled mysteriously at Dominic. The students sitting in the back row of the classroom inched closer to Zach after hearing his claim. Zach Jensen, who is CM? A charming girl asked him curiously. Let me tell you, CM is a student of Port Hampton University, but I don't know exactly which year he is in. But as far as I know, CM said that he will get that female streamer, Mina, into his bed. When the time comes, he will even live stream that on our unis forum. Zach said to the crowd with a smile. When Connor heard that, he felt as if he was struck by lightning and instantly froze. If what Zach said was true, then Connor's guess was right. Someone must have hacked his account and pretended to be him to trick Mina into sleeping with him. Zach, are you telling the truth? CM is really a student of Port Hampton University? Are you just bragging? How could one have missed a rich kid at Port Hampton University? After hearing what Zach said, the students in the back row of the classroom were all invested in the gossip. They felt that even the wealthiest kid at Port Hampton University wouldn't be able to spend so much money in one go. Moreover, that money was given to a mere female streamer. You guys have no idea how rich the CM is. It is beyond the imagination of ordinary people like us. Zach raised his voice and said seriously. That's right. He's a rich kid with more than a million dollars. He's not an ordinary person. Dominic Turner added. These one million dollars might be a huge sum of money for us, but for a rich kid, it might just be his pocket money for a month. Moreover, rich kids like to have fun with female streamers. When they get tired of them, they can pick another one. They don't lose anything spending these one million dollars. Anyway, CM's fame has already spread. When the time comes, as long as he says something, many female streamers would jump into his bed. Zach looked at the crowd and continued. Sigh, why do I not have such good luck? If only that CM had taken a fancy to me. At this moment, the charming girl couldn't help but sigh softly. Connor's expression was extremely unsightly. If what Zach said was true, then, this person pretending to be him might have already brought Mina to a hotel room. Zach, do you know CM's real name? Connor hesitated and asked Zach anxiously. How would I know? Why? You didn't have enough money to treat everyone the last time. Do you want to be a toy boy? Zach said to Connor mockingly. Ha ha ha. When everyone heard what Zach said, they all began to laugh. 
Connor treated everyone to a meal at Brasserie Le Bernardin the last time, which had changed their perception of him a little. But no matter what, Connor was still a penniless loser to them. This was not something that could be changed with just a treat to a meal. A hint of disappointment flashed in Connor's eyes. He had initially planned to ask Zach about the hacker's name and then ask Kyle Hayes to investigate it. In this way, not only could Connor get his account back, but he could also prevent Mina from being deceived. Unfortunately, Zach didn't know CM's real name. If he wanted to find the hacker just by relying on the information that the hacker was a student of Port Hampton University, it would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. After the class ridiculed Connor, they began to discuss CM again. However, they were only talking about trivial things. There was no clue that could lead Connor to the hacker's identity. No one noticed Connor's expression. When Connor gave Mina those gifts before, he didn't expect his account to be hacked after. After all, that account was insignificant to Connor. However, after hearing what Zach said, Connor realized the gravity of the problem. Perhaps Mina would not be the hacker's only victim. He might make a move on other innocent girls in the future. Although many girls became streamers because of their interests and hobbies, most streamers did it to make money. CM was like a goldmine to streamers like them. As long as the hacker took the initiative to contact them with CM's account, the streamers would satisfy any request of that hacker. Even if they were asked to sleep with him, they probably wouldn't refuse. Who would have thought that things would come down to this because of my negligence of not connecting my account to my phone number? Connor sighed helplessly, wondering how to solve the problem. Ring. The bell for class rang. The students surrounding Zach returned to their seats, waiting for class to begin. Dominic noticed Connor looking a little strange. He couldn't help but ask in a low voice, Connor, why do you look so sulky? Do you feel hurt because everyone laughed at you earlier? No. Connor shook his head lightly and explained no further. Even if Connor told Dominic what he was worried about, Dominic probably wouldn't believe it. Last night, Connor researched ways to get his account back, so he slept very late. In addition, this class was finance, so he couldn't help but feel a little sleepy. After trying to pay attention for a while, Connor rested his head on the table and fell asleep. When Connor opened his eyes again, the class was already over. Connor, wake up. Let's go to the bar outside the school. Cindy and the others are waiting for us there. Dominic patted Connor's shoulder and whispered. Okay. Connor rubbed the sleep from his eyes and followed Dominic and Spencer out of the school. Connor, you're the one who's treating today. Don't let your tongue slip today. I have already given you some money earlier. Later, just pretend to be generous in front of the girls. Just spend that money. Dominic reminded Connor in a low voice as he led Connor out of the school. Okay, I know what to do. Connor nodded and didn't say anything else. Connor, as long as you act nice today, I think you will land Cindy's roommate. After all, Cindy's roommates are not students of Port Hampton University. They don't know much about your situation, Spencer looked at Connor and continued. Spencer, what are you talking about? Dominic seemed upset by Spencer's words. No, nothing. Spencer replied awkwardly. So what if they knew Connor's situation? There is nothing wrong with Connor besides being a little poor, right? Moreover, a man's youth is his capital. Even if he's poor now, he can't be poor forever. Dominic looked at Spencer and said. I was just saying. Why are you so agitated? Spencer did feel that he had gone overboard earlier, so he quickly defended himself. You'd better not say things like that again. Connor only has two friends. What will other people think of him if even you think of him that way? Dominic said to Spencer seriously. Bro, it's okay. Spencer was just messing with me. One didn't take that to heart. Connor felt touched by his friend's words. He knew that Spencer did not mean any harm with what he said. Yeah, I was just joking. Connor, please don't take it to heart. Spencer said. Dominic glanced at them and didn't say anything. He then walked out of the school. 
A moment later, Connor and his friends arrived at the gate. Dominic, I'm here. A girl in a white t-shirt and jean shorts waved at Dominic as she called out with a smile. Connor looked up at the girl. He knew that this girl was Cindy Stone, whom Dominic had chased this whole time. Connor was not very sure if the two were officially in a relationship. Cindy wasn't considered someone who would catch others' attention at first sight. She was more like a girl-next-door type. However, Cindy was very good at dressing up. Her clothes and accessories were branded, so she looked pretty youthful and beautiful. Cindy and Dominic were high school classmates. Now, she was studying at Port Hampton Academy of Art. Before, when she had no classes, Cindy would go to Port Hampton University to hang out with Dominic. Therefore, Connor had seen her a few times and considered her an acquaintance. However, Connor did not have a good impression of her because he knew that Cindy only took the initiative to come to Port Hampton University to hang out with Dominic at every end of the month when she did not have any money left to spend. When her family gave her allowance at the beginning of the month, Cindy would seem as if she had disappeared without a trace. To put it bluntly, in Connor's point of view, Cindy nearly treated Dominic as her ATM. Connor and Spencer, however, knew exactly what was happening. However, as Dominic was right in the thick of it, he had no idea what Cindy was doing. Connor and Spencer were too shy to expose her, so they could only pretend not to notice. Hey, Cindy! Dominic saw Cindy standing at the gate, so he quickly walked up to her excitedly. Why are you late? I've been waiting for you for more than an hour, Cindy pouted and said coquettishly. Class just ended. I rushed over here as soon as I could. Dominic was worried that Cindy would be upset, so he quickly explained. Okay, since you were in class, I would let it go this time. Cindy replied indifferently, then continued, let's go. My roommates should have arrived by now. Don't let them wait. Okay. Dominic nodded and walked toward the bar near the university. However, at this moment, Cindy suddenly turned to look at Connor and said in disgust, Dominic Turner. Why is this delivery guy following us? Tell him to go away quickly. What if my roommates see him? I don't want my roommates to know that one hang out with a loser of a delivery guy. Dominic was stunned. He seemed to feel awkward. No one had expected Cindy to be so direct. She literally had zero EQ. Due to what she said, Dominic, Spencer, and Connor became extremely embarrassed. Cindy, what are you talking about? Please show some respect. Spencer shouted at Cindy unhappily. I wasn't talking about you. Why are you so agitated? Moreover, I am going to dusk with Dominic to have fun with my roommates. What has that got to do with the delivery boy? I don't want to bring a delivery boy with me to dusk. Is there a problem with that? Cindy rolled her eyes and replied disdainfully. You? Spencer was rendered speechless, not knowing how to counter that. After hesitating, Spencer grabbed Connor and whispered, Connor, let's go. We don't have to go. Okay. Connor didn't like the noise in the bar, and Cindy didn't seem to welcome him anyway, so he did want to leave. Connor, Spencer, wait. Seeing that Connor was about to leave, Dominic quickly reached out to stop him. After all, he had asked Cindy to bring her roommates today because he wanted to match Connor with someone. If Connor were to leave now, what was the point of going to the bar then? Bro, Cindy's words were so offensive. Since she looks down on Connor, why are we still going to dusk? Spencer shouted at Dominic, flustered. Dominic seemed awkward after what Spencer said as he replied in a low voice, actually, Cindy didn't mean that. She may have a sharp tongue, but she has a soft heart. Don't take it to heart. Do this for me as a bro, okay? H.H. Looking at Dominic's earnestness, Spencer hesitated. After all, it was Dominic who invited them today. Even if they didn't want to go because of Cindy, they should do it for Dominic. Dominic, isn't this loser a delivery boy? Why did you bring him? Isn't it embarrassing enough? At this moment, Cindy rolled her eyes and sneered. Cindy, can you stop talking for a moment? Dominic shouted, somewhat a little embarrassed and annoyed. 
Then, he walked up to Cindy and dragged her aside. Cindy, come with me for a moment. One have something to say to you. What more is there to say? I definitely won't let this delivery guy go to dusk with us today. If my roommates find out, won't I be a laughing stock then? Cindy said loudly and emotionally to Dominic. Today, Connor will treat us to drinks at the bar. If he doesn't go, who will pay? Dominic asked helplessly. He is treating us to drinks at the bar? A trace of surprise flashed in Cindy's eyes as she asked with a puzzled expression, how can a poor chap like him have the money to treat us to drinks at the bar? Besides, didn't you say that you wanted to introduce my roommate to your friend? That friend isn't Connor, right? That's right, it is Connor. Dominic nodded. Dominic, are you crazy? Connor is a broke chap, how could my roommate like him? You'd better ask him to leave immediately. Don't embarrass yourself, okay? When Cindy found out that the so-called friend Dominic mentioned was Connor, she immediately became angry and started screeching. She was very, and she didn't care about Connor's feelings at all. When the students passing by heard Cindy, they all looked at her, Dominic, and the others curiously. Cindy, can you keep your voice down? Connor is my best friend. He just broke up with someone not long ago, so I only wanted to comfort him. What's wrong with that? Dominic gritted his teeth and said to Cindy in a low voice. Dominic, why are you friends with a broke chap like Connor? Cindy asked in confusion. Cindy, aren't you pushing it a little too much today? At this moment, Spencer finally couldn't hold it in anymore and shouted at Cindy. How am I pushing it too much? I'm just telling the truth. Isn't Connor just a broke boy who delivers food? Whatever it is, I don't care. If Connor comes to dusk with us today, I'm not going. I won't introduce my roommate to someone like him. Cindy pouted and said arrogantly. Bro, why don't you guys go? I don't want to join anymore. Connor, who had been silent all this time, finally spoke. After saying this, Connor walked away without looking back. Connor, don't leave. Seeing that Connor McDonald was about to leave, Dominic Turner quickly reached out to stop him. Then, he turned to Cindy Stone and said, Cindy, if you don't want Connor to join us at the bar, you can go on your own. Cindy was stunned. She seemed to be in disbelief. Dominic Turner, what did you just say to me? Cindy asked Dominic with a slightly angry expression. One said, if you don't want Connor to join us at the bar, you can go on your own. Besides, Connor is treating us to drinks today. If Connor is not coming, then one won't go either. Dominic gritted his teeth and growled. Dominic Turner, are you out of your mind? You are picking a broke chap who delivers food over me? Cindy's eyes widened in disbelief. Cindy, I've told you many times. Whether Connor is a poor man, he is my best friend. One indeed like you, but that doesn't mean that you can humiliate my friend like this. If you think we don't have the right to drink with you, you can leave. Dominic, silently tolerating Cindy before, finally exploded and growled at Cindy. All right, Dominic Turner, you are asking me to leave? Fine, I'll leave. Do you think I'm afraid of you? Cindy shouted in return and then turned around to leave. After Connor saw that Cindy had really left, he felt a little apologetic. He took a step forward and said to Dominic softly, Bro, you didn't have to do that. I don't really want to go to the bar. Moreover, even if one did go, the girl might not like me anyway. Why don't you go and ask Cindy to come back? She really went too far today. How dare she talk to you like this? One can't keep giving leeway to her. Dominic said softly. Connor stood where he was, not knowing what to do. After all, no one had expected this whole thing to escalate to this point. Forget it. You two should go to the bar. Don't let me ruin your fun. Connor had been worried about Mina being tricked into someone else's bed. Cindy's departure gave him a reason not to go to the bar, so he turned to leave after saying that. Without Cindy, can't the three of us go to the bar anyway? There are plenty of other pretty girls in the bar. I'll be your wingman. 
Spencer quickly reached out to grab Connor. Meanwhile, Cindy was about to leave Port Hampton University when her phone suddenly rang. Cindy hesitated before answering her phone, Tiana, what's up? Cindy, where are you now? Natasha and I have already arrived at dusk near Port Hampton University. Didn't you say that you wanted to introduce a handsome guy to us? Why aren't you here yet? The girl on the other end of the phone asked with a charming smile. What handsome guy? He's just a delivery boy. How could Natasha fall for someone like him? Cindy couldn't help but mutter in a low voice. A delivery boy? What delivery boy? Cindy's roommate, Tiana Johns, was puzzled. No, nothing. Today's outing has been cancelled. Let's go back to the dormitory. Cindy was infuriated by Dominic. She simply didn't want to go to the bar anymore. What? The outing has been cancelled? When Tiana heard that, she immediately cried out in surprise, then she continued, Cindy, are you kidding me? Natasha and I have ordered our drinks. Moreover, the drinks have been served. Who will pay the bill if the outing is cancelled now? Why did you order the drinks so soon? Cindy was stunned for a moment and asked angrily. Didn't you ask us to order our drinks? You said that there will be a rich kid coming later. He's your side boy. You told us to spend as much as we want, and the rich kid would come and pay for it. Tiana said helplessly. How much did you order? Cindy asked. Not much. This booth costs at least $2,000. We only ordered $2,000 worth of drinks. Tiana said slowly. When Cindy heard that, she immediately frowned. She initially thought that if Tiana hadn't ordered too much, she would go over and foot the bill. But she never thought that her roommate would be so generous and spend $2,000 in one go. She didn't even have $500 on her now. It wasn't enough to pay the bill. Cindy, are you pulling our legs? Tiana asked suspiciously when she didn't get a response from Cindy. Why would I be pulling your legs? I'll bring some people over later. Just you wait. Cindy whispered and hung up the phone. After hanging up the phone, Cindy calmed herself down and turned to look at Dominic and his friends. Although she felt conflicted, she still turned around and went back to Dominic and his friends. At this moment, Tiana and Natasha were still at the bar. If she didn't bring someone to save the day, how could she face them in the dormitory in the future? Therefore, even though Cindy despised Connor, she could only helplessly accept bringing him to the bar. Cindy, why are you back? When Dominic saw that Cindy had returned, he smiled and asked, pleasantly surprised. Didn't you want to bring this poor chap to the bar? Let's go then. Cindy said to Dominic very reluctantly. Dominic froze for a moment, then looked at Cindy in surprise and said, Cindy, one knew you were kind-hearted. If it weren't for the fact that he is your friend, one wouldn't have agreed to let him tag along with us to the bar. After all, he is just a delivery boy. How can he mingle with people like us? Cindy sized Connor up and said with disdain. When Dominic was happy that Cindy had agreed to bring Connor along to the bar, so he said to Connor and Spencer happily, that's great. Spencer, Connor, let's go to the bar. Although Dominic didn't know Cindy's true color, it didn't mean that Spencer and Connor were blind to it. They knew that Cindy definitely didn't just have a change of heart. So, Spencer took a step forward and looked at Cindy, saying, Why is Connor not allowed to go when you say so? Now you are allowing him to tag along, so he should go now? Who do you think you are? Spencer, what are you talking about? Cindy stared at Spencer and shouted at him. I will go to the bar with Connor, but I have one condition. Spencer said slowly. What is it? Cindy frowned and asked. If you treat us today, the three of us will go. If you don't treat us, we won't go. Spencer knew why Cindy had suddenly changed her mind. To her, they were just rich kids who were her ATMs. Therefore, he would use this opportunity to teach Cindy a lesson. Cindy was instantly stunned. She seemed a little awkward. Spencer, aren't you going a little overboard? 
How could you ask a girl like Cindy to treat us to drinks? Moreover, there's no reason for us to let a girl treat us to drinks when we're out having fun. Dominic felt that Cindy was already giving him a lot of leeway by agreeing to let Connor tag along. But now Spencer was asking Cindy to treat them to drinks. This was really going a little overboard. Why can't girls treat us? Didn't you guys always say that men and women are equal? Now is our chance. We were the ones who treated when we went out the previous times. Cindy didn't even spend a single cent. What's wrong with asking her to treat us this time? Spencer replied impolitely. Previously, because of Dominic, Spencer had treated Cindy to many meals. After all, Spencer was from a pretty well-off family. Moreover, Dominic had always been pursuing Cindy. Spencer felt that it was only right to spend some money for his best friend. However, Cindy had humiliated Connor in front of many people today. So, Spencer felt very uncomfortable. Therefore, he naturally would not make it easy for her either. Spencer, why are you such a stingy man? Cindy shouted at Spencer unhappily. I'm not stingy, but I'm giving you an opportunity to feel gender equality. Since you want me to go, are you not going to show some sincerity? You said so many mean things to Connor before. It's not a problem to treat us now, right? It's okay if you don't have the money to treat us. As long as you apologize to Connor, we'll let this be water under the bridge. Spencer seemed to have made up his mind. He wanted to teach Cindy a lesson, so he spoke with a very firm tone. Spencer, you. Cindy glared at Spencer, feeling very helpless. Cindy could not bring herself to apologize to a person like Connor. However, neither did she have the money to treat them either. Therefore, Cindy had her backed up against a corner. She could only look at Dominic, hoping he would help. Didn't we agree that one would treat today? Cindy probably didn't mean the things she said earlier. I think we should just let it go this time. At this moment, Connor suddenly said. Cindy quickly looked at Connor, surprised. She did not expect Connor to speak up for her this time. In fact, Connor only didn't want to continue wasting time. He wanted to finish drinking with Dominic and the others as soon as possible and then go home to check on Mina. Now, Spencer was too embarrassed to continue making things difficult for Cindy. So, he walked toward dusk. However, Dominic looked at Connor with gratitude. Connor didn't lower himself to Cindy's level. He was doing Dominic a favor. After all, if this continued, Dominic would be in a very difficult position. A few minutes later, everyone arrived at the bar, dusk that was near Port Hampton University. Dusk was the most prominent bar near Port Hampton University. Since it had just opened, the interior design was very new, so students liked to come here to hang out. However, when Connor and the others entered the bar, Cindy suddenly stopped in her tracks. While Spencer and Dominic were not paying attention, she turned her head and said to Connor, Knorr, when you see my roommates later, don't tell them that you're a delivery boy. I don't want my roommates to know that one knows someone like you, understand? Cindy seemed to have forgotten who had helped her out as she spoke to Connor rudely. Understood. Connor didn't want to waste more time with Cindy, so he replied nonchalantly. By the way, you'd better not have any thoughts about my roommate. My roommate will never fall for a poor chap like you. You'd better know your place. Cindy continued. Connor couldn't help but be stunned for a moment. Then, he stopped walking and said expressionlessly, Cindy Stone, if it weren't for Dominic, I wouldn't have come here with you. Moreover, one already have a fiancé, and I'm not interested in your roommate, so you don't have to worry. You have a fiancé? What are you bragging about? Who would take a fancy to a loser like you? Cindy rolled her eyes at him and said disdainfully. Connor ignored Cindy and walked straight into the bar. As Dominic and Spencer had already entered the bar ahead of them, they didn't hear the conversation between Connor and Cindy. In the bar, under the dim lights. Men and women dressed in bright and beautiful clothes, accompanied by loud and ear-splitting music, were twisting their bodies on the dance floor, the hormones of youth floating in the air. It was seven o'clock in the evening. 
Although it was still early, this time was just the start of their exciting night for people who like nightlife. There were a lot of people at the bar today. Most of them were students of Port Hampton University. It was Connor's first time here, so he was shocked by the scene inside as soon as he entered. When Cindy saw Connor acting like a country bumpkin, she couldn't help but smirk disdainfully. However, because Dominic and Spencer were still standing next to Connor, she didn't try to make any remarks. Cindy, over here. At this moment, a coy girl wearing heavy makeup waved at Cindy and the others. She was wearing a tight black t-shirt that perfectly accentuated her body. Her legs were slender and fair, and her golden wavy hair was casually draped over her shoulders, giving her an extremely youthful aura. Although the girl's attire was very sexy and charming, her appearance was only average. She was not even as pretty as Cindy. However, even so, her figure was very hot. Her legs were slender, and her chest was ample. It was not that of what a normal female university student should have. Tiana, I'm coming. Cindy turned her head and replied. Then, she said to Dominic and the others, that is my roommate, Tiana Johns. Let's go over. Okay. Dominic hurriedly nodded. Cindy then turned her head and glanced at Connor. She said in a low voice, Connor, don't spew nonsense when you meet my roommate later. Don't expose the fact that you're poor. Cindy, can you stop? Dominic couldn't help but frown and scold her. I didn't mean anything by it. Didn't you want me to find Connor a girlfriend? If my roommate knew that he was a loser who delivers food, she probably wouldn't even want to talk to him. I'm just giving him a friendly reminder for his own good. Cindy explained disdainfully and then walked to the booth. A moment later, everyone arrived at the table that Tiana had reserved beforehand. The few of them introduced each other before sitting down. Although Tiana looked average, she did not lack male friends because she was usually dressed sexily. She knew that Dominic had always been after Cindy, and although Dominic's family was quite wealthy, his looks were too average. Connor was quite good-looking, but Tiana naturally didn't have much interest in Connor because of his shabby outfit. Initially, Tiana thought that Cindy would bring a few decent rich kids over this time. However, she didn't expect Cindy to bring people like Connor and Spencer. Tiana immediately lost interest and sat alone on the sofa, playing with her phone. Tiana, where did Natasha go? Didn't she come with you? At this moment, Cindy suddenly asked Tiana softly. Natasha went to the restroom. Tiana replied absentmindedly as she continued paying attention to her phone and flirting with some handsome guys nearby on Bumble. Since the two men that Cindy brought were not up to Tiana's expectations, she would not waste her time with them. Therefore, she was ready to hook up with the handsome men nearby whom she found on Bumble. Who knows, she might even hook up with a rich man. Oh, then let's wait. I reckon that Natasha will be back soon. Cindy said indifferently. However, just as she finished speaking, she saw a tall and beautiful woman in high heels walking toward them. Natasha, over here. After seeing the beautiful woman, Cindy hurriedly called out to her. Then, she stood up and greeted her, leading the beautiful woman back to their table. Let me introduce everyone. This is one of the top ten campus bells of Port Hampton Academy of Art, Natasha Scott. Cindy dragged the beautiful woman to her side and introduced her arrogantly. When Connor heard that, he couldn't help but raise his head to look at the woman next to Cindy. It had to be said that the campus bell of Port Hampton Academy of Art was indeed much more beautiful than Cindy and Tiana. Moreover, Natasha also seemed noble and cold at the same time. Be it her figure or her appearance, she was pretty high class. Natasha wore a cross-shoulder dress. Her jet black hair flowed naturally over her bare shoulder. She was tall and had a calm temperament. There was no makeup on her face, but she had a different kind of charm. Under the dim light, she seemed covered in a pleasant, dreamlike glow. Natasha, these three are my friends, Dominic, Spencer, and Connor. Cindy turned around and introduced her to Connor and his friends. Hello. Natasha greeted them softly. Hello, beautiful. Dominic grinned at Natasha and continued, since everyone is here, let's get going. 
Order whatever you want. Connor is treating us today anyway. When Tiana heard that, she could not help but turn to look at Connor. Her eyes were filled with surprise. That was because Connor was just an ordinary student. His outfit was, in her eyes, very shabby. However, she never expected that Connor would be the one treating them this time. Therefore, Tiana's opinion of Connor had changed a little. Perhaps Connor was the kind of rich kid that liked to pretend to be poor. Tiana hesitated and was about to find an opportunity to sit next to Connor and flirt with him. However, Tiana didn't expect that before she could make a move, Dominic pulled Natasha to Connor's side and said with a smile, Natasha, you can sit here. Natasha couldn't help but feel stunned for a moment before sitting down next to Connor anyway. Although Connor looked a bit of a loser, he was still quite handsome. Moreover, he was the one who would be treating them today. This meant that he had some money, so Natasha naturally did not reject him. Tiana immediately frowned and felt a little unhappy. However, she was too embarrassed to say anything and could only stay put in fume. Cindy did not expose Connor because she understood Natasha enough to know that she would avoid Connor once she knew that he was a pauper. Therefore, Cindy tacitly agreed to Dominic's plan to set Connor up with Natasha. After everyone sat down, they began to drink and chat. Natasha might look a little cold on the surface, but she was not introverted. She took the initiative to chat with Connor. After all, today was the first time they met. She definitely wouldn't develop any feelings for Connor. However, Natasha's impression of Connor was still pretty good. It shouldn't be a problem for them to be friends. When Connor saw that the girl was so enthusiastic about getting to know him, he naturally felt embarrassed to continue being cold, so he responded enthusiastically. Just as Connor and Natasha were chatting enthusiastically, a group of people walked into dusk. This group of people was none other than Brandon Guthrie, who had been humiliated by Connor many times. Behind Brandon Mandy Hines, Mae Young, Lily Sullivan, and a few other students from the same class. In the bar. Brandon and his companions walked into the bar. Then, they found a table that started at $3,000 and sat down. Mr. Guthrie, why does that guy look so familiar? At this moment, Charlie Bones, next to Brandon, noticed Connor. Isn't that Connor? Why is he here? Lily Sullivan also saw Connor chatting with Natasha, not far away. She was confused. He he. I didn't expect this loser to have the money to come here. Moreover, he is sitting at a table that costs the same as ours. What's up with Connor recently? Why does he seem like a different person all of a sudden? Charlie curled his lips and said in a low voice. After hearing what Charlie said, Brandon's expression instantly darkened. He felt as if he was sitting on pins. After all, he had brought them to dusk and sat at a table that started at $3,000. Brandon had already felt that he had spent enough. However, he did not expect Connor to afford the same table as his. Mandy narrowed her eyes and looked at Natasha, chatting happily with Connor not far away. Be it her figure, appearance, or clothes, Natasha was better than Mandy. This made Mandy feel very uncomfortable. She had only just broken up with Connor recently, but Connor was already out and about. He even found a girl who was more beautiful than her. This ultimately ignited Mandy's jealousy. Connor must be on a date with that girl. May suddenly commented. May Young, what kind of joke are you making? Connor is a stinking loser who delivers food. Everyone at Port Hampton University knows that. Other than Mandy, who else would be willing to date someone like him? Lily replied sarcastically as if she had long forgotten that Connor had once saved her from Todd Knowles. May looked at Connor and hesitated without saying anything. After all, May had never told anyone about the incident at Seven Days Hotel. After experiencing that, May believed that Connor was not as simple as the stinking loser they claimed him to be. Thanks for watching this video.